Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another day, almost the last day, but tomorrow will be the last day of the ESL Close Qualifiers today. It's going to be the Mena region for me and Lacoste, and we are going to start it off in the upper bracket with PSG Quest against Winterbear. Yeah, it should be a fun one. You know, Mena region, they have like two really... Strong teams, PSG Quest, Team Falcons. Then you have like Enigma Galaxy and also Winterbear. They're slowly creeping in, I would say. Team that uh, did manage to take a game off uh, Enigma Galaxy in uh, the other qualifiers, the bed boom that is. And also, oh, I, I feel, you know, we got to give it some extra time uh, for a team to develop. But you can see Winterbear picking up Mikey, who played for Enigma Galaxy. And the team is doing better. Last time these two teams met, uh, yeah, you know, it was... Uh, what was it? Uh, just uh, lost some of my prep right here. But uh, I believe it was at, uh, yeah, Bad Boom uh, Dacha. And the PSG Quest, they, they were victorious, but... Uh, Second game was uh, pretty close, you know. It wasn't uh, a stomp by any means. So these two teams, we could expect this series to be very interesting. Yeah, they uh, definitely are uh, a scary team to play against. Mikey, of course, originally coming from Winterbear and then heading over to Enigma Galaxy. Um, now back in the team, as you mentioned, they're playing with two Turkish supports in the squad and three Iranian players against PSG Quest. That is a mix of... Uh, well, a whole different bunch of countries, but they're a very scary team, as we've seen uh, last year a couple of times. Of course, the roster is slightly changed a little bit over the course, but they are a deadly team and one of the two favorites in the region, as you mentioned. Um, but yeah, the region is... It's a very interesting one because it is... I mean, South America took some time to develop to get some good teams. I would say the... The good teams from the MENA region are stronger than the South American region uh, good teams. The only difference is there aren't as many teams slightly below that. And that still needs to build up. That is a, a process. And uh, that's also the, the investment that they're making in trying to boost the region in terms of their eSport prowess. Hopefully we'll get to see some... Uh, more teams from a couple of those countries that you kind of never see uh, really joining in, like Algeria and stuff. I know I've seen them in the uh, in the World Cup qualifiers and such, but I haven't seen those uh, players really in any Western EU qualifiers or anything. So looking forward to seeing what they can bring to the future. But right now it is about the here and now. And here and now the draft has started. We're going to jump in to it right now and see if the cards are being secured. Nate's Prophet versus Magnus. Ten seconds remaining. Yeah, NP, he's all over the place. We've been covering different regions, Five and this hero remaining. is popular in every single one of them for a good reason. You have this global teleportation. Sometimes, like, you'll see him TP as soon as he gets his teleport sometimes he gets it immediately level two tps in blocks you with a sprout yes, blood grenade there's three battle. heroes in your lane there's not much you can do about it and this is the power of the hero i think teams like winter bear they need to you know, most of the time bring that extra hero to be able to secure some of the kills and nature's profit really fits the playstyle. it's exactly what you want from a hero 10 seconds remaining. Yeah, you always have to be careful that it's there. It's a hero that can Five also farm and remaining. scale in towards the later portions of the game. So if you have it on a pulse 4, it turns into pretty much a you know, 3.5 uh, offlane level uh, of farm. Has a pretty good Aghanim Scepter as well. Scouting tool. And will be able to constantly split push, which against a team like PSG Quest, normally you really would want to have that done. That's why they Ten also ban out the uh, Naga Sarna Winter Bear. It is pick. Noob's best hero. And sorry, uh, uh, the, the TA2000's best hero, even though it, it, everyone would say Quest TA is his best hero, but no. His Naga Siren is like impossible to, to deal with. It is everywhere and nowhere at the same time. Yeah, he has a couple of these heroes that he plays extremely well. I mean, he's been mostly known to play ranged carries. That's uh, 
kind of his niche, these uh, Drow Rangers, Morphlings. But uh, yeah, Naga Siren, he, I feel like he played the Naga Siren every third game in 2023. And he was owning on that hero. A lot of the times you would see him, you know, not getting involved, but he's staying on top of the network and all it takes is one good fight. Suddenly he has 5k network advantage over the enemy carry. He just Ten knows how to farm. Remaining. This guy's like really, really good. And on side of PSG quest, uh, we have, uh, Five you know, not the, it's not as good as it was before, but Magnus plus Techies combo, and all these heroes are very good at laning and also extremely good at scaling. So it seems like PSG Quest, they want to speed things up a little bit. We saw Enchantress in our series yesterday Radiant that we covered, you know, Solo going for more of a teamfight oriented build. And then we had, you know, the scaling Enchantress that uh, dealt... Uh, 10,000 damage in one fight with Impetus. So we gotta be careful about this hero. If you can burst him down, this hero can go pretty ham. And I, I, right now, I remaining. don't see that burst damage coming out from them because Tidehunter, Nature's Prophet, Five they really don't have it. Rubik, he's okay, depends on what he steals. They're good spells to steal from Techies, uh, good spells from Magnus as well. And uh, something that these heroes don't like to play into is Clockwork, Techies and Enchanter. So that's gonna be their magic damage. This also means that this is either mid Rubik or some kind of carry slash mid Nature's Prophet. Ten seconds. Yeah. Remaining. Yeah. Uh, I, I was also thinking, like, how are they going to lane this exactly on Winter Bear? Because I don't know if they need a safe laner or a mid laner. I know Nature's Prophet has played both in the past. I haven't seen anyone really run it as a core um, for a pretty lengthy amount of time so l looking forward to seeing what surprises winter bear will Ten throw at psg remaining. quest but you're gonna play against team fight god Five level you've remaining. got chrono you've got rp you've got techies it is going to be hell to have a team fight going all you've got so far is the tidehunter ravage so they are really looking to have that insta burst get a kill and get out with the clockwork hook shot and catches from the rubik coming in as well but as you mentioned, you're just lacking the actual damage to make that happen. So you're going to need to get a last. If this is safely Nature's Prophet, you know, get a Zeus or something so that you can at least blow Radiant someone up before bang. the fight starts. Yeah, a little worried for their damage output and also this Faceless Void. It's Radiant really good in the lane bang. against Clockwork. He can run away like from Sprout to uh, You'll always have something to lock down Tidehunter, something that he can't crack enough. The really good Faithless Void pick. They also don't have the most tower damage on side of PSG Quest. We're talking about sieging the Ten tier 2, sieging the tier 3 towers specifically. So they will need Quest to take a fight before that. The taking tier 1 tower should be relatively easy with uh, Enchantress. But uh, yeah, they're focusing on strong lanes uh, and scaling. This is going to be you know, Faceless Void. Uh, Strongest carry in the game when it comes down to super late game, who's going to be farming with Empower. So I think just remain. by seeing these heroes, uh, they do outscale them. So I want to see some extra scaling, remain. unless Winter Bear wants to as well speed things up and uh, maybe they're on the same page because I see this Dead Prophet ban could fit them real nicely, would give them a lot of team fight uh, presence. And just wondering like where Nature's Prophet's going to go. Seems like it's going to be. Uh, safe lane nature's profit that's how psg quest are reading this one Ten yeah i guess uh it might be i i still Five have no clue uh, it, it's a weird flex that they're going for uh the tide hunter also by the way picked up against the enchantress was a strange one if the enchantress does go for impetus levels instead of uh enchant or healing for that matter then the tide hunter is going to have a really tough time in lane because faces void doesn't hit very hard but pure damage is still nasty for the tide hunter to deal with and could easily get bullied out yeah they need to figure out the hero against pango in the mid lane uh there aren't many left uh, the good ones a queen of pain or earth shaker all right ta select your heroes so as I said, maybe they wanted to have something that comes online slightly faster, something that gives them damage, because if they want to play this for late game, super late game, they're definitely going to lose with the heroes that they have. But I wanted to see, you know, something with slightly more control, since you're playing in the Faceless Void Pango. 
Maybe Mikey will pick up Shard earlier, and then you'll have like Silence against TA, uh, TA against uh, <laughs> Faceless Void and Pangolier. So now we have TA 2000 and just TA, TA 1. Yeah, Mikey playing the mid TA. Okay, so that means Nate's Prophet doesn't have to be the hard, hard, hard carry uh, on that safe lane. This time you can have the TA do that. It is enough damage for a team fight, really, but. Yeah, it's about that faces void, right? It it needs to die. Uh, we saw it yesterday. It's just nasty if you have to play against it. And it is uncontested. You have no saves on your team. There is no way to get anyone out. Um, I mean, obviously you could build items, but that's a, a lot further down the line. Yeah, just get E-Blade and Wind Waker, lol. Yeah, it, it, it's cheap. <laughs> Don't worry. It's... It, <laughs> Doesn't, I mean, to be fair, Rubik wants to get Aetherlands anyway, so it's just a little bit further than that. Yeah, I mean, this is going to be Nature's Prophet plus Clockwork Lane. I see some synergy between it, where you can like, trap them inside Cogs, inside Sprout, with just battery uh, should be enough as well. So they will receive some extra damage from that Sprout, but... Uh, it's been a while since I saw Nature's Prophet being played as carry. Most of the time you'll see him being played as a position 4. And then he's going to build into like Road of Atos and start scaling later. Maybe like a Gleipnir, get to silence uh, some Spirit Vessel early on. Prepare for he TP'd mid, plays the Observer Ward. So that's what Nature's Prophet does really well. And then he might get a D Ward. I saw that and just plays two wards. Away. And will they be getting anything? New places, his own observer ward. Walk in a different direction. They're smoked up. They don't see Diddly Squat. And Omar, bottom lane, stoic. Ring around the rosy. Will anyone encounter each other? No, they're just going to invade each other's jungle and... Uh, He's alone. He's trying to yeah. zone out four heroes. It's a clockwork. But it's not as uh, survivable as he wants. So he can drop it low. One more hit needed. And first blood secured. In the meantime, TA2000 on the other side. He's also got a couple of enemies in the near vicinity. Don't be mad. I like how Clockwork, you know, <laughs> squared up. It's like, oh, you want to battle? There's no way that there should be a single hero there on side of... PSG quest, New but uh, yeah, he used battery assault goals. immediately. <laughs> no one from the team, not even close to back him up, but uh, yeah, Omar getting the first blood. Uh, already buying something on the courier. Let's see what it is. No, he has uh, 370 gold. It's just because it's paused, so it uh, shows that he lost gold for some reason. <laughs> It's just yeah, not hopefully fair. there's no issues at the very least coming forward. We have ourselves a little pause. I mean, it, Techies is now universal, so just building up stats while you have, uh, what, 700 attack range is kind of insane uh, as a lane harassing hero. Yeah, back in my days, this hero had 27 or 28 damage or something, and uh, you couldn't last it. At all, begins. but uh, now, yeah, being universal, I've seen, like, you know, you get Bracer, you get Magic Wand, suddenly you hit, like, a truck. Sometimes I've even seen Double Bracer being built on Techies. Stoic again. They're doing a good job throwing him out, Blood Grenade thrown. Yeah, it's a bit of harass on the clockwork, should be just fine. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you're talking about, like, back in my day, that Techies... Th back in your day and my day, that <laughs> Techies was horrible to play against. Like, this Techies, I'm okay with playing against, but... Oh, uh, absolutely. Randomly absolutely. just walking somewhere and just... <laughs> what? <laughs> Dead. <laughs> Out, outscaled. You're like, you have five... Five slot... You're five-slotted carry. You, you die. Okay. Mo level 25, moving mines. Cool, 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 cool. Seems legit. Oh, Omar. A lot of damage there. The power of the NPC. As I say that, he's taking a heap of damage in response. <laughs> That's your carry. Like, you can't allow yourself to be in a position like that where you're soaking up most of the damage. You also don't have TP available for 40 seconds. Uh, you also don't have any tangos. Nader does stoic, so they... Oof, this is really rough in the bottom lane. 
Yeah, and you will be uh, out harassed by that Omar Techies. They get level two, you have to be very careful of this lane. Uh, the shockwave skewer into a sticky bomb blast off combination, uh, you're, you're just straight up dead. They're not farming anything. He's sitting at the three CS at the moment, waiting for his career to deliver some tangos. Yep, they're just getting bullied by techies. Sadness. Uh, top lane. TA2000 is doing a pretty okay job, and in mid, it's uh, so far even. Stevens, that should probably be their best lane, in all honesty, for uh, the Radiant side. Yeah, that is their best player as well, so expecting Mikey to be the driving factor of the team. He can set the tempo with Templar Assassin if he's having a good time. They also... Uh-oh. Yep. They got level two, and that's about it. <laughs> you just hit him with a blast off, and they've got too much damage coming up from the two of them, plus control in that lane. So it's uh, I, I'm very worried for the Nate's profit now. Winter Bear will need to stack a lot in their triangle. You do have Tide Hunter and TA, so GZ needs to be there. I don't think Tide Hunter should die in this top lane because he has a point in Kraken Shell, Kaori doesn't have point in, in an Impetus, so GZ could allow himself to go into Triangle and stack every single time it's available. For now they will be picking up some Lotuses. Yeah, Rubik is uh, unfortunately a very slow hero, so walking back to the Triangle and getting those stacks going, I mean he's starting, at least one camp has already been stacked, so it's a, a plus. But it is, uh, it's a long run for that hero. You had something that could do some damage through fog yeah, of war. Or it's the shadow demon. Yeah, something along those the lines best. would be a... Legit. Best ones to stack with. Even the clockwork is not that bad with the, if you get a rocket flare point. But yeah, it's going to be a, a lot on Mikey's back this game to try and uh, sort this out. For his team, Corey in the meantime is just already jungling because like, he can't harass the Tide as you mentioned. Tide has a Morbid Mask. He's already going to be able to out heal the damage you deal. And yeah, what else can you do? You, you can just farm as an Enchantress. You'll be able to at least outscale the enemy because they're also not going to do much against the face of Void. They're trying to go for the Tide. I don't really see why. Just ignore him. Yeah, they, <laughs> they they can't really kill him, but they can try to harass, put a little bit of pressure, maybe bait some spells. TA2000 is pretty farming anyway on his Faceless Void. They can't kill Faceless Void. So that's going to be a big issue. That's such a weird top lane. Yeah, I don't think anything's gonna happen in the top lane. Mostly it's gonna be like trading of the farm, but uh, bottom lane should be the one to look out for. Yeah, Malik is gonna get killed off. They actually managed to get themselves the cash. And uh, yeah, his skewer was on cooldown, so a bit of a recovery there for reality. So, Kaori TP's bottom, it does get scanned instantly the moment that he reaches bottom and... Well, no, it's solo top lane TA2000, but as you mentioned, they kind of don't really need him. Like, he can smoke up solo XP, get some extra levels, because Tide doesn't really pressure you. He's also not going for any, like, fighting items or anything, going for... Vlad's as his first item, which is fine. If this is a really good item on Tide Hunter. Oh, Death plus Mage Star mid. mid. Mikey might get a kill onto Omar. Yes, he does. Will die afterwards with the Rolling Thunder and the Kaori rotation coming through. Then Tar Stomp for good measure. It's about to die anyway, so he joins the fun. And they're not going to go for the tower dive afterwards. But at least he did find a kill before he fell on Mikey. Yeah, he did the most he could. Getting a solo kill, getting that XP before he died. Haste picked up by Jeezy and some bounce runes as well. So 
Winter Bears, uh, even though they had a pretty bad start in this bottom lane, they're starting to recover. Nature's Prophet still in recovery mode, but as soon as you hit that level 6, you could snipe some of the creeps, snipe some of the last hits. Fiori still around the mid lane. They want to pressure Mikey, play with this catapult. She's gonna die. Yeah, that was a very short play coming in with the catapult, but they are heading now towards bottom where they're trying to harass uh, Reality out of the lane top side. It is going to be a 1v1 matchup and without like a 2-3, maybe even 4 hero rotation, that Tide's not going to die with the Vlad's. Radiant's Done, middle uh, he's going to heal so attack. much with a single smash. I do like the fact that Winter Bear, um, they're playing great objective gaming. As you said previously, the bounty runes, very important. A lot of teams forget Radiant's about them, really. And they're like, oh yeah, there's a bounty rune here. Or my mid laner is probably going to get them for his bottle anyway. But it's a lot of gold if you sack them up. Bottom though, Rolling Thunder comes out. Reality, it's a four-man move here to kill off this latest prophet. And there is nothing he can do. Stoic in the trees, trying to run away, does have a TP, and should be able to get the TP to safety because there are no more interrupts left. Or just walk. Yeah, let's, let's see what Winter Bears can get out of this one. PSG quest, immediately moving to the mid lane. TP rotation from Noob so that he can defend his tower. Also want to see what the build's going to be. We've seen Pangos building Mage Slayer as his first item, or you can get a Diffusal Blade. It's still strong. Both of these items are extremely good. Overtime damage. Uh, it also, if you have Mage Slayer, great against Temper Assassin, Refraction Charges. Jeezy in the meantime stacked two camps at the same time uh, for Mikey right next to him. So they are really focusing on making Mikey huge. And he is huge. He is the top net worth by quite a decent uh, difference. Kachal as well on the Tidehunter is second net worth. So two of their cores really farm. Reality is a little bit struggling, but that is to no surprise because their focus has been in that area the entire time. Anyway, Stoic just walks into a, a fun bunch of the PSG quest lineup who were trying to catch out this uh, TA. Thanks to Gang for the team, stacks a little bit and uh, yeah, does the position 5 job, not having the greatest time in the world. Uh, needs that level 6, might be slightly delayed, but uh, yeah, we said the name of the game for Winter Bears will be stacking, and that's exactly what they're doing, stacking as much as they can for Mikey to get him online. He needs to be the one controlling how the game is going to go, because uh, you also have... Nature Prophet as your carry, so he wants to get involved attack. slightly earlier. Malik, bottom, could be in trouble. The Chal is just gonna defend the tier 1 tower. Um, doesn't mean that top lane, nothing changes for the face of Void. It's about exactly the same. But bottom lane, they can't go for the push against this tide. He's got the Soul Ring now as well, so constant influx of mana. Level 3 Kraken Shell. Doesn't have a point in Ravage yet, which is a. Uh, I mean, not too surprising considering he wasn't going to kill faces for top anyway. Oh, yeah, he's pretending it. that he has Ravage. That's why he TP. Mid lane again. Mikey. Drop in low. NP all to use. Gory underneath the tower. Noob will be able to get the kill, but Gory dies. Omar might be a second one. He did just get his level 6. They're blowing up the mines. There's only one mana to explode. Noob's being chased down. He does not actually have any mana to get out of there. Caught inside the cards with the battery assault on top. Tier 2000 joins in the fun. Has Chrono that he wants to throw out and kill off Stoic before he disengages. And will be able to get the bashes to get the kill secured. But a uh, pretty decent turnaround play here towards mid. Yeah, really good play from Winter Bears. They outnumber opponents exactly what the, they're doing. And TA is not the hero that goes down quickly. So he can buy a little bit more time for his team to respond with CP rotations. And Kakal also showing up in the mid lane with his Vlad's pretty unkillable. They don't have enough damage. Once Tango picks up that Diffusal Blade, that's going to be time where Tidehunter needs to start worrying about uh, how tanky he actually is. Diffusal Blade's now done on Noob, so it does get a little bit more dicey. Mikey going for the Blink Dagger. Yeah, he's going for more aggressive.
build and uh, the moment that he sees a target he can blow them up pretty quickly especially if you have a ravage beforehand to set every the uh, the entire fight up they're doing a good job of winter bear to stem the bleeding this uh, rubik has been quite influential in all the stacks he's been making and the rotations as well oh mikey again yeah, there's a lot of mines, and he can't get rid of them while he's disarmed. They throw out the uh, sentry the moment he wants to melt, and will be able to get the kill secured. Man, these techies players, they're so good. Like, watch Omar when he uses his blast off, immediately puts down three mines, which is impossible to kill unless you, I don't know, have Little Shredder or something. But uh, it's not even possible to kill all of them. It's just... It's so insane, because I was playing against some, like, really good techies the other day, and it always surprises me what this hero can do, because some players, and especially Omar, he's really pushing the limits with the hero. It's such an annoying hero. Laning-wise, I find it to be the... Like, anything that has insane go ungodly range is ridiculous. He's sniper, play. basically. Yeah. It's just not fun to play against. Oh my god. Gets the stun off right before he drops, knowing he's gonna drop. Rolling Thunder from Noob to try and get the catch here. But actually needs to be able to run away himself. He's dropping very low Malik as well. Needs to screw her back to safety. Luckily enough for them, Mikey doesn't have a blink dagger yet. Otherwise, they might have been uh, pretty much destroyed there. Yeah, really cool play from Omar. Gets one bomb and gets the blast off before he dies. But uh, unable to connect, there's like only one part of the crystals there, so you can't really bounce and stun lock them. And uh, some nice footwork coming out from reality. Also, one issue that Pango has, when he rolls, uh, he's really afraid of this overwhelming physical damage. He doesn't like to play into Medusa, into Templar Assassin. You saw the Bell Strike, if you have Deso on your Templar Assassin, uh, he needs to be afraid. Like there was also... A time where left track was super popular, and so was Pango. So he rolls, and Edict just kills him. Yeah, you're not immortal during your roll. Even though a lot of people do manage to think that way, it is still uh, pretty squishy, and TA does hurt. He, he's got that dragon land, so he has the range to stay out of the way from the, the rolling thunder at all times. Tide is going to get gone on bottom lane. There's even two supports more coming in. There's the skewer RP underneath the tower. All five dire heroes to kill off this Tide, who will finally fall. Yes, he does a little bit longer and a hefty rotation required which of course means that the safe laner and mid laner are just farming somewhere else on the map oh while all this was happening kaori look at his wild wing ripper he denied enemy xp rune that that's just disgusting <laughs> oh that that's actually pretty neatly done instead of np stealing yours uh you just have your uh, enchantress deny the enemies As a support player, this really hurts. New life, new life, you lose, let's say, 7 and 14 minute rune, uh, you're, you're pretty much done, though. You can actually feel how, how much <laughs> influence that has. And now, TA2000 is farming up with M Power, which is maxed out, so he will be starting to scale. Uh, still lowest net worth core. At the moment, doesn't have a single death to his name, but still other heroes farm much faster. Beep, beep. Yeah, your face is void. I mean, your biggest asset's going to be the Chrono anyway. They don't have good Chrono damage, except for like the techies and maybe later if Kaori gets uh, like Hurricane Pike on the Enchanters with Impetus. But it's, it's pretty weak Chrono damage that they're going to have for most, if not all of this game. But as long as you've got the Chrono, you can just reset a fight, set it perfectly so that you immediately have the RP afterwards or that the techie can go, go in with the nosedive blast off and drop a couple of proximity mines. It's, yeah, it's more the utility that you're uh, scared of when you're playing against Void. Pretty much. You have one swashbuckle shockwave. That, that's uh, pretty much it. Uh... But uh, it might be the setup for RP or, as you said, blast off, even rolling thunder afterwards. 
Corey actually is, uh, it's a bit surprising to me that he is not going for, like, a hyper-aggressive enchantress, because I know him as, like, when, even when he plays Silencer and other heroes, he tends to go for the way more gravy build and turn into a semi-core, and this time around he is going for more of a defensive utility-based build, I guess. It is an important qualifier, obviously. The winner of this is already in the upper bracket. Uh, uh, well, no, uh, yeah, no, upper bracket finals is after this for them. So that's only uh, three wins from this point on, and then you're qualified for Dream League. <laughs> yeah, sounds like it's not a lot, but uh, there are some really good teams that you need to beat. And... Uh, yeah, for, I, I assume four staff is gonna be his choice of an item on Enchantress because it's really good against Clockwork, against NP, pushing anyone out of trouble pretty much. I might as well make Radiance it a Hurricane Pike when, while you're at attack. it at that point. Yeah, you yeah, already yeah, have yeah. the four staff. It's, we, yeah. it's the sneak. We, we had this we, talk. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> it's the sneak that Radiance you were talking about tower. yesterday. It's and, you know, attack. Rod of Atos is also a good item, so. Radiant are scanning. How's MP doing? He's uh, doing okay in terms of network, going for Gleipnir build. He's going to be pumping in some heavy right flick damage. But again, I feel that they need to have slightly more advantage with the lineup that they have. Mikey, after picking up his blink dagger, is going for shard next. So that's going to be a good way of silencing Faceless Void, uh, Magnus, and uh, he might go for solo kills as well. So... I want to see how they're going to approach in the next few minutes. I think there's a good chance for them to at least try to take a team fight. And then you have TA plus Vlad, so that's sustained, that's some extra damage. And try to play for Roche in the next few minutes for Winter Bear. Yeah, they're keeping a very good tight hold on the net worth advances the entire game. I uh, don't think we've seen a Ravage so far. Kachal's just been uh, farming up nicely. I mean, has been hindered after that one death. His farm has been slowed down. Plus, he is playing with a TA and an NP. So, you kind of get all your farm stolen by your mid and safe laner at all times. Pretty much. These are flash farmers. Seems like this is going to be some smoke time. Kachal keeping mid. Bookshot is available. Oh, DD. That's a good. They were really aggressive on. They even TP'd mid on the Nate's Prophet to defend the rune. Maybe they, you know, counted. Yeah, I was, <laughs> I was wondering what that TP is about. I thought they're gonna smoke instantly, but uh, that there was okay. It's a bit of a delayed smoke. They wanted to clear things up. Uh, Mikey pops that double damage. Uh, this DD might get dispelled by Enchant before she dies. I was actually thinking because uh, the bounce the. Poor Kaori does get blown up, and he does before he gets the enchant up. I was thinking actually, um, the river runes go on a rotation the first time around, right? Where it's like illusion rune, then it's uh, the well rotation, yeah. as in they all get handled once. Yes. How many runes are there? Five, right? Radiance middle tower is under attack. Five. BD region in this arcane and. Uh... Okay. Uh, the shield room. Illusion. Oh. Shield. Okay. Maybe they actually counted. Maybe. Yeah. And they be. knew that double damage was coming up. What time is it? Which, if they it's did, that would be the first time I've actually seen someone do that. <laughs> it would be impressive. Where someone's like, okay, the first rune is haste. Marked it up. Second rune, illusion. Marked it up. I need a pen and paper to play Dota. I mean, to be fair, that the. Have Roche a timer died. for all these. Yeah, but <laughs> every three minutes, the bounty, <laughs> bounties, and then the XP runes. Like you gotta be lotuses uh, every three minutes. So there's always something to do. Dota's ever evolving game, but uh, yeah, I'll, I, I'll gotta be honest. Maybe I'm slightly older. It took me like good amount of time to get used to like new map being 40% bigger, having tormentors uh, using the twin gates and stuff. Uh, plus also like all the new timers. I so many times still have to do math where I'm like dividing by three or by seven <laughs> or Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dota becomes math, oh no. That shook out. Amazing what you'll find later. I just wanna go kablooey on stuff and win. 
All these uh, Zoomer kids that are uh, just absolutely destroying me and my pubs. Dyer's middle tower yeah, they're is better under at attack. maths that uh, might Radiant's not be better at game. Is <laughs> <laughs> uh, nonetheless, we currently do have ourselves a still even Stevens game. The TA is closing in. He's going Chrysalis instead of Dessa. So yeah, that's the... That's why I wanted to mention. I mean, you still would want to pick up Deso to have some extra tower damage, Roche taking potential, blowing up these heroes instantly. But uh, yeah, for now it's going to be casual Crystalis and uh, actually casual Crystalis. Claymore it seems because he queued up or did he? Get... Oh no, he has the Crystalis delivered. He's going for the BKB, so he's really skipping Deso. Radiant Interesting. Wondering why, because like Crystalis doesn't build into like, Silver Edge anymore. The only thing you can get is Daedalus and Kanda. Roll oh, they are going for Mikey. They throw everything on him. Big Skewer, Rolling Thunder, but he soaks up the entire damage with Refraction. Like they, they hit him really big three times and he's like just standing there. Yeah, Refraction, thank you very much. You're not touching me. Bye bye. Easy kills and a and really big complete. fight. Instantly TP's back the bottom lane, so that means they want to take Roche. This is a fight where they didn't even use Ravage. So, pretty Dyer's massive for Winter Bear. Suddenly, 4k gold lead for them. This is also a fight where there was uh, no Faceless Void, so that means uh, no Chrono. But Mikey is super tanky. Also, they did a good job of putting down Solar Crest on top of him with Refraction. He becomes insanely tanky, and that trap with silence, made a lot of difference in that fight. Yeah, using the scan to see if they wanna try to contest this Roche. Mikey, popping off completely. Yeah, the Aegis uh, given to the Nature's Prophet actually is closing in on towards his BKB. He's got the uh, Gleipnir already done on the NP. So uh, another route to hold down the face void until he gets his Manta. Doesn't have a BKB, is not gonna get a BKB for a while, so it's really gonna be reliant on that Manta. Which is a bit dangerous. Against the, the multiple trap silences that can come in. And of course the Gleipnir. You can only dispel one. Ha <laughs> ha! Look at that disgusting Enchantress. Again, trying to deny the uh, experience room. You see the, the Warpine Raider just walking and waddling all over there. No, no. Reality this was time. ready. This time they did not want to let it go. And reality getting closer to his uh, BKB. Needs 200 gold. It's go time. Tidehunter does have Ravage available. Blink Dagger as well. We, as you said, we still haven't seen Ravage. The big one is Tidehunter Shard. Dead in the water against Pango, against Magnus, and Faceless Void. It destroys these heroes. Yeah, he's getting a pretty good item so far. I also looked at Stoic, and he's halfway towards his Akinim Scepter, which is a fun one. The Clockwork Ags, it's the, the just pure vision on the entire map that comes through. That's always nice, and uh, I, I mean, obviously, not everything of it really gets used, like the, uh, what, 250 cog bonus attack speed? That was kind of, yay, I got it. I know that Topson played a mid clockwork with like Milstrom Ags at one point, but that was uh, that was like a weird pub build that he tried. In. Uh, people try to theory craft play this clockwork in different lanes. Uh, usually it just becomes position four or five. Omar, that's not your side of the map, buddy. Yeah, there's the dead in the water. Nowhere to run, so it's just flying by in the meantime. They already got themselves the Zormantic clear. We got the free shard. Is under attack. Which is a pretty okay. I mean, they have good shards on their supports. On the opposing side, yeah, both teams have really good shards, actually. Yeah, and so far, gameplay from Winterbear. Been really impressed. They're moving uh, across the map, uh, getting stuff done, instantly smoking, lurking for another kill. If they catch Noob here, that's going to be pretty big. Ravage available. They might not even Dyer's need it. Dead in the water. Jetpack for some flying vision. To scout things out and they're not gonna find him. Bottom tower is they do have a attack. really big vision advantage this game. They've got Clockwork, they've got uh, Nate's Prophet, they've got TA. They have three heroes that just give Dyer's you all the vision that's required attack. to Dyer's not get RP, to not get Chronoed. 
Seems like PSG Quest will need another set of items to take the fight. Right now, they don't feel comfortable playing into Aegis for another two minutes. Uh, Mikey does have BKB, even though they have multiple ways of piercing through this debuff immunity. They can RP him, uh, use Chrono. Uh, still, they want to farm up a little bit more, get the next set of items. They seal full Mjolnir on Faceless Void, probably next item. Might, might even need a BKB so that he can like walk down onto a target, but uh, he can also go different route. I think it's a good Scotty game. I'm just a little worried about those dispels that you said, because you are playing into Gleipnir, you are playing into TA Trap, so a lot of silences, and uh, you might need to get a BKB, because it, it sounds much safer, but we'll see how it's going to develop in the next few minutes. Kachal Radiant comes back to the bottom lane, and uh, yeah, he's like, what are you going to do about it? I'm so freaking tanky. Oh, oh that's a bit of an aggressive one. Throws out dead in the water, has the Ravage available. There's going to be the Ravage blow. Can they kill off Omar? Yes, they do. The Chrono gets thrown, but Yeezy lifts him out of the Chrono for the time being. Hook Good shot hook from shot. Hook. Stoic actually gets unfortunately connected. There's the RP onto Rubik. Using it onto the Rubik so that he does... Oh, ho, 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 he almost got the RP as a response off. And Malik going for the TP out of there. The Glide here one second away from being able to get cast. While well, Mike is going for the backline chase. Gori leaping over Stoic, but still being chased down. Caught inside the cogs and the Enchantress. Can he disengage? No, he cannot. Dead in the water, held in place, taken down. And Mikey is unstoppable. They're not done. Ooh, reality misses Gleipnir. Noob will manage to get out of trouble. Trap number one. Walk a little There's bit. Another to the side. one. Okay, he's just gonna be able to disengage. It seems. I like how reality TP'd immediately after he saw Faceless Void. They're like, "What are you? What are you gonna do? We have Tide Hunter who is super tanky." Kachal. Dropping very low. This damage from Techie is Omar getting a solo kill. 600 gold for him. Yeah, that's a, a pretty neat one. Stoic uh, expected that he wouldn't get blown to smithereens, but yeah, it, it stacks up pretty quickly once you get the debuff from the proximity mines on you. Jeezy wanting to get, uh, I think, leap stolen from the faces, boy. Probably one of the best spells on a Rubik, just so that Face Void can never kill you. It's kind of like with the Shikuchi from Weaver. Short cooldown, constantly keeps uh, spamming it. Obviously, the best spell that you can steal this game is going to be RP. But, as we saw in that previous fight, Malik just throws his RP on the Rubik, wanted, just to make sure Rubik doesn't get that steal. Yeah, and also, like, the Sprout to keep Tidehunter alive for a little longer. Noob has Manta Style available and Shard, so we'll be able to get out of trouble. It is a Chrysalis NP, so you do also have to be a bit careful there. Now you have two critting uh, heroes. Full Daedalus on the TA, Chrysalis on the Nate's Prophet. If you roll next to them, you mentioned it previously, you die very quickly. Yeah, especially with Daedalus now. And TA about the crack level 20 so meld the spells that's gonna be pretty massive you will be able to remove reactive taser time dilation uh, pango's lucky shot so real big timing now on temper assassin and going for even more damage going into mkb next so that's gonna be on menu for mikey next roshan could respawn in a minute definitely Good timing for Winter Bears to try to take it one more time. I do see him. Yep, Omar gets caught out. He'll uh, get a nice kill. Root onto TA2000, but he does have the man style, so he'll be able to disengage. But yeah, next Roshan's probably going to be a be very important marker. Uh, Mikey's also going for the MKB preemptively. The Faces Void's going for a Butterfly TA2000, which, um, yeah... It, will immediately be counted the moment Radiant he has it built up. I am really just wondering at what stage this void is going to choose to go for a BKB. I, I find it fairly scary. They're actually going in onto the tide in mid. He's got the Ravage at the ready. A lot of enemies right here. My oh, the Chrono misses the Mark. Kachel is going to die, but they get the RP onto reality. The MP is surrounded by enemies. He's not actually taking that much damage. Speaking of damage, is coming 
through with Mikey here. Jumping in, TA2000 gets blown up. How is Reality still not dead? Where is this defensive coming from? Malik on the run right now, very close to dropping. The stolen chrono stolen from chrono. Jeezy, and there's the jump onto Noob in the back line. Will he be able to take him down? Where the though? crit that? He doesn't get lucky. He just doesn't get lucky on Mikey. Ooh, that could have been pretty big. I mean, they did manage to burst Faceless Void like almost immediately. Chrono doesn't catch Mikey. He was holding on to Chrono for a really long time, trying to catch both of them, deciding whether he needs to use it on Tidehunter because Pango like can be considered as a good way of dealing with Tidehunter. Like you can, like you can't really stun lock him because of his. Uh, Kraken shell, but uh, you can try, you know, some bashes, uh, stun from techies, you can try to layer those up, but, uh, and they did, and I think this is a big dub for PSG Quest, it's just that T8 guy, he didn't get any crits in, so that's gonna be, maybe saving it for the next fight, the one that really matters. Yeah, you know, sometimes you get unlucky with the, the RNG in this game, you know, the random numbers will not be in your favor. They are gonna get aggressive quickly. They still have that Ravage, knowing that there's no Chrono, no RP for a little bit. So if they can find a good target here, Stoic spots out. Oh, more hook shots not gonna connect. Cheesy does have the lift, that's an easier tag. Kachal there is gonna be dead in the water on the face of Void, and the scores are all focusing the Void down. He is dead. The rest of the quest lineup has to run away. Omar's actually going in because he knows he's gonna drop, so tries to kill off Stoic, and he does find Stoic. I didn't even see that third mine. I saw two mines, they did, took down one, and then he randomly exploded. But uh, yeah, they find the target they want, and without a BKB, he marked it up. I need a BKB right now. It's very easy target. Oh, noob. Oh, shield. Already gone. They're chasing. Manta style on cooldown. There's he gonna be Glyph here. Up. He's very dead. It's hard to run away from a Nature's Prophet. And a TA with Blink and a Rubik. New life will make you, you ask when his face is why gonna buy BKB. He had one queued up immediately after Mjolnir. Then he's like, well, I'm playing into Nature's Prophet and TA. Maybe I can get away with Butterfly. And after dying that one time, he's like, okay, I need to swap things around. He's even gonna buy Mithril Hammer immediately. Yeah, it definitely uh, looks like he can't do uh, <laughs> anything in these fights the moment the uh, cores spot him out. I mean, that's all Kachal needs. He, he just wants to dead in the water him, ravage him, and then the basic void dies. They're gonna go for Roche. It is already smoke move time for PSG Quest. It is a very it's fast Roche take, though. Super quick. Who cares they about need some extra crit, double Daedalus, Daedalai. <laughs> That actually probably is the multiple, <laughs> the multiple form. Yeah. Oh, hook shot missing the mark on Takori. But he's got the Ag, so he does have that nasty little uh, triple rocket flare spam the entire time. Yeah, Stoic, he missed uh, three hook shots in a row. They still managed to win those fights. Uh, Roshan Banner was uh, and still is inside Rosh pit. Warpine Raider's also in, so I don't know if Kaori wants to pick it up or if he wants to deny it. Mikey, going for the swift bling next. Anything to just burst their opponents down. They also take this the second tournament. They take it very quickly, which I'm really happy to see that they they have cores that care about their supports. Also, this is a pretty like Rubik's shard is really nice. For, for instance, if you steal shockwave from Magnus. Uh, speaking of which, he is going for attributes with only one point of shockwave. But it is nice to have the second shockwave going in and. Such. And Most likely it's gonna be as well. Nuts. Yeah, used defensively. If we're talking about the like value of the shard, uh, you get RP'd, you try to get stun locked by Pangolier. It seems like this is gonna be a long game for PSG Quest. They need to dodge some of the fights, uh, get another set of items, this BKB on TA2000, very crucial. He's really poor. He's been strong. Like, when we look at TA2000, most of the games he's top net worth. Even if they lose, he's top net worth. That's kind of how he likes to play the game, but he is just no... He's been struggling the entire game. He hasn't even died that much. It's just the farm is 
not coming. It it's doesn't the pressure help. From, from winter bears. They're all over the place and uh, dead in the water. Gleipnir traps silence from Templar Assassin. There are multiple ways of dealing with this faceless wood. He doesn't have enough dispels, and now BKB is finally online. Scotty seems to be the next item of the choice to be slightly more tanky, and you are playing into two range cores, so that's going to be really good if you can manage to get that farm. I think it's go time. I think uh, Mikey just finished the. Uh, Mikey B, and also does have Enchanted Quiver, so that's going to be a ton attack. of damage coming out from him, getting closer to level 24, level 25. Now they're currently looking for target smoked up in towards mid. Top side, we got the, the Rubik guarding Reality. Slightly behind, Reality's got the Satanic now done, plus with the Ages, of course, he is very survivable. Going for the butterfly next. This is a, a really farmed Nature's Prophet. He also has Sprout Leashes at the ready. So this Faces Void needs to keep that Quelling Blade inside his inventory the entire time. Which is such a very unfortunate thing to have to do. Yeah, maybe upgrade it to Battle Fury. You have better Quelling Blade. Uh, Sprout Leashes. Remember when that uh, worked against the... BKB targets, so you're just like, okay, I can't do anything. <laughs> yeah, you, you just Radiant be stuck there. And, no, please, team, do something. <laughs> for something. Especially, especially Pango. Like, Pango was the one who struggled a lot against it, but it's still gonna struggle. I mean, the Sprout Leashes against Pango and Faceless Void is massive, plus you have Ned in the water. Wisdom Rune picked up, but Omar will die for it. Yeah, they do manage to get a quick kill coming in on towards Omar. Bottom lane, uh, TP away from Noob. So, they at least... That kill onto Omar delays any more push coming out from the Radiant side so far, which is, honestly, for PSG Crest, probably more advantageous. They do have the BKB now on the face of Void, so they're actually capable of taking a fight. But they need to hit the Chrono, because he's been also a little bit off on his Chronos this game. Yeah, we haven't seen this, like, massive Chrono. Problem is, something that we did mention is, even if he places, like, a really good Chrono, others can't deal damage, so it needs to be him hitting people. Now, Kaori might pump in some extra damage with uh, his Sproink, and also has Hurricane Pike available. Level 15 talent, 45 damage, so that's gonna start to add up. An interesting item choice from Noob. Wind Waker finished. I guess he wants to be able to protect himself against these traps, against these leashes, and might even need to protect TA2000 with the Wind Waker when they decide to go on him. It's also nice against the Sprout leashes. He also still has the Quelling Blade stuck, so they're like, ah, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, if this uh, Enchantress uses Hurricane Pike to deal damage, they're gonna be stuck inside the Sprout otherwise. Noob dead in the water, jumping onto Malik, hook shot as well. Magnus is dead, has a buyback available. They're looking for more. Need to be a little bit careful, of course, coming through from a buyback, but Noob is just taking a heap of damage. One more hit, He's and flying. it is gonna connect. He is dead. No buyback for 80 seconds on the Pango. Malik still doesn't want to buy back just yet. They jump away and they're gonna go for Rax. These barracks are gonna die so quickly. You have uh, two carries who are level 23, level 25. It's ton of damage. Kachal blinks in. Oh, Omar stays alive thanks to the Ghost Scepter coming through. Kachal is running out of mana as we speak. Mikey walking forward. Omar is dead. Buyback from the Magnus. They lost the racks already. They're gonna go for Mikey. They drag him back towards the fountain. It is a double buyback. RP even used. They're gonna kill Mikey. But, yeah, it's a 10 kill streak and a lot of gold going their way, but a double buyback for a full set of racks. Now, this is 100% a win for Winter Bear. Absolutely, and as soon as Templar Assassin is alive, Roshan might also be alive. So, I feel PSG Quest, they can't allow themselves to lose another Rosh because it will be Aegis and then sieging the high ground, like, how are you gonna kill this TA twice? It, I, I don't think it's gonna be possible. He's almost fully jacked. Level 25 TA can upgrade into Hurricane Pike, Swift Blink already available. 
Yeah, more mobility, more ways to dodge the Chronosphere. Uh, that it wasn't even used in that previous fight, by the way. Um, yeah, das I guess Dasso is for suckers on TA. Uh, it's all about that quick crit <laughs> and uh, get out. Mikey having a blast of a game. Like they, it seems like PSG Quest, they focus so hard on him, but the Reality and Kachal are also playing really well. Uh, GZ as well. He's 0 1 16. That's his score at the moment. He's got the Aghanim Scepter now done as well, so he can have two spells with him at the same time, which is nice. You, get, They have really good, like, Rolling Thunder is a good spell still. Chrono is a great one. Uh, anything really from the Magnus is sublime. Tacky stuff. What if you steal RP and Chrono? Then you could and have the weird... Because <laughs> you can walk inside the your own Chrono, so you Chrono them, you walk up, and you just RP them the moment that the Chrono ends. That's... That's a neat one. Yeah, I don't think that uh, <laughs> happens a lot in Dota, especially in professional Dota, but uh, a man can always dream. The only death he actually has as well is the solo RP in that bottom fight that was thrown on him, where they got destroyed because they used RP on a solo uh, Rubik. He's also going for the Wind Waker, so that's uh, their own saving method against the Faces Void. Which they still actually don't have, but I guess it's not required. It hasn't been required at all this game to have a save for the Radiant side. Rolling Thunder. Noob. Scouting things out. Not gonna find anything. They wanted to take one fight before TA revives. Kachal, how's he doing? He's doing really well. Dead in the water. Dead in the water. Hookshot comes out. There's the Ravage blown as well. Push back. The problem is the TA is a little bit further away. TA 2000 gets to jump back. Reality going in. Gets himself chrono. Need to be careful if Mikey gets an angle here. TA 2000. And the jump forward coming in. Oh, TA 2000. Stolen that chrono. stolen chrono comes out. And Jeezy tried to steal the RP there. He was uh, greedy for more, but will get the Empower, which is also not bad to give to his scores. Pangalier running away with the Wind Waker, has the Swashbuckle, has the Shield Crash, but has no way out when the Nature's Prophet joins the fight. Yee! Man's gonna get rooted up in the process, because he's got that disgusting Sprout Leashes. There's the GG call, and it is indeed Winter Bear that takes game number one. Now, oh, what a start of the day. I mean, this has to be, like... Massive upset and uh, coming into game two, uh, we've seen in the first game that they focus heavily on Mikey in terms of bands and also how they moved around them, try to kill him multiple times. Uh, still, big kudos to Jeezy because he was the one stacking and this allowed Mikey to stay on top of the network pretty much throughout the whole game. But uh, yeah, great play. Even though bottom lane looked uh, a little bit wonky at the start, uh, moves around the map. Uh, they were very, very crisp uh, going for Roshans. And uh, I think Tide played an extremely good game because uh, Kachal, he was all over the place. He was defending his bottom tower, teeping mid to defend it. And uh, you mentioned something really cool, like the, the rune thing where they were actually keeping an eye. So he picks up that double damage. It's not like they did a lot with that DD. It just shows uh, how good of an understanding of the game they have. And yeah, I'm I'm very impressed. Yeah, it's uh, definitely one of the more impressive performances uh, I've seen. Uh, the Nature's Prophet save lane worked wonderfully. Of course, the mid TA that uh, got a lot of the priority from their team with all the stacking, as you mentioned. It's been uh, very solid to see the winter bear performance and their win previously in bedroom dutch against a team like enigma is definitely no uh no fluke this team is here to play and the mana region is uh better off for having them actually i'm i'm looking forward to game number two because they played a really composed style of dota that i just don't get to see too often. Nonetheless, that was game number one. Will PSG Quest be able to recover in game number two? We'll see it after the break. We'll be right back.
Welcome Sex back, dream. ladies and gentlemen, Dad, to some more back. Dota action here on the Void channel. My name is Dika Druman. I'm joined by Lacoste, and we have ourselves quite a bit of a starting upset, possibly, here in the meta region with Winterbear ticket game number one against PSG Quest. I mean, this was a, a really nice surprise. I think it's going to spice things up for the rest of the qualifiers as well. Uh, PSG Quest, they need to go full force in the second game. They don't want to drop down to lower bracket because uh, Winter Bear showed some like top tier Dota uh, from movements around the map, Five some like remaining. item timings as well, different itemization as well, TA with uh, no Deso whatsoever, and uh, yeah, just the movement. Uh, I think that's the biggest one for me, how they were able to go together, not lose any part of the map throughout the whole game against the experienced team that PSG Quest is. So PSG Quest will pick up Nature's Profit for themselves. Uh, they're like, you know what? We had a little bit of a trouble in the previous game, Quest getting outmaneuvered and outnumbered. So we're going to take it immediately. Winter Bear will respond with Vengeful Spirit. Uh, this is a... Strong position four slash five can also be played at position three if it's a really good game for it. But uh, most of the time you'll see it as support uh, having like damage barrier now on her remaining. ulti allows her to be super tanky and also dealing tons of damage five with it when you swap remaining. a target. Yeah, the shield right uh, these Quest days is insane on the Vengeful Spirit, really uh, making the heroes swap worthwhile because normally it was you swap and instantly you're dead but uh you do have a couple of tools here i like winter bear is just gonna make sure that they're not gonna be playing against naga this series i think that's gonna be first phase ban every single time because it is uh it makes play i'm wondering if uh psg quest by the way is gonna make this a omar or gory actually also plays nate's profit five uh or if they're gonna try and maybe replicate what winter bear did i i don't think Ten we will probably remaining. see that but at least they'll make sure that there will not be any more flex Five potential from uh, the np on winter bear side yeah it's position one nature's profit is not your typical carry nowadays but uh, they made him work i guess it's also one of his specialty heroes that he loves to play and uh, he brought it out. They won with a very convincing fashion in this first game. So on the side of Quest, I would say that they are probably going to play it as support because you mentioned that uh, Kaori and Omar play it. Removing some of the heroes that Mikey likes to play. Tiny and also Ember Spirit. There's still a couple of his heroes left in the pool. Uh, I think they might need to pick it later down the line, uh, give Ten Mikey seconds, win remaining. conditions since they do have last pick in this game. Five so, seconds, you know, we're remaining. looking for this potential uh, Queen West of Pain, uh, some Lina. Never mind, Lina is banned by them. But uh, yeah, we'll take Gyrocopter, which is uh, a hero we see most of the time on a support role, but can also be played as carry. This hero has been initially played as a carry, but uh, yeah, this remaining. is also a very good way to amplify damage if this is going to be Five carry. Vengeful remaining. Spirit plus Gyro, you have a good vision for his flak to go off. You have later on a little bit of uh, extra damage coming from that Vengeance Aura. Maybe she buys Vlad, so amplify that damage, give him lifesteal. And also to speed things up, this is how Winter Bear have been playing in the first game, hitting some earlier timings, and uh, I'd love to see it again. Yeah, they, they have plenty of flex in the lineup, it seems. The Gyrocopter, I've even seen it as an offlane, but that was Jenkins and he got crushed. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so we kind of ignore that one. Timbersaw, though, that one is disgusting. It's a noob hero. It's also a Malik hero. So they have the flex behind it. And honestly, I, I, I don't think I've seen the Timbersaw lose in quite some time. I think all of the Timbersaw games pretty much win. Pretty much, this hero is indeed nuts. Well, maybe it's time to shift this gyrocopter. Even though the hero has tons of magic damage early on, you want to skill your other remaining. abilities. Like, you might try to kill Timbersaw, then you fail, and you're like, uh-oh, now I have three points 
in my queue as gyrocopter which means that i can't farm timber saw hits level six and then you're pushed out of the lane you die uh can be very tricky uh there's still some heroes left in the pool that uh timber saw should be afraid of uh, you know this ursa uh it's a good slark game against these heroes until timber saw gets like massive uh maybe even monkey king if you want to shut him down in the laning stage because I feel if you're giving Timbersaw completely free lane, but then again, PSG Quest can put this Timbersaw in the mid lane and just say whatever, but uh, I think you need to have some kind of counter because this hero, as you mentioned, uh, just doesn't lose. <laughs> it's uh, so powerful with all the new items and item upgrades that have come through that you don't even really re need reactive armor in a lot of cases and that right there is probably the scariest aspect to me the fact that reactive armor is like eh it's like with bristleback where he got the one point as, eh. <laughs> why would you need more points in bristleback the, the singular one is good enough they are gonna go for the dp got banned last game uh winter bear i'm surprised i haven't seen more dp i think currently with the items that you know Ten kind of the same remaining. items that timbersaw gets work really well for Tim, uh, the death prophet five seconds remaining yeah she's a really strong hero when paired up with another strong laner this hero can pop off like she can build into pretty much anything you did mention similar items Quest to timbersaw i think these like eternal shroud power. shiva's guard are the items to go for especially when you're playing against uh, like timber not so much eternal shroud but uh, mostly shivas but you know other heroes are going to have some kind of a spell damage so you want to have that eternal shroud makes her super tanky uh they're Ten a bit on the remaining. not too much team fight coming out from winter bear Five other than that prophet ulti other heroes are relatively squishy Quest Esports, turn okay, to the Ranger. Ranger at your service. Clockwork. I mean, the Clockwork obviously should probably be another stoic one. He had a bit of a rough one. Decent amount of hook shots missed the mark. Team um, did have really good catches with his cogs and battery assault in the middle of team fights, Dyer where he team managed back. to group up multiple enemy heroes. That was pretty well done, but yeah, it, it did have uh, a couple too many whiffs initially. We do get to Ooh. see the Wind Ranger, though. That one is... Uh, they have very little weights to catch him. Yeah, I, I like Puck Ten a lot for Winter Bear because it's great against Timber Saw. You have... Like, you build into Witchblade, the uh, magic remaining. damage against Wind Ranger, Rubik, Nature. These are all, like, very easy Quest targets e for him to pick to up. Ban. But uh, they don't have the first pick, so they, they need to get rid of it because uh, they also don't have, like, any instant stuns. Uh, Clockwork Hookshot is okay. Oh, K-ish, but uh, there needs to be a follow-up stun or some kind of a silence, and they don't have that. Even though there is that profit, there's still projectile speed, so remaining. not the easiest way to lock it down. And uh, you might have some kind of a Five save later on with remaining. the shard from Rubik, any kind of a four-step glimmer cape. Uh, so, no, not really surprised that they banned him. Uh, pretty similar to what happened in game one in the last banning phase. They wanted to remove all these all these elusive heroes. I believe Vind Ranger will be played as a carry in this one because they want to mimic where that prophet is uh, she can run away from spirit siphon and wind ranger is one mean carry universal hero builds into maelstrom as her firing item and then you can pretty much get anything whether we're talking about the lincoln sphere manta style agonim scepter later down the line you will have the fusel blade as well uh, so you blow people up have another way of dispelling yourself uh, this hero is just insane right now it does get uh, played a lot in the pick. safe lane role, off lane sometimes, uh, even sometimes so as a support. But uh, with a Wind Ranger and a Storm Spirit and a Timber Saw, you have three uh, very elusive heroes on the side of uh, PSG Quest. And Winter Bear have very little catch. The Gyrocopters, the homing missile is like it's kind of useless against them. The Clockworks hook shot is a skill shot. Well, if you miss it, it's over. And the Vengeful Spirits zip uh, stun can. I mean, it, it takes some time to reach the targets. Storm can even dodge it for that matter. Timbersaw can already be across the entire map before that connects. So I'm, I'm really digging the fact that PSG Quest is so elusive. However, 
Winter Bear just pick up a hero that can chase after them at all times, and it's going to be a mid DP. Uh, yeah, they 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 needed something because uh, offlane that prophet shares a lot of XP with position four, which means that uh, you don't get that silence early on. Maybe you get like one value point, but uh, there are there weren't many heroes left in the pool who can deal well with the storm spirit. I think. The other option was maybe less track with the Yule Scepter build, and then you have like a follow up stun afterwards. But uh, they decided to go with Dark Shear, and uh, I assume Stoic will be playing position four in this one, or just like lane with Dark Shear because Dark Shear plus Vengeful Spirit doesn't sound as good. And then I, I think for reality, it doesn't matter as much who's you gonna be playing against because. For Clockwork, it's really good to go against both Timbersaw uh, and also the pairing with the Darkshear. But they also might say, you know, screw it. We want to have these uh, Gyrocopter Clockwork to have some extra kill potential on the Timbersaw. So I want to see what Winter Bear decides in the end. I think both options are really good, but I am favoring PSG Quest lineup in this one because there isn't enough lockdown for Storm Spirit and the uh, Wind Ranger. She just goes brrr pretty much in every single game that I watch. Yeah, they've got the Wind Ranger, they've got the t uh, Timber Saw, they got the tools. Uh, it is definitely not going to be an easy affair. Um, I mean, even if you have the Clockwork in that lane, you would play a two range versus two melee matchup. One of the range uh, on the opposing side is a Nature's Prophet, which is very hard to deal uh, with as a... I mean, if you get on top of her, <laughs> she dies. But... She's in tower range, so most of the time you won't be able to get that close to the Nate's Prophet anyway. And even if you get like a really big vacuum wall play going on, Timbersaw uses one whirling death and all the illusions are dead. Yeah, I'm also slightly afraid for Winter Bear's offlane. Seems like it's going to be easy playing with Darkshear. There isn't much synergy between these heroes, and you're also... Darkshire into two range heroes, so that's gonna be. I want to see how much he's gonna be able to get from this lane because in the previous one he was the kind of driving seconds, factor of the team. Wherever he went, rest of the team did follow him. In this one, laning stage wise, he's gonna have much worse time compared to the first game. Yeah, the uh, game one he played on that tide of course completely safe no one could harm him at all and he was just uh relaxingly farming this time around you might want to get some more jungle farms going kachal nicely begins. done walks underneath the tower range behind the trees so knows that there's an observer ward on the high ground pings it out and Corey will immediately be forced to deny his own observer ward Make sure that they don't get the gold. But yeah, probably another game where you might want to get some stacks going. Um, you have a Gyrocopter. You have a Darkseer. Two heroes that love taking stacks, especially the Gyrocopter with a couple of levels of the Flak Cannon to get his quick Ags, Chrysalis, and go ham. Yeah, and now you have Vengeful Spirit in bottom, so that's going to be some easy stacks made in the triangle with wave of terror stacking both camps uh, you can already see kachal he can't really get close and uh, yeezy dropping low this might be first blood if they decide to commit but uh, yeah a bit of a pause coming out from kachal it seems a uh, slight dc they're, uh, they're coming in hopefully no uh, sticking issues but yeah, as a vengeful spirit, like in general, playing against an Age Prophet and then also playing against an Age Prophet from the trees is really dangerous. You get hit by a sprout, you're not gonna get get out. Like if you throw four tangos to cut all the trees around you, you still will be stuck and surrounded by more trees. It is really <laughs> annoying. Yeah, you gotta be careful where you're playing when you're against uh, support NP. And top lane, I mean. Jaro is actually pretty good against Timbersaw. That's one plus that they have. Um, and Cla Rubik is not the greatest. Against Clockwork, obviously, you have Lift and you can drag him away. But the Timbersaw might not have the full freest lane that he would like to have. There is definitely kill potential between the two sides, especially, you know, once level 6 gets reached, 
you got the call down on one hand that's a lot of damage but there's also the timber saw with the chakram so i think the moment you hit level six in that top lane on either side it's going to be uh go time for the kill one hero that timber doesn't like to play into is clockwork battery assault stopping his timber chain heavy magical damage and uh, looking at what Gyro has in his quick buy, if I saw Falcon Blade, that would mean that he would put like multiple points into Rocket Barrage, but uh, it doesn't seem like it's going to be the case. They m still might be able to get some kills onto Timbersaw, like level level 2, level 3. Uh, I could see him potentially dying, but uh, not going to be an easy one because of the Rubik Flip, what you mentioned. Yeah, there's a bit of that save behind it. Bottom, I definitely think that there's going to be a couple of kills onto the uh, Winter Bear side. In response, I mean, maybe you could. It's it's hard to get a kill onto the Nate's Prophet or Wind Ranger as a response with the. Yeah, I I don't I don't see them dying in this lane. Wind Ranger who can run away with Wind Run, Nature's Prophet uh, very high on stats. I, I assume he's going to be changed to Universal at one point because uh, no, he doesn't strike me as Intelligence Hero anymore now that we added Universal Heroes. Yeah, but you can't put everything to Universal. <laughs> Otherwise, eventually every hero will be... Uh, like Winter Wyvern is also not a hero that I'd be like, yep, that seems like a Universal Hero to me. Sure, why not? Okay, makes sense. What if every hero is universal? Then the game would be really boring. Actually, not really boring, but it would be slightly less boring. Uh, <laughs> well, well. Fun, yeah. Fun. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, even Dark I mean... Series universal. And uh, what was it? Uh, well, Vengeful Spirits also universal. That one actually kind of doesn't make sense. But... Uh, you even have talents now on heroes that also turn you into universal with the Viper. That's that's a weird one for sure. It's like, you know what? I'm building into all these stats, uh, getting Manta style, Dragonlance, and uh, yeah, it's suddenly you're like, well, here's an extra 150 damage on my hero. Not bad. Yeah, sure. Why not? Just change the entire freaking base of the hero. Cool. I'm actually checking out which... Uh, oh, yeah, Timbersaw is also universal, so now he's got insane right clicks. Clockwork, I find a weird one to be universal. Yeah, I, I still feel Clockwork could be strength. He does strike me as a strength hero. For example, Vengeful Spirit. This is not an edgy hero, so... Yeah, universal really does uh, fit it. Uh, same goes for Darkshire. I think Darkshire also, you know, it's not like... He was intelligence hero before. Which but, also uh, didn't strike me as correct, but yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, so some of these heroes that uh, were kind of like in the middle in terms of stats, what they do and everything. So Universal does make sense. When it was first introduced, I'm like, what the hell is this? <laughs> and then you, I mean, in the beginning, it was like every team had four, at least four Universal heroes in their lineup. Otherwise, you suck. <laughs> Void Spirit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Void Spirit, uh, Snapfire, uh, like they just, uh, Bat Rider was also always picked. And you just got owned because they had like a hundred more damage than any other <laughs> hero in the game at any stage. Ooh, that's not supposed to happen. Oh, they got level two. I believe before and then kill him he's still level one I was paying attention to the bottom lane but uh, yeah as you said I don't think this should happen I don't think Chiro should die I mean they had the same issue in the previous game where they like didn't really lane well in their safe lane it was mostly like later plays uh, coming out from Mikey and also Kachal but this time around it's gonna be much more difficult Kaori keeping mid Stealing a bottle <laughs> refill and then we're going back to the bottom lane. I'm actually kind of uh, intrigued by the fact it's, it's that rude. It, well, that first of all, but uh, I'm intrigued by the fact that flat cannon, if you use it on creeps and it hits the timber side, doesn't give him a reactive armor stack. I would have thought that it would have given him a reactive armor stack because it's tech. Well, it's it's weird. It's technically an attack, but it's also not. 
Yeah. Dota 2? Yep, Dota 2. <laughs> It's like um, someone. There was someone asking in chat a couple of days ago uh, about like the interaction between Tombstone and Rolling Thunder. If you could like bounce against the Tombstone and back, and then someone in chat was like, "Oh my God, you're so stupid! Of course that doesn't work." And I'm thinking, yeah, but it works with ice shards, and it works with you know cogs. Why doesn't it work with the freaking Tombstone? It's a gigantic Tombstone. He should bounce against it. It makes no sense. <laughs> It's uh, it's not a building. It's uh, I don't even know what it uh, classifies at. But uh, yeah, Winterbear having some internet issues. Hopefully that is fixed soon, so we can continue with the game. But uh, how's mid lane doing? Pretty even, thirteen and three against thirteen zero on side of Noob. Uh, Want to see what the build on that profit is gonna be? Uh, it's a good uh, Yule's game. I don't I don't know if you should like rush it, but uh, might be. A setup for some storm spray. They're really lacking in like stun department, uh, any kind of a control against Timber Saw. It would also be good. Uh, I've seen people theory crafting more Whoops. when uh, they are Whoops. in this kind of situation. Pick up Road of Athos against Storm, against Timber, Wind Ranger to keep them in place. Uh, could be just like a casual item for that profit since. Uh, that's exactly what you need, a little bit of HP, some mana, some damage. I was actually uh, thinking about yeah, I've, the internet issues for a second. The mana region is really freaking huge, if you think about it. Like, it's Morocco is part of the mana region as well, and so is Iran. They're like halfway across the planet from each other. One's West Africa, the other one is like full-on Middle Middle East. I mean, even Eastern Middle East. Yeah, I thought that was going to be some, like, Rod of Atos reference, but we got into ge geography real quick. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I was just thinking about the entire... Uh, the, the meta region as a whole, and, like, what countries entail with it and such. I, I always like seeing what countries are part of what region specifically. I mean, we... Uh, now it's called EU, but we used to have what the cis region. Yeah, it was cis and uh, Western Europe, pretty much. Uh, bottom lane, uh, Darkshire doing slightly better than I expected. Malik in a bit of a trouble, but uh, yep. it seems like Oik is in trouble. And reality will be able to get the kill onto Omar. A lot of damage to be pumped out. Malik actually. Takes a heap more damage than he would like, while Kachal dies bottom lane with the noob rotation. A level 4 Storm Spirit rotation as well. Jeezy dies, double kill for noob. Okay, that's a pretty good moment to Top lane. get a kill. Major Prophet's gonna TP in. Oh, already going for the fight. Uh, he's taking a lot of damage actually on the Nace Prophet, but will be able to get the kill and walk away. Yeah, lanes are going real bad for Winterbear in this one. They're losing. I mean, Storm Spirit going for three minutes bounty rune and then getting a double kill out of it is something that uh, should not happen. Plus, also them killing enemy safe laner. Uh, he, in the end, the reality did go for two points in Rocket Barrage to try to square up and fight against this Timber Saw, but uh, eventually, if you're not getting the kills, uh, you will start to fall off. Currently sitting at only 9 CS, so that's a bit of a bummer. I was uh, actually uh, thinking about how sad that must feel right now for the uh, mid DP. He had a really good lane against the uh, against Noob on the Storm Spirit. He was doing a very good job keeping him low the entire time, and then you know, Noob box away, comes back with two kills, and you're like, guys. Why is this happening? I was winning my lane. It's one of those moments where you get really pissed off at you're the rest of your team. <laughs> you're doing your job and they're, they're screwing it up for you. But that's why it's a team game. Gotta be there to support them. Uh, they left reality alone in this top lane, so there is Blood Grenade available plus left. I can see reality dying one more time. They're trying to make a move on a mid lane. Because Noob is still level 5. There is Kaori TPing and these are some 
freebie for PSG Quest. They're uh, definitely uh, looking a lot better this time around on PSG Quest. And will they be able to keep that going is the question. Mikey gets blocked off. They deny the arcane rune. No bottle refill coming through. Jeezy's trying to catch up to Corey. Jeezy's level 2, by the way. Really on the struggle bus on this uh, vengeful spirit spot out where noob is he is level six so he'll be able to get the zip away death prophet he doesn't actually have exorcism on mikey three points in spirit siphon and three points in crypt swarm uh, guess his catapult died and he did not want to skill it but uh, yeah both supports are extremely under leveled they they need that xp rune they can't allow kaori to potentially TP and steal it. That would be game losing. All it's already 3k gold lead for PSG quest. Let's yeah. See if Kaori maybe wants to go for it. TP is available. Dire and Radiant scan at the same time. He's TPing it, faking it. Dyer's middle tower is uh, under they do have a bit of a recovery possibility here with this juicy ancient stack made. By the dire side. They need to be careful that it doesn't get stolen because if Timber saw is like, ooh, money. It did get. Okay, it did get pinged out by the Fangeful Spirit. I was like, did it get pinged out by Quest? They probably know that there's going to be stacks in the area though. But uh, it's the question when the Gyrocop is going to head that direction. He has level 2 flat cannon, probably level 3. Should definitely go there before it goes wrong. Kachal is going to take the smaller camp. So I guess the Ancient will go to uh, the Gyro to Oof. recover. Top uh, lane, Stoic dropping almost immediately. Malik is level 6, so Stoic. almost impossible to defend yourself. Drop down, Gyro. Mikey gets jumped. Has that Spirit Siphon still to keep himself going. Noob rotated right behind the DP. And they, even if the DP pops Exorcism, it's really hard to have a lockdown on the enemies. That's why he's going for the Rod of Echoes for a second. Yeah, they do lack some of the stuns. Uh, why, why I mentioned it, that could be an item of a choice, but uh, not going to be an easy one. And the reality put even a third point into Rocket Barrage and most likely just going to die here to Malik. Yeah, trying to get as many creeps as possible before he drops Malik as he's unaware and tears. 303 on the Timber Saw. Nothing really to hold him back. And it might just be another one for our statistic of Timbersaw. Kind of always freaking wins. It's a wild hero. Uh, we may be overtuned this hero with uh, some direct buffs and also indirect buffs with uh, new items that you can buy, uh, neutral items that you get. Uh, remember the time where there was, what was it called? Ironwood tree, neutral item. And oh, then you yeah. always had Timber Chain. You could have placed it. Uh, they would have loved to have that one. Attack. Have Wind Ranger, so good way of shackling. I mean, I'm happy that they, they removed uh, a bunch of the items. I will never forget the, uh, forgive them for the uh, what uh, the repair kit. Oh, repair kit. Yeah, that was a. It had. That's what did he have? It had multi shot, and then like if you if you get it, you're like, okay, we lost. You're trying to push, they delay. Strength protector plus repair kit. Yeah, you're just like, we got a fast lineup repair kit on the tower. Why is this a thing? <laughs> we can't kill it for the next 40 seconds. Ogori. We had a a lot of wild ones in Dota. I think uh, the biggest one for me was. These uh, shrouds, moonwells, what were they called? The, what, uh, the, the ones that uh, replenish HP and mana when you clicked on them. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they were um, in your base and randomly uh, on a spot on the map, I think. Uh, I mean, the, the map changes are always really cool because it completely changes the dynamic of the game. And they, they find stuff that I would not even think about. Yeah, because it was impossible to push high ground. Yeah, they just stand there, click do, on uh, it. I don't know what they're called, so I'm going to call them moon walls. I forgot the word, but... Uh, Probably just shrine. Uh, shrines, yeah, Radiant maybe shrines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, shrines. it's so long ago. 
God. I can't remember. At least they keep some things in the game and remove others, and they remove the thing that was really annoying, so I'm happy about that. Kachal's gonna get zipped on and very quickly taken care of. Omar even steals the wall of replica. Which means that Mikey and Stoic and Jeezy are gonna head the other direction. The supports are not level six just yet, which is problematic, especially for Clockwork. Without Oakshot, you've got kinda nothing. Radiance Courier has been killed. Bottom Winter Bear tried to go for a wraparound. There was Dyer's no exorcism available. It's still on cooldown for 60 seconds, 60 plus. Actually, it's gonna be see. very hard. Who took the ancient stuff? Uh, I think Darkshare took the, the at least tried to take one in the triangle because he was using Iron Shell on the big creeps. Ah, okay. I wasn't sure if uh, it got stolen by like Timber saw walking by, or because the storm sipped from attack. that direction. Maybe would have tried something. Well, he has his own stacks actually on Noob in their triangle that are pretty huge, but not as huge as how this Malik with almost the full Eternal Shroud is ready to rumble. First item, Eternal Shroud, Seeds of Serenity. So his. Regeneration, magic resistance is going to be through the roof. I don't see him dying. I, I'm not sure if they can kill Malik unless they bring like four heroes on top of him. And even then, I think he'd probably take three with him. The two supports <laughs> definitely will just get absolutely destroyed. A couple of those uh, Chakrams plus Whirling Death smacks. Oh, they're going to smoke up. TA 2000, he's got the Milstrom ready, and they're looking for a possible catch fight in the mid lane. Mikey has a Rod of Atos, which is nice. They're going to be zipping onto Mikey. Do they have enough damage to burst him down before he gets some spells off? Yes, they do. On the side, Omar with uh, Stoic right next to him. TA 2000 gets himself a second kill, chasing for GZ. The swap might keep him alive for a little bit longer. He needs to make sure that he does not walk in the tree range. Unfortunately, Malik can be everywhere and nowhere at the same time. 8k net worth lead now for PSG Quest. And yeah, this is um, this is a rough one. It's not like Winter Bear's lineup does that well from behind. Yeah, and they're stealing some of their attacks right now. I believe this one is uh, very, very hard for Winter Bear to recover. They don't have the heroes who can make like these type of plays they rely on dead profit ulti if you misuse that you're not going to be able to fight for like two minutes plus and now they're going to smoke try to make something happen uh malik tp's back to base kaori is going for the orchid first item on the nature's profit position five just want to throw it out there because uh that's how good his game has been going so far. Rubik Aetherland. Radiant are scanning. The other interesting sprites. Noob's already got the Witchblade done. So he's got, he has potential to solo kill anyone he encounters. Sorry. The Observer spots him. So they do manage to get that kill. Turn it in towards the tier 1 tower. That's at least a little bit of space to be made here for uh, the side of Winterbear. is under attack. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Good thing for them is Quest doesn't have the Radiant most tower damage. Tower there are fallen. no Treants from Nature's Prophet yet. Uh, Timber doesn't deal tower damage. Wind Ranger is so so unless you use Focus Fire on the tower. But uh, so yeah, they, they might play this game uh, for another good 15 20 minutes. The uh, problem is there's gonna be a Roche attempt from Quest Dyer's coming out relatively soon, attack. I assume, with focus fire. Uh, Nature's Prophet can easily TP there, tank up, and it's already being pinged out. Kaori is like immediately, let's do it. Yeah, there's uh, of course, still a gyro in the game, and uh, he is not the most farmed, he's actually the least farmed of all the cores. But a gyrocopter in the late game can also still be very dangerous to deal with. So, I'm not saying that they're on a timer in the slightest, they definitely aren't on the timer. But there's always the threat of you know, Aghanim Scepter, Gyro with Satanic and Daedalus, and he just stands his ground. 
Gotta get the items, push faster, Wind Ranger is a great hero to take down other safe laners. Hey, we team fights make it a little bit rougher, but luckily enough they do have a storm as the well, and the gym saw obviously as a backup to get the damage in. Well, they just saw Mikey, so might initiate on him. This high ground obs. Let's cut him out for a second. And you mentioned noob. You could go for solo kills with this Witchblade, and they will do so. We'll kill easy immediately. Yeah, he's got the ages anyway. Plus, the haste room was still going. Going Kaya Sands next. He doesn't have anything to fear at this stage. They have a severe lack of lockdown on Winterbear. Hey, even uh, the Dark Seer is going for Guardian Grief, so a lot more defensively oriented. I ex think they expect to go for the high ground defense already. Michelle. Vacuum wall onto two. Nice catch coming out. Malik actually taking a lot of Ooh, damage. Oh, he's here. dropping. And tries to get the timber chain away. Is going to get finished off, and that is huge. A four kill streak, but a lot of gold. That's more than one grand going to the dire side. Call down, I guess. And Rocket Flare, uh, Rocket Barrage is still not too shabby. That was well done. Timber saw. Pretty much exploded. He wishes he bought maybe Sanj instead of this Kaya now. And they're chasing Mikey. And they catch him. There's also reality coming with a little bit of mana. There's a silence. Rotovatas are committing. Yeah, they're going in pretty heavily. TA2000. The swap comes back. He is going to drop in another big kill on a core. PC quest, they're they're, they're loosening loosening the up a little bit, and that is a very dangerous thing to do. Rodovatus is available against Noob. He still has that Aegis, of course, but he is gonna lose that Aegis. And they're looking to try and lock him down the cogs. Can they nice him? lift to interrupt it, but the hook shot's not gonna be able to connect the noob zips by reality. Will die to Kaori and Malik in the meantime. While well, they were so focused on the enemy's course, they forgot about their own. Radiant Great save, by the way, coming out from Omar. That was 100% uh, going to be a kill otherwise. Yeah, cogs into silence. No way Storm Spirit can defend himself against that. But uh, yeah, some signs of life from Winterbear. Even though things were went horribly wrong for them in early game, they managed to recover. And I see Yeezy trying to farm up his Agadim Scepter. It's a very greedy one, but if he somehow because Vegetable Spirit doesn't really farm. This hero wants to fight. And uh, maybe if he finds Philosopher's Stone as his neutral item, Dyer's that's going to help him. But it's going to be a lot of uh, dead net worth on you until you get that Aghanim Scepter. Yeah, it's a greedy thing, but considering you just die in like three seconds anyway, uh, having that second life uh, might be a big deal. Plus, your spells get reset, so Dyer's the second stun, the second swap, always a big plus. Speaking of which, the 2000 is going to get dragged back. The cog pushes him out. Wind Run's still going. He is still alive. Kachal has the wall plus a vacuum that he can drop. Mikey needs to be careful. At no exorcism available at the moment. That's another Rod of Aethos though. They will lose reality again. Corey with the rotation coming through. Oh my gets dragged back. Will be healed up. I don't know how he got that much healing though, but is still going to die in the end. There's going to be the set for by new control onto Kachel. The Dark Sea is going to get dragged inside the Stoic's Cogs, which is not exactly where he wants to be. New actually needs to be careful. Rod of Aethos comes out. Jeezy with the stun. They will find a huge kill. But there's no more healing left for Mikey, and Jeezy will just be hunted by Malik. In combination with the Sprout, Shacker, and uh, uh, Whirling Death Combos it is pretty nasty. He's going to go for the TP attempt, but... Malik is too big and too deadly. <laughs> Full team wipe for PSG quest. The first they killed Reality on the side. He's just dying to Nature's Prophet plus one. First it was Timbersaw. Now plus Storm Spirit. They have this global presence. If they catch one hero, now you have Orchid on Nature's Prophet. Storm zips in. You're not going to lack damage to kill any of these heroes. Reality trying to farm up. Uh, Trying to get to his next item, which is going to be BKB after finishing off Aghanim Scepter. But uh, yeah, still there isn't real, really a protection unless there's Vengeful Spirit sitting behind him constantly to swap him out of the trouble. Yeah, it's a 
it's good damage on the side of Winterbear if they have Exo. But without Exo, they are severely lacking in damage. When Gyro, because Gyro is farming on the side lanes the entire time, so he's not joining them. And uh, yeah, it's all about Mikey at that stage. Yeah, we'll join them now to see how this fight's gonna go. Feels like he can't just play on the other side of the map, uh, getting caught. Maybe it's better to go with the team. Level 2 Exo is available. Dead Prophet is tanky. Mikey having this Mage Slayer, so uh, some overtime damage. Oh no, sorry. it's happening again. Yeah, disgusting, disgusting player. Does it first with the Enchantress and now with the Nate's Prophet. Denying all the XP rooms. Uh, Mikey is getting close to the Shivas. That's actually a big pickup. Considering you're playing against the Timber Saw, healing reduction is always nice. And the A we slow against the Hero like the Ringo will be a very big plus. Shard 2. Okay, it's good on the clock. We probably would have wanted it more on the Vengeful Spirit, though. Absolutely. And uh, I did mention maybe he's going to be blessed by getting the big boy Philly. Vengeful Spirit finds it. So halfway to the Agadims. Don't we? I don't know, you need 5-6 minutes farming with Philosopher's Stone, not dying to be able to get that Axe. But you also, most of the time, want to have buyback in some of these fights closer to your base. Kaori. And they catch him here, maybe. He's worth a lot of gold. Yeah, the... Kyori is just playing it as a core. This is kind of what I expected from the Enchantress last game. Like he's, he's position 5 and he's got an Orchid going for a BKB. That's just... That's Kyori plus 5. I love to see it because, you know, greedy plus 5. That's what you fun. do. Yeah. <laughs> Not always, but yes. On certain heroes, yeah, I think you can go greedy. Map is big enough, especially for these global heroes who can contribute something from a different side of the map. Because no one is taking this farm, and he can easily join into a team fight. Storm getting caught. Road of Atos doesn't last uh, long. Yeah, That's Mikey. That is resistance. Mikey, the moment he saw the storm, started using his spell. Yeah, he, he was invisible. He could wait. There was no haste behind it. He could wait for his teammates to get a little bit closer and maybe make that play, but overshot his shot there. Reality. Very nice sound coming out from triple cooldown. Definitely the better uh, version right now. The previous one was uh, a big fat meh. His ulti was bad. Pretty much always underwhelming. You would see people like putting one point in it, uh, sometimes even skipping it. Uh, you throw it down, it looks like it's doing something, it does absolutely nothing. Thank for Curry dying one more time. I hear Shackle. But, but so he's just gonna staff. jet back back. And we'll be back in his base. It looks like it's getting close to high ground push time. Tier 2 tower bottom is the last one. Uh, soon to be standing with that mid one being taken down by the Wind Ranger. And does Reality have... Like, Reality's got the same net worth as Gory. I mean, to be fair, all of the cores have about the same net worth as Gory on the Dire side. He's got the full BKB done. This NP is huge. He has the same amount of farm as enemy carry. That's the story. <laughs> yeah, that is terrifying. Reality. Oh, Stoic. Has a four staff, has hook shot in case he wants to try and get out, but will not use it. Will instead just falter. Swap onto noob in mid. He gets silenced That's up. That's a good one. That's a bit of an oopsie daisy coming out from noob. That's a huge pickup. It looked like he was in the middle of a zip as well. That was weird. Huge chunk of gold for Dead Prophet and also Reality. He definitely needs it. Don't carry. Pops the BKB. He's just going to TP no out swap. of there. No swap. That's on cooldown for another 18 seconds. He is closing in on the Aghanim Scepter, though, which will be a very big pickup in team fights.
And Kachal's going for the blink. He's got his own Shiva, so they're gonna have double Shivas. Uh, yeah, they have double Shivas on the dire side. Mikey has one, Kachal has one. That just goes to show how good that item is. Uh, it stacks. You got five Shivas. Uh, enemies just die instantly. Yeah, they get I mean, it's, it's a good... It's a good item. I mean, I can't really blame them having some extra physical resistance uh, against Radiance Wind Ranger. Like, even, even this Nature's Prophet is becoming a core and attack. providing vision, I think, is also the key. Plus, lowering their magic resistance. So, they kind of, even though it's a 14k gold lead for PSG Quest, uh, I would say that Winter Bear managed to stabilize the game a little bit. A couple of these. Stone Spirit pickoffs, these good swaps coming up from Yeezy, really made the difference. And you did mention that he is getting closer to Aghanim Scepter. Now needs another 800 gold, and he will have it. Uh, it's a 15k net with lead, but a lot of that lead is on the, like, Kaori, who's just really fat. Uh, and obviously the cores of uh, PSG quests are just more farmed, but it's not like they're insanely more farmed. The three cores of Winter Bear are still getting some decent farm going the entire time. Ooh, Stoic just hookshotted his own Death Prophet. It's not really ideal. They're chasing in to try and go for Good the Timber tackle. Saw. Shackle comes out. Can they get the kill? Malik is dropping dead. Timber Saw has fallen. And the look in here for more, there is still a cheese and an Aegis available, of course, but the Death Prophet Exorcism is doing tons of work. The cheese gets eaten by tier 2000 preemptively, and he's just straight up dead. Double buyback. I mean, fighting into... Like, when they use their abilities, like you pop the Focus Fire, you use the BKB. Afterwards, if Death Prophet ulti is still running, the Shiva's Guard, and also these uh, flak cannons flying out from Gyro, it's, it's gonna hurt, most definitely. Yeah, Jerry also has the BKB now done. Uh, 2k into his next item. Mikey's getting the Blink Dagger delivered. Uh, it's pretty much when Exorcism is up, you can still die. I, I think that's just it. They their cores do a lot of damage. Kachel died very quickly in that fight, which was a plus, so he didn't get like the big vacuum wall play going off. But it definitely does show that you need to be careful no matter what. The, the Storm also had to dip out pretty early in that fight knowing that his ages would be popped otherwise and uh maybe bkbs might be i mean when do we even use the bkb i this game is a little bit dangerous for a psg quest yeah i mean they could carry this game they have good scaling vengeful spirit uh, just finished Agon of scepter needs 40 gold so that's very close and then you're not afraid to die uh the big one is shard unfortunately for them clockwork picked it up uh, it's a 50 50 but uh, next shard i think if uh, vengeful spirit doesn't get it from Tormi, that they could she could buy it herself because it's it's that good then like you use magic missile maybe once maybe two times before you die and then the agatim scepter illusion at least once two more times it's a lot of stun yeah it's uh definitely uh a pretty useful tool in these team fights against a hero like Wind Ranger and Storm. If they get stunned, they die very quickly. I'm actually surprised at the fact that the Timber Saw died so quickly. He just... They had a lot of damage for him. Ah, uh, Winter Bear's uh, being put on the timer. Yeah, yeah it's <laughs> ticking down a couple of these pauses. But, uh, yeah, hopefully everything is good. You and uh, I believe PSG Quest, uh, you know, would give them some time of their own. In case uh, things happen, if things, they run out of time, they would not be unpausing the game. I mean, it's it, it it's not a good look. It's just, just even though you don't have to, you know, it's like with just anything. Don't be mean. Because if you then lose, it would be really, really sad. <laughs> it's like, no, or if you, or if you win that way, it's just like yeah, lose lose situation. True. Unless it takes forever. It's like if it's taking like thirty minutes, then you're like, okay, this is taking way too long. We gotta play the game. Actually, there might be a rule that they're not allowed to give them their time, because uh, mm -hmm. a lot of tournament organizers have those rules so that um, they don't put the opposing team on the spot. 
Nah, that that also makes sense. Okay, noob. He's got the Kai Sans done. Uh, BKB is delivered now as well. So you got the Storm Spirit ready to Dyer's rumble and go ham. They've got three attack. BKBs on the Radiant side for a fight. The last outer tower to be secured here by PSG Quest. Netwith-wise, it's only an 11k ne uh, lead at the moment. Those couple of kills uh, trickled down into more because it gave some map advantage here Radiant's for the side of uh, Winter Bear. The Tormentor Dyer's will be up attack. at what? I think they killed it at 22? So, yeah, I think so. But look at the number of Treants attacking the tower. This is what level look at 15 all that gold. talent. Oh, look at all that gold for the gyro. Give me money. Actually, didn't go for the teleportation max stacks, which a lot of people do. Noob, the hook shot will be able to get himself out of there. Had the ages, but that's the first BKB usage being used, which means they're immediately looking for a fight. Knowing that without a BKB, the storm is very capable of getting uh, locked down by Rod of Ato Silence. It's uh, pretty massive. This Rod of Atos value that they got from Mikey is uh, pretty significant. If he went for any other item, maybe Yule Scepter could do the trick, but then you can't, like, stun on top of it. Uh-oh, Kachal still having some problems with the internet. Oh, no. I mean, for a... De uh, it's really problematic for a Dark Seer if you lag. <laughs> like... You blink in and then you get a lag spike. Like, oh, uh, 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 okay, they all killed me. It's 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 karma. I think if anyone deserves to get the lag back, it's definitely hero like a dark share because uh, he lowers the FPS with whenever he creates a wall, all those illusions vacuum back. FPS does drop. <laughs> that is uh, definitely not what you're looking for. Uh, though I do think that this is, uh, what? Ping lag, stuff like that. Him, yeah, him and PL, these are the two guys. Uh, Wukong's monkey. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> monkey is just... That one is always chaos for me. Luckily enough, I did upgrade my PC a couple of years ago, so I can handle most. I have had a couple of team fights where my PC is still like, ah, this is sketchy. But that's only when you get, like, all the particle effects in one fight. And everyone has uh, the beautiful skin so that you have even more brighter lighting uh, effects. I mean, they're posturing so hard to go for a fight here. They have the Ags on the Vengeful Spirit, so that's going to be a big plus. That Tormentor should be coming up soon, which they really need to secure. If they... Who else would get it? It could go to the Dark Seer, which is... Eh. Yeah, it's not not the greatest, but uh, Darkshire's super tanky, currently sitting at 50 armor. Ooh, and another hook shot onto oh, his ally, but he will connect. He does get caught. Toy quickly getting out of there, and they do manage to get the kill. Ages. Five seconds for ages. Yeah, it's about to expire. TA2000 is being chased on the side. They try to get the vacuum wall onto TA2000, but he'll be able to disengage for the time being. BKB TP out by Kaori. TA. Another BKB. Yeah, they're forcing out all the BKBs here. All in the meantime, Tormentor did respawn. They got a kill. They Dyer's didn't really lose it. Yeah, they used their ultis, but they didn't really lose anything. Yeah, Mikey didn't even pop Exo. He's uh, slightly more patient Dyer's with it uh, now, and they will go for Tormentor. Fingers crossed for Yeezy to get it. And yeah. that is bad luck. That's just... It. Gaben doesn't like him. <laughs> Immediately puts in his Philosopher's Stone. He's like, okay, I need to get some money. Buy this. <laughs> buy this shard and buy my Ghost Scepter. So Mikey currently, he's got the uh, E-Blade queued up. Is there a moment where you would even upgrade the Rod of Atus to a Gleipnir? Uh, how many items does he still have? Well, he's uh, running out of slots, to be honest. He's going to need to make some... Massive upgrades. We're talking about rather blink bots or mage slayers not upgradable anymore. Going into E-Blade next, so 
not the uh, like greatest synergy between his ulti and Exo, but it's gonna be more of a defensive tool against Wind Ranger. Maybe save his teammates. Uh, Grid against Nature's Prophet as well gives him some okay stats, and uh, yeah, he has a lot of ways of disjointing the fight. Ogre Seal Totem, this Ghost Scepter, Swap for Vengeful Spirit, and uh, again, in terms of net worth, Winter Bear are doing a really good job. We didn't talk too much about reality, but he's getting his items up. This is Aghanim Scepter first item, you know, Casual Falcon Blade, I don't know if you consider that a full item, and then into BKB, now has MKB, so some heavy Double magical damage. damage. And great against Windranger. Windranger also holding on to Nemesis curse, so be, having this blast cannon Swap. makes him he have it. He does. They have two ways of interrupting the T BKB TP as well. And Gory is gonna die, but there is a rotation nearby coming in that they need to be very careful of. Or oh, it does get spotted. Omar is quickly dropping to Kachal while the fight continues, and the Windranger finds the target, and that is. No reality left in the fight. GZ is going to be the next one down. Mikey's in trouble. He d is silenced up, so he can't even get more spirit siphons going, and the fight goes awry very quickly. Oh, if they get focused down like that, this was a buyback from Kaori. Uh, TA2000 plus Bloodthorn on a target, uh, you just instantly die, pretty much. So, gotta be careful. It took them slightly longer to kill this Nature's Prophet because how farmed he is. This hero doesn't go down that quickly. Uh, buybacks. There is one available on Vengeful Spirit. Gyro doesn't have it. Mikey does have it, but they might be forced to use it. Otherwise, they will lose at least a set of barracks. If they want to commit. Quest. Roshan will respawn in two and a half minutes, so nothing of value could be lost. And tier 2000, he's going in. Yeah, it's a hook shot as well by Stoic. He doesn't have a buyback for 18 seconds. And they're actually going pretty deep here for that kill. I'm wondering why. <laughs> the swap comes out. Again, it's mid... I didn't know that you could swap someone mid-zip. That's weird. I don't know if you can target it. Maybe if he, like... Uh, I, I gotta test this out. Because this one definitely looked like he swapped him out mid-zip. I didn't see the first one that you mentioned. Back, back. Oh. Will they get the kill? TA2000 pops the BKB, is on the run. Vengeful Spirit needs to get surged. They give it to the Clockwork to possibly get the hook shot in. But uh, they lost a set of racks. Net width wise, they jumped up pretty significantly. But the plus side is Gyro hasn't used his BKB yet. The previous fight, bottom lane, uh, he didn't get his BKB off, got Shackle shot, and got nuked. Uh, if he gets the BKB off in that situation and uh, Bloodthorn gets removed, Plus, the Satanic is almost done. Yeah, that fight could go completely different. Barrow is getting closer to his Satanic. I think you invest all of your gold. He does have Paladin Sword as well. Needs all the sustain he can get if he gets shackled. Most likely, he's still gonna die unless he gets swapped. There's still tier 1 tower available there. Bottom lane is pushing in. PSG quest, they should know something is up. Yeah, they're looking for Roche. Um, there's an army of creeps in their base. So they definitely know that they're looking for Roche. And they have a couple of ways to scout out if there is something in Roche. Kachal, is he going to go for the blind jump? Yes, he is. They do manage to get the swap in onto the Ranger as well. Malik pops his Aghanim Scepter going for it. So he can travel. Gets the hook shot. Lined up onto TA2000 and gets away in the process. My lord, that was so clean. Malik pops the BKB. He's trying to run away from reality, chasing him down. The base Good is swap. in the meantime being destroyed. Malik silenced up. Mikey doesn't have another rod, and they will get him out. Storm's going to be zipping back to safety as well. Kachal TP's back to base to try and keep his tier 3 tower alive. Radiant and they're going to turn their attention towards Roche. 60 seconds, no Wind Ranger available. I don't know if you saw that, but that was, like, Stoic forced after himself to have a lineup towards the hook shot, and it was beautiful. Oh, oh. Yeah, they were still not done. Still searching. Another swap in a couple of seconds. And GZ that was a good alive. Observer Ward place. Like, this Observer Ward where Vengeful Spirit is standing right now gives them just enough vision for Kachal to catch a glimpse, 
blinks in, gets the Shiva's guard, provides oh, no. even more vision, even and then worse. back back. The Chal jumped without seeing them. They were smoked. They were under their tower smoked, and he just blindly gets the jump in. Which is uh, That's even more move. impressive. And there it is. They are going to find this Observer Ward. While they're doing Roche, Roche already dropping dead. This that's is Agadim Scepter Cheese. Let's see who picks it up. They're going to give it to Darkshire. Okay. Normal punch. I, 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 I got to advocate for this, like, normal punch. It has to be... Yeah, normal is three out of five. It has to be something stronger. Well, Super it, punch, it, ultra punch, it, it, cool it's, punch. It's a, uh, uh, it's, um, what's it called? One Punch Man reference. Where it's like normal. Is punch. it okay? Yeah. It's like an anime wombo combo reference. But there is a chase coming in here. They actually gave the Agonim Scepter to Mikey, who now has a top net worth of the game. So you got a pretty nasty DP coming in on the back line. Kachal is going to get controlled up, taken down by TA2000. There's going to be a buyback coming from Stoic. Reality needs to be careful. Does still have that Aegis, though. Yeah, they're, they're getting pretty good. Uh, that that Aghanim Scepter is a, a pretty big buff to Mikey. Needs the shard, though. Still doesn't have it on DP. Yeah, I, I think they need Hex. I think that Prophet will need to like sell one of these items and pick up Hex instead. Sure, E-Blade is fine, but uh, yeah, the whole upgrade is more about using it on your allies. You do have Ghost Scepter of your own. And this is also buyback from Stoic, but they definitely lack control. They need someone to just lock onto a target and kill it. I don't see anybody else buying an item like a Hex because they are not farmed enough. So... There are two heroes left that need a shard. One of them is the DP <laughs> that really needs one. And the other one is the Shirecopter that, like, kind of would be kind of cool <laughs> to have one from the Tormentor. Are we going to get to see another unlucky moment for the Dire Side in terms of the uh, shard distribution from the Tormentor? Probably. I mean, they've been <laughs> pretty unlucky. Even though I don't mind the jetpack, I just consider Vengeful Spirit in this situation to be much better he finally bought him bought one for himself Stupendous. and uh yeah i mean they're gonna be pushed back towards the base even with that ages but that's just the reality of the game you're also playing against nate's prophet storm timber saw wind ranger so it's split po they have split pushing tools on the side of quest to be just the biggest nuisance But I do like the fact that they have DP Ags, Darkseer Ags with the normal punch, as you mentioned, Gyrocopter Ags, Venge Ags. Only Clockwork still needs his Ags. So the next Roshan will be a juicy one. Holding the Aegis for another two minutes. Let's see if they can get a pick off. I mean, this instant hex or like blink hex on Mikey could be very deadly. I'm just wondering what he's going to swap out. Mage Slayer gives him magic resistance, which makes him much tankier. But uh, I don't know how much right clicks he's getting in anyway. And Noob's actually going for Mjolnir on the storm. That's a... That's an unconventional item at this stage of the game. Uh, maybe he wants to deal with those Darkshire illusions. Oh deal some damage. I mean, Gyrocopter has uh, a lot of armor. And also, it synergizes well with Parasma because you are lowering their magic resistance by 20%. Yeah, but you're getting your level 25 talent anyway. Mjolnir is just... You're not against, like... I mean, the illusions are annoying, but it's not the reason that you're losing these fights. No, I, I get it. I mean, there are other options that he could go for. Hex, of course, is the one. Agadim Scepter. Maybe he was thinking uh, that they are going to be in control of Roshan on Dire's side, so he can pick up that Agadim Scepter from Roche. 
Oh, yeah, that might be it. That he's like, nah, I'll get it for free in a bit anyway. Why would I invest all my money in that item? Speaking of uh, investing money in item score, he's got a full freaking satanic. <laughs> this snake just profit is... Like, he's ahead of noob. He's just chilling among... He, he's the, uh, the, the odd one out right there amongst all the cores. And he went for a different item. This time... Leash doesn't sound as good because, like in the first game, it was amazing since they were playing against Pango and Faces Void. But this time, he went for 100% mischance for Sprout Unit, so that's gonna be okay against Gyro. But he does have MKB, so it's actually not that good. <laughs> it's like 20%. Yeah, <laughs> which is less fortunate. I mean. It's not like it really matters this game because you have a timber saw on your team and like wind rangers, so they're gonna power shot and shock them all the trees down anyway. So you're not really holding anyone in place, regardless. I mean, if you had the sprout leash and you would just get it on, like it would be amazing to hold DP just in place at one side of the fight. And they have how many? One four staff. One is being built by GZ swap potentially to get out but uh yeah they actually don't really have that many ways to, to get out of sprout oof uh oh monka moment one minute remaining and this time it's stoic that's turkish internet so well while this one minute's going on you might as well just quickly dc kachal and fix it you don't have any more time left after this. Stoic has a lot of gold. Uh, I assume you pressed on Gyro and then Stoic. Uh, yeah, maybe that. <laughs> that God was... damn it, these pauses. <laughs> I was but still like, if, he has 5k if... gold, he has 8k net worth. Something's wrong here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but if this is correct, uh, he's sitting at... Uh... 3.8k gold, if I'm, if that one is correct. Uh, unless you press on no, Mikey and then the... on the <laughs> It's pretty much whoever you pressed on previously, you'll see their yeah. net worth. Alright, how do we get Clockwork then? You have to do math. You have to be like, okay, he's got Tranquil Boots. That's uh, about like a grand. You got Magic Wand, 500. <laughs> and then add everything up. He's got 8.47k net worth. Okay. More math. Yep, it's, this is totally not my game anymore. Yeah, unfortunately, they have uh, to unpause the game. Noob with some uh, Chad moment, and uh, he wants Aww. to give them a couple of a uh, couple of minutes of their own time. That's nice. They don't want to lose all the the love that the org has <laughs> at this stage. Not sure what's happening with internet today. Yep. I almost feel bad. That's I a, almost feel bad. That's a little bit on the more unfortunate side. He Stoic did just log in into Dota. Luckily enough, that's yeah. the only one I have on my friends list, so I, I know he's here. Yay. There he is. I mean, it would be a sad way to end this game with how hard Winter Bear has been fighting to hold on the entire time through. They've been against, like, backs against the wall the entire game. Net worth has been, like, 15k since, what, 20 minutes? It's Yeah, it's about the same the entire time through. It's pretty impressive how much resilience they've been putting up. Yeah, oh, so. I didn't notice this, but Gyrocopter level 20, he took rocket barrage damage over three flat cannon attacks. That's a bit of a weird one. That must be a mistake. Miss, it has to be a misclick for sure. It always happens with Gyrocopter. Insania, Gyrocopter as well pick uh, during his time in Alliance. And... Oh, the offlane face is void. That, yep. Yeah. That one was... This... Honestly, I... This... Uh initially thought that that was actually what was meant to be played because faces void offlane was a hero that china ran a couple of times so it was like oh yeah they probably did it as well Radiant i think inflame did it a lot back in those days oh, man inflame that's a nickname i haven't heard in a while 
Uh, happy that like all the Chinese legends that pretty much quit the game all c came back. <laughs> so like China completely d dropped down in the rankings, and all the Chinese players are like, okay, we gotta come back. The new generation is not there completely yet. Yeah, I'm a FY Ori. Please come back. And right now it's just you know Chalice and Somnus are waiting until it gets closer towards the big tournament at the end of the year. Oof, man, this three attacks from Flat Cannon, this is pretty massive compared to Rocket Barrage. And he has Divine Rapier queued up. Let's see if he buys that or if he wants to buy a Blink first. I think it might be Divine Rapier time. Fight near the Ancients, that's the call, because you have uh, 50 extra damage with uh, the Ancient Guardian. It's a strange item. It really is. I, I'm not really the biggest fan of it, or at all, especially considering how good tier 4 items are. It's just 50 damage. And even if it's like uh, plus 100 damage, I'm like... But the other one's like, you can smoke yourself, or you can invis yourself, or there's like a ton of other items. I want to see what other choices he had. Yeah, or there's Mindbreaker, which is a no-brainer most of the time. Yeah, for and a gyrocopter. Who gets it? Yeah, now, okay, now this level 20 talent with shard, rocket barrage damage, pretty pog. Wow. Wow, Mikey yeah, is <laughs> sad. Mikey is so sad. Yeah, I would also just disconnect right now. He didn't get the shard. He has to buy one. See you guys. <laughs> so he it's... bought Overwhelming Blink, doesn't want to sell any of his items yet, but I'm a big advocate for Hex. Just get Hex anyone somehow <laughs> against Wind Ranger, against oh, the Storm yeah. Spirit, Timber Saw. You have instant initiation. Gyrocopter also upgrading his blink. So they're investing is under all of the gold. That was that was a item. fast reconnect. He, he, it he, was. He reconnects and Noob's like, no, I'm not waiting. It's like a pub reconnect right there. <laughs> like, okay, this is the timer. He's he's back. Okay, go. They've been. I mean, to be fair, you lose your flare, you lose your concentration with the long pauses. It's. It's rough for both teams. Ooh, I like this. Kachal's got the A on this. Uh, though, as I say, that Kauri is almost done with the nullifier, so... He's handling all the, uh, all the really big items this game. Staying one step ahead. Nature's Prophet is massive. This is... Oof. Trickster Cloak, Satanic, BKB. Uh, sitting at 26 armor at the moment. If he uses teleportation, getting some extra armor from that as well, gonna be extremely difficult to kill. And always be careful about NP buying back, coming back into a fight. Right now, Kaori doesn't have a buyback, but uh, yeah, you need just whenever there's a nature profit in later stages of the game, start thinking how to kill him twice because he's definitely gonna come back. Well, Gyro has a swift blink now. Everything ready. Next item, as you said, Rapier Gaming. That's what we want to see. Multiple Rapiers coming in the game. Are there any heroes? Because I know that I've seen some builds, like on meme builds, where you have like double Rapier and Kanda on like Spirit Breaker. And then they just charge someone on the other side of the map and they die instantly. Yeah, that was a thing until it got fixed in B version, because it specifically said on Spirit Breaker. Let me just uh, find that real quick. Uh, I, I love Spirit those Breaker. videos. There. And Spectre had one as well, where, where that stuff happened. It was weird. So yeah, th this item was specifically nerfed. It says Phylactery Kanda now procs on impact rather than on cost. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, Spectre still works Breaker then. Charge. So on Spectre, yeah. you can still get double Rapier plus uh, Kanda and then just one-shot someone from uh, <laughs> from your base. People all, like, this is why Dota is the best game in the world, because there's always going to be these, like, weird things that you can do. People will find things to exploit, and there's going to be a huge fight. So Burp, blink swap again, swap save. immediately. Does get focused down. DA2000 did use his ulti on it, but does have the talent. Jumps damage onto Malik, jump on the back line. Reality, the vacuum wall comes out and they blow up Noob. He's very quickly taken care of. 
Omar is going to be the next one down. Tier 2000 is on the run. And it's the chase of the dire hunting for blood. Jeezy has his uh, illusion coming up. We'll get nuked quickly because gonna they don't want to have to swap out. And Malik is going to get taken down. And Kaori is surrounded by enemy shackle shot. The swap comes no back way, in. they're doing it. And Kaori is dead. He does have the buyback, as you previously mentioned. GA2000 trying to get the swap away. But he they is going to get controlled up. And a huge engagement coming in right in front of the Roche pit that has just respawned as well. So they can get themselves another Aghanim Scepter. That one can go to the Clockwork as he is the only one that still needs an Ags, and the entire net with advantage is swapped sides. They've only lost a single hero in that fight. Okay, make that two heroes. Somehow, they managed to still get a fight going He on. got punched. Omar, that's his buyback. Oh, this is These really are some dangerous. massive kills that they're getting again. It was a pretty cool play from Jeezy, who had his illusion. The Agonim is up to 1, and on 1 HP, he uses buyback, comes back into a fight, immediately uses another stun. So that was pretty cool, and also now seeing the finally a shard on that Prophet in the full effect, that was what stopped uh, Vindranger's TP from going off. So they will pick up Cheese, Agonim Scepter, Vengeful Spirit uh, can give it to Clockwork. Man, these are some... Uh, Really, really big fights. This team doesn't go down. Like, this team is very good at team fighting. Yeah, that Kachal catch as well. They, they were, like, having a little bit of a brawl on the side, and you just see Kachal slowly but surely, like a, middle tower a panther a creeping up towards its prey, just walking close and then hitting a big three-man vacuum wall. In comes the swift blink from reality as well on the gyrocopter, and it just melts. That noob was dead in like a split second with all the crits coming in. He is going for Divine Rapier, holding the Aegis for another four minutes. Ate the Aghanim Scepter. Now everybody on the team does have Ags, I believe. Yeah, that is one Radiant's dropped in the fountain. Some dust and clarities to look even cooler. Radiant's Mikey's got uh, two cheeses, by the way, because one cheese is for suckers, two cheeses for attack. ballers. No I wonder if it's the same type of cheese. Radiant's Must be, right? Because they stack. You can't stock uh, no goo down blue cheese or something. Oh my god, that's... They need to be that, on a different that would be shelf. disgusting. Ugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone will get fired from the supermarket. Also, I just really don't like blue cheese. I do love Gouda, though. <laughs> oh, I love cheese, but just... Uh, some old cheese is pretty nice, but I'm not a big fan of big cheese. Or cumin cheese. That one's also weird. Ooh. Vacuum. Missed for now. Level 25 darks here. Two iron shell charges. Divine Rapier. It's assembled down to half HP already. They need to help him out a little bit. He doesn't have any move speed. Does have Surge, however. He's getting close to the enemy's Ancient. So yeah. he'll get the buff if he fights next to it. At the very least. Exorcism comes out from Mikey. Trying to melt some buildings. Their top lane is being split pushed in. In the meantime, as we speak, the swap comes out. They pop they got the him once. Can they get him a second time? Windranger's ulti is going to be on cooldown because it technically doesn't count as a skill, but the big vacuum wall inside the cogs, they're stuck. Four staffs trying to get themselves out. Mikey is in trouble. Takes a heap of damage from TA2000, and Mikey is blown up. Will lose his nice. first life. Malik is... Are they going to be able to get themselves back towards the fund? Malik is dead. Does have another buyback available. And the gyrocopter stuck uh -oh. inside the sprout. The shackle. No, that's the rapier on deck. They're all trying to run away right now. Mikey bought back for this. Needs to be very careful, is in a very precarious position. And Kachal, they actually turn it onto tier 2000. They drop the Rapier again. Tier 2000 has a buyback to rejoin, but Mikey uh -oh. not going Mikey. to be so lucky. He is dead. There is no money on the gyro for a buyback. The base is being pushed in. This might just be it for the side of Winter Baron game number two. Oof, uh, Gyrocopter died so quickly. That first life was gone almost immediately, and then you could see him hesitating. He did not want to go in. So that's a long 100 seconds. There's also double damage available. TA2000 will pick it up. DD plus Divine Rapier. I think this might be it. I <laughs> Wind Ranger sitting at uh, 900 plus damage at the moment. Yeah, that's not good. <laughs> that is, uh, focus fire. Well, you might as well just two hit someone instead of going for the focus fire play, but yeah, the only one with a buyback left is the clockwork. Gyro didn't have the money because he bought that specific rapier. 
And how is inventory look so empty on the gyro it, It's so sad. You have four items, basically. And now they have Mega Creeps as well. 25 seconds without gyro. They... I don't know if they have another fight. The heroes die so quickly. Now they're trying to go for something. Kachal gets the drag back. Normal punch for pressure. pressure. Go for a second round. Vacuum wall again. They're trying to finish off the ancient though before the gyro cup comes back alive. Dropping. And ta 2000 dropping very low. The gyro, he's up in three seconds. Can he get the damage in? They need the right clicks. Oh, ta 2000 set, but no go down. gets it done. It was so very close. That could have gone horribly wrong for PSG Quest, but they do manage to recover in the nick of time to take this to a three map series. It, this could have been if, if the, like one of the heroes with vengeful spirit, for example, came out slightly earlier. If Gyro had buyback, this is a different game. They like committed and uh, one stun from vengeful spirit that bounces off to another target uh, right click from Gyrocopter. But uh, yeah, Winter Bear, a team that was down throughout pretty much the whole game, first 30 35 minutes, they were down 15k gold lead, and then they made some like really nice plays. I feel like they needed to have one hex. I think one hex could have maybe even changed the outcome of the whole game because uh, they needed to catch this Wind Ranger. They needed to catch this Storm Spirit uh, and needed someone to, you know, just amplify the damage, control, and then Gyro can go in. Also, a little bit of a sloppy uh, high ground push where your Gyro doesn't use his Satanic immediately. Some beautiful shackles from TA2000. But uh, yeah, coming into this series, I didn't expect it to be as close. And now we're going to go to game three. Yeah, I'm, uh, I think, most impressed by the uh, Darkseer performance that game. He was really good. I, I mean, Jeezy as well. He's been phenomenal, even though he, you know, 0 9 17, not <laughs> exactly. Uh, a score that you'd be like, he played a really good game, but he did play a really good game on the Vengeful Spirit. Massive swaps. Uh, the buyback top side where he was at like 1 HP uh, just in time to rejoin. Beautiful stuff coming out from Winter Bear. Unfortunately for them, it wasn't good enough to take down PSG Quest in game number two, but I am so excited for game number three. If everyone's internet's fixed, please fix your internet because we want to have one clean game three to see who is going to advance on towards the winner bracket finals in the Dream League 22 MENA qualifiers. We'll be right back after the break.
welcome back, Gen ladies West and gents. Game number two was a doozy between PSG Quest and Winter Bear. Yeah, Unfortunately, a little bit, of course, with the internet issues that were definitely there for the Winter Bear side. But nonetheless, West they East put up a show and they made Bear. it look close. Didn't they, Lacoste? Yeah, it was. Uh, I thought they had it in the bag after they picked up Aegis. Picked up that Divine Rapier on Gyro, but uh, unable to siege the high ground. Some good Shackles, some good Sprouts, the missed chance as well. Uh, landing uh, Shackle onto Sprouted Target also very easy, but uh, yeah, a bit of a... Not, not the like, ideal high ground siege, and also they're fighting inside their base, uh, so you know that the buybacks are going to come out. Uh, so, four buybacks from PSG Quest... Uh, but Winter Bear, they, they need to reset after that game Ten because they made a huge comeback. Uh, I thought that they're going to win it and it would have been 2-0. But uh, so far, a very interesting series coming up between these two teams. Yeah, it was definitely a, a scary one. And one of the reasons that it was so scary was that specific hero that just got picked up the timber saw left in the pool a little bit scary there for winter bear because uh, we did see malik especially in the early seconds, game go remaining. completely insane and was uncontested for the longest time Five seconds remaining. yeah one thing i want to see is winter bears safe lane to play better they got uh, dismantled both games uh, in the first game they had nature's profit so he could go to jungle but this time gyrocopter he had 302 build, uh, level 5 gyro, so not the easiest way to jungle. Doesn't have enough Ten mana sustain remaining. to cast his abilities. So I want to see something that can pressure Five this timber saw. I want to see some of the heroes that are really good. I'll, I'll check the heroes that uh, he played from the safe lane, reality. What did he play so far? Uh, he usually plays these. Uh, I mean, he did, does play Slark, so that's pretty good. It's not the best against him or so at the early stages of the game, but, uh, you know, maybe pick some Morphling Treant Protector, these type of heroes that uh, doesn't lose the laning stage. Something really strong instead of picking him up, uh, or pairing him up with Clockwork. And uh, yeah, Stoic, look, uh, even though he played Clockwork two times in a row, uh, he looked a little bit Dying. shaky. Some of the hook shots uh, didn't miss. So I, I want to see really strong laning stage coming out from Winter Bear to be able to match the aggression from PSG Quest. Yeah, it, it definitely was. Uh, their early game was just weak on Winter Bear. They have a really. Ten I think the team fight is amazing. Uh, the laning stage. Honestly, most Five of the time with teams, it, the laning stage is where you see like a difference in, in like the level of players, um, where the laning stage you lose. But their team fight, like the fact. Honestly. I'm so impressed with how that Darkseer played last game. He was phenomenal. Uh, one of definitely the star performers on that Winter Bear roster. And uh, w w that's kind of the surprise factor because, of course, in my mind, it was going to be like, you know, Mikey. That's the big name in the team. But uh, I might be a little bit surprised here with the fact that they've got another player in the squad that is definitely uh, just as good. Yeah, I mean... Everybody on the team had uh, like really solid performance uh, throughout uh, the second game. Uh, someone always needed to step up to be able to deal with huge lead that PSG Quest had. And uh, now they're, they're thinking they have Juggernaut. this uh, double pick. So Juggernaut plus one. What's it going to be? Some strong laner. Maybe get a Grim Stroke. I'm down for Grim. It's great against Timbersaw. Uh, leash mechanic uh, and also great laner with Juggernaut. Plus also Phantom. Ten if he has Chakram remaining. out, he cannot kill the Phantom. So that's pretty good. Five seconds yeah, it's, uh, the Juggernaut's uh, hero that definitely does survive in the lane. Uh, skills pretty Quest nicely in the e late game with the Ags and his level 20 talent mm. these days. Gonna go Lich. Okay. I mean, it's more defensive for the Juggernaut. He's got the Spinster, he's got the magic, uh, the debuff immunity, and then you add in a big fat Frost Shield. They have problems pushing towers against the uh, Frost Shield as well, so PSG Quest really are gonna Ten need to find a tower main. hitter Quest Esports, in their draft team. somewhere. Ooh, this is gonna look like a long entry in versus Lich. Wind Ranger at your service. Oof. Uh, I've wanted it to be grim 
I think Glitch also works. Not, not the biggest fan. Uh, they do have some magical damage, of course. Uh, it's a good laner remaining. with Juggernaut, so they have a lot of spell damage coming out between Tiny and Five Lich. You can always remaining. play Dota. These two heroes can easily rotate, but PSG Quest picking up Treant Protector plus getting Wind Ranger one more time. Again, this is a flexible hero between Dire TA 2000 team. and Noob, so they don't know where it's gonna go. Puck was heavily contested in the second, in the last banning stage, both games. So Winter Bear will pick it up. It's a good Puck game. I think uh, they they wanted to pick this hero for a long time. It's just that they didn't have the opportunity. They had to ban it in the second game because uh, they Ten had the last pick, remaining. which means that uh, they don't have the first pick in the last phase, and they had to ban it. Five up. seconds remaining. And now. Uh... I, yeah, this is such a good pocket. Batrider, Timbersaw, and Wind Ranger. Uh, all three really hate Dreamfall. It is Mikey's, Quest arguably his best hero as ban. well. Uh, it is a Witchblade builder, so you have the uh, True Strike against the Wind Ranger. Like everything Quest about this puck screen is yes, perfect. Pick. <laughs> Uh, I, I might be down for them to ban out Dragonite from the mid lane. It's uh, good against Juggernaut, uh, builds into BKB, uh, has instant stun against Buck, and would give them even more tower pressure. So I'm down for it. Anything that uh, checks a lot of the boxes for PSG Ten Quest could, could work out. But uh, yeah, I've been mostly on the receiving end recently, Five playing Wind Ranger me. against Buck, uh, as you mentioned. Witchblade, Carrier, Coil forces you to buy an earlier BKB. It's just very difficult. Having a silence as well, so very difficult matchup for Wind Ranger. They don't really have the best. Like, Shackle Shot's obviously a good catch if you connect it, but it's a skill shot. Bat Rider's Lasso is great, but it kind of is obvious, and the puck is very evasive. And Treant's Overgrowth is weak to control the puck. They have very little catch between them as well to really take down the puck. Ten if he gets to Lincoln's, remaining. then you're not going to be able to hold him down. Five seconds remaining. I do like the Darkseer ban here from PSG Quest. Last game was rough. Uh, it, if you have a Darkseer plus Tiny lane now as well, because last game it was with a Vengeful Spirit and the lane was not... It didn't go well for them. Uh, it was actually a very problematic lane. But he managed to recover regardless or keep up at least in terms of net worth the entire time through. Now if you add that but give him a lane partner that actually does work, then you could be in a lot of trouble for a hero like Wind Ranger who is very squishy. Problem with uh, Fort Tiny is... If you pair him up with another melee hero, then you're going to be playing into Tree and Protector yeah. plus Wind Ranger, most likely. So that uh, you you straight up lose that lane. You don't win the trade. You don't have enough damage to kill these heroes. One Living Armor, one Leech Seed, level three uh, Leech Seed. It's just going to be very difficult. Okay, so they, they wanted to fix it and they picked up Visage. I, I like this a lot. Not the best hero when you're having uh, internet connection issues, but it is still <laughs> <laughs> a lot of fun regardless. Uh, I mean, when I think Visage, usually I think uh, Toby, Stormstormer. Uh, they actually played it in the same lineup most of the time. It Five is hard to deal with remaining. for a hero like Wind Ranger because it's a lot of magic damage that constantly keeps flowing your way. It is a good game for it. Uh, some, like hero that comes online relatively early on if he's having a good laning stage i'm not saying it's going to be like the easiest one since you're playing against wind ranger train protector this is a super solid lane so you might need to you know uh get some return kills i think uh, tiny in this scenario he plays to trade uh go in fully commit die visage gets uh, some experience maybe even solo experience tiny comes back to a lane with uh, full hp full mana And Visage, of course, also an aura builder, so you have that. Uh, Juggernaut's going to do the heavy lifting most of the time with the puck together. And uh, the Visage will be able to support them. Then you add the shield in from the Lich. Uh, they'll have plenty of auras and defensives on Winter Bear. PSG Quest, they're the ones going for the DP this time. Ooh, that is a hero that we saw last game do really well, even though they were massively behind. They got inspired by that profit <laughs> from the previous game. I think a different itemization this time around. I don't think uh, they lack any kind of uh, stuns in this one. You have Trian Protector with the shard. You have Batrider, some Shackle. So I think he can get away with uh, 
you know, maybe even a Yule Scepter in this one. Uh, Eternal Shroud looks amazing. You're playing against Pucklich, Tiny Visage. Most of the damage is going to be magical anyway. But uh, yeah, I said it even in the previous game. I like PSG Quest's draft. I like it here. I think that Winter Bears try to salvage some of the issues that they had with this Visage. But it's also a really good Puck game. So want to see how much he's going to be able to, to do. Because this Puck... They, they wanted to pick it, uh, I believe, all three games. It was a good game for it, and now he gets to play it. So, all eyes on Mikey to see how he's going to perform. All eyes on Mikey, indeed. Now it's his time to show what he's made of. I definitely think that Winter Bear have a good shot this game. Uh, honestly, I expect it to be quite an even affair in uh, game number three. And that they put up a good show for us. Malik in the top lane. Timber, so I mean, with Timber Chain, you can just leap away from the spin plus uh, the Lich in general. So I think the Batrider of Omar will be able to get a lot of farm and stacks going while his uh, Timber Saw is mostly solo laning. See, bottom side, yeah, they're both uh, trying to invade the enemy's jungle, but no one will be the wiser of where the enemy is playing from. GZ starting with Boots of Speed, Blood Grenade, and Branch. So I assume the plan for this lane is going to be drag the second creep wave because they are slightly on the weaker side. Visage doesn't really contribute to much level one compared to Trend Protector, Vend Ranger. This is like one of those lanes where you, it's almost impossible to lose this type of a lane. Yeah, the, uh, it, it, it depends also what kind of what the build for the Tiny is. He does have boots of speed, so cutting the creep wave does sound very possible here. Uh, Treant is a reasonably fast hero, but not going to be fast enough to chase after... Uh, well, he's reasonably fast in the trees, but not going to be fast enough to chase after the tiny once he drags the creeps around. When Ranger doesn't want to leave the lane, so he's going to be underneath the tower. And then you just get a couple of levels on the Visage going in your favor. He's uh, already queued up that he wants to get the Vlads. Auras start early. Oh, Stoic first Omar. There's going to be a lot of damage onto Stoic. <laughs> And Malik actually walking in as well. Timber chain. First blood. It's better to die there. I mean, th something that we said is this safe lane for Winter Bears. It started the same way, pretty much. Uh, them dying, being in a position where they playing from behind. And now, who got the first blood? It was Omar. Okay, so you gave it to Batrider, which means that he's going to bring another blood grenade when it's available. And he also... Bopped him into the camp. He tried to stop the uh, the creeps from spawning. Yeah, it's uh, at least going to be not the lane being dragged back the entire time towards mid. It's Noob versus uh, Mikey. Um, Deathroff, it's got a pretty A-OK -okay attack animation. And also can just stand in front the entire time and not care about the puck for the most part. Oh, spin top. It's a very expensive one. It's a 40 second cooldown ability. And level one doesn't really deal much damage. And without boots, you normally won't be able to catch up to it, Bat Rider, anyway. And Timber Saw, well, you already saw the Timber Chain come out, so it'll just be able to leap to safety. Unless you would have a Sinister Gaze level, that would be pretty nice. Kachal dropping low underneath the tower. Power Shock and XTA 2000 gets the kill. And both sides lanes get a kill apiece. Tiny also starting with Toss level 1. I think it's a bit of a grief. Tree grab is just way too powerful level 1. Securing some of the creeps. You can secure the range creep, uh, deny enemies. And also in terms of trading, you trade really well. And now they're level 2. So 170 mana. He does have enough if he pops the 6. So they want to go in one more time. It is uh, a lot of damage on the Wind Ranger, but as you mentioned previously, Treant heals you pretty nicely with the Leech Seed spam. You can just even throw it on creeps in case you don't want to put the Wind Range anywhere close to the enemy force. 
And Noob's doing a superb job in mid up against Mikey. Like really what is that good. set on that prophet? What is that? It doesn't even look like a here. What is it? It's, it's a like thrift. mix of a <laughs> Yeah, it's a thrift store set. It's like just a bunch of junk he found in the attic, put it together. Grandma's old put clothes. On, put on Queen of Pain. That's, that's what it is. <laughs> it doesn't even look like that prophet. Yeah, uh, low cost cosplays. Yeah. Lacoste or low cost cosplay. <sighs> now I just need yeah. someone to do the Lacoste cosplay. <laughs> ah, Kaori also getting a pull in the bottom lane. It's an okay camp. So this bottom lane not doing too hot for them when Ranger's sitting at 15-6. Oh. Uh, you did mention second point in Leech Seed. They can literally fight underneath the tower with two points in Leech Seed. He has the Avalanche. Corey dropping low. Will he get the kill? One more hit. Yes, he does die to... Oh, to the... Okay, so he dropped and uh, has to have been the... What's it called? Blood Grenade. Yeah. Uh, that's what I said, that Tiny needs to play this type of a game where they kill Triant, he comes back to a lane, full HP, full mana, Visage gets some solo XP. Well, so far, it is uh, kind of like last game, slight advantage for PSG Quest, not insane, but they are winning all three lanes consecutively, which is a little bit scary. But it's another game where they can definitely hold on. Like, there is very... There's a Death Prophet. That's the one big change up. They have a lot of push because of Death Prophet. But on the other hand, there's a Lich. Frost Shield will be able to hold it back for quite some time, extend the game for as much as possible. They have a lot of playmaking potential with the Dire Heroes. With the, you know, Dream Coil into a Tiny Toss, Chain Frost, shenanigans. So you always have to be careful for uh, a team fight combination. Oh, spin top. It's uh, a bit of a difficult one because they don't have the stun. Stoic has Sinister Gaze, but Batrider can easily fly over some of the things. That's why I wanted to see Grim. Oof, Malik. No Timber Chain. Of course, that's a very far Does connect, but uh, yeah, they're still uh, playing very aggressive. You did mention this build on Timber Saw. No points in reactive armor, just full on burst, double bracer, going for mana boots, so. He's getting region from the Bracers. And because he's playing so aggressive, Omar can pull the creeps back. Which is annoying to defend, but Lich quickly melts to a Batrider. Speaking of which... Wanted to go for a bit of a fight for no real apparent reason. I mean, Dippersaw wasn't even needed. He could solo kill him easily with just Firefly. Yeah, needs to be careful about positioning. You misstep in this type of a lane, you're gonna die. Noob's level 6 now. Puck still struggling to reach it. Rune is stopped. Invis rune stolen by Omar. At least uh, Mikey will get a bottle refill. Maybe that was the re real goal of Stoic. Just die so that Mikey gets the bottle refill. But so far, a 2k net worth lead here for PSG Quest. And the net worth, yeah, it definitely does show on the charts as well. Oh, mid lane, big dive. They pop that Exo. Omar with the Invis rune manages to bounce him back with the flame break. There's the frost shield to reduce some of the damage, but the damage has already been done. Noob, he doesn't care too much about the level 3 Tiny and level 3 Lich. They need Puck, who is level 5, so no coil is available. Half of the tower gun, also forcing a rotation bottom. Kachal, in trouble. Toss forward, Omar dropping low, taken down. Gori, power shot. Kachal's gonna be able to stay alive. Gori in the trees. Oh, Going for the oh. XP rune. Oh, that's just disgusting. And even wanting to turn it back onto Kachal, who gets power shot and down. Oh, they're just outplaying them. It's just a pure outplay at this point. Kaori is probably one of those guys that uh, sets the timer every 6 minutes and 50 seconds, or maybe 45 or 30, to be able to snatch the enemy XP rune every single time. Omar will pick it up and the Trian Protector is now almost level 6. Seven and a half minutes into the game. 
That would actually be like really funny if he would have his phone next to him, put it on a seven minute timer every single time, <laughs> and then be like, okay, go. And then, oh yeah, timer, gotta go, quickly, yep, yeah, move. I'm, I'm wondering if there would be people that would be crazy enough to do stuff like that. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure somebody did that. It's like, I don't want to pay attention to the clock at the top. I already have to pay attention to if it's daytime, nighttime, ugh, so many other things. Oh yeah, that's also a timer. Yeah, every five minutes it swaps so that you know where Roach is going. God, that clock is like heaven at this point. You, you constantly have to keep looking at it. Have to keep, have to hit snooze every minute, pretty much. Yeah. Well, okay. So now, in 30 seconds, what's gonna happen? That's gonna happen. That's gonna happen. That's gonna happen. That's gonna happen. Okay. And then a minute later, what's gonna happen now? Okay, that's gonna happen. That's gonna... runes are spawning. Oh, uh, bounty runes are spawning. Oh. You might wish to retract. Your luckily last enough, move. two things are tied to three minutes. So, luckily enough, they don't do like one and a half. Otherwise, it would be more Dyer's chaos. Top tower is under attack. Again, Timbersaw on top of the net worth. Pressuring the tower. Tier 1 tower has already been lost. Bottom, tier 1 tower mid. With first exo, drop down to 30% HP. Supports need to play with Puck. Because Puck is the one who has coil, has this initiation. And then they can get levels from killing whoever. TA2000 is in trouble. This is four heroes. Let's see if he gets a good read on it. Well, he is gonna get jumped here, and Ava, there's a toss available, not even needed, Kachal blows him up, he's got the Visage Familiars as well. A very big kill to make sure TA2000 is slowed down. Noob, of course, will turn his attention towards the Tier 1 tower in mid, and uh, take it down while the puck is gone topside. Reality chase down by Malik. Doesn't have a TP for another 10 seconds, Radiant's which is problematic, is as we see. And forced to spin, but without a TP, he is actually just straight up dead. Not getting out of this one. This is also going to be another tower. Well, they did manage to kill TA2000 two times, but that's about it. So 3k gold lead for PSG Quest. Tower has fallen in the top lane. Map is getting smaller. Then every single time Coil is up, I think supports need to be playing with him, smoke up, and try to get themselves to level six. Tiny level six is not as important, but you definitely want to glitch to be level six. Oh, Lasso is available. Reality, spin to win. Uh, Stoic actually gets a little bit too close to a Timber Saw, who has max level Timber Chain and Whirling Death. Chakram, obviously, so there is just only damage coming up from the Timber Saw so far. Easy. Radiance Courier Ooh. has been killed. Courage Knight. Gold! Any type of gold you can get. It's gonna take a while to until he gets his blink dagger. Went for a couple of smaller items actually on the tiny this time around. So yeah, really. Yeah. It's gonna I think up. it'll look yeah. In a losing game, you can't afford to go for Arcane Boots. When you have such a bad start, uh, you need to skip it, find a neutral item that gives you some stats, and uh, just play with maybe a Clarity. Look out the falling rocks. Even though it's much much less expensive in terms of like, because you can buy Bassy and then upgrade to Mana Boots, so you get more value rather than just uh, waiting to get 800 gold for Mana Boots. But still, it's... Uh, it's a lot. There it is. They're trying to get uh, any kind of a kill they can. I'm not sure if they're even getting this kill. No, if they would jump further, Mikey would die to the DP. Doesn't have a silence yet, but the Death Prophet is level almost 10, is now 10, is very freaking huge. He's got the full uh, Mage Slayer already done, so the puck da damage output's going to be very minimal. GZ trying to steal the rune, which is going to be a haste rune pickup by Corey. Jeezy on the run, no spells left to use. He's just gonna be a sitting duck, especially with the Timber Saw joining in the fun. In the meantime, Corey's just running around with that haste rune <laughs> behind enemy lines and right clicking at Mikey. Supports are having a bad time. Their XP rune got stolen. Now they're still level 5, stoic. 
needs that level six so they can combine coil with some chain frost onto two targets. Are they gonna smoke constantly, up? Constantly in reality's face, making sure he's not getting the farm. He doesn't necessarily Radiant need to kill him. Reality does have the millstream now done. Malik could die if they get on top of him, but he is aware of uh, any possible moves coming in, especially Radiant with the uh, observe ward, called sentry ward. Spotting out the courier flying to someone that's not there. They spot out the enemy's courier, but yeah, he's got the Sanj, Kaya Sanj already done on the timber saw as well, and he is pretty much wasted a full minute of the dire side looking for a kill where Mikey does not manage to get any farm. He's way too farmed. When you said Kaya Sanj, I'm like, maybe you're not seeing that correctly because I just saw Kaya. And he has Meta Boots, Double Bracer, Soul Ring. There's no way that he's that far, but it actually is. He's sitting at 2.5k HP at the moment. Yeah, good luck killing him. His next item is Blink, and then afterwards wants the Orchid as a <laughs> counter to the Buck and the Juggernaut, because Juggernaut's not going to get the uh, Manta style uh, that fast. Malik on the chase, Lasso, Overgrowth, Mikey Puck is dead, look for more, Stoic and the, the one caught out, 7k net with lead right now, on the side, tier 2000 spots out Jeezy, Jeezy at least got the Wisdom Moon, they got both the Wisdom Moon, so, you know, his sacrifice is worthwhile this time around, so that his supports, well, him and his uh, Puck, uh, sorry, Lich at least get a little bit of experience going, but, they're already looking for the tier 2 tower top, it looks like PSG Quest want to, Shut this one down before the same thing happens that they had last game. Oof, uh, this is a disastrous one. Uh, there was a comeback potential in the second game. I think this game is much, much harder for them. Uh, Kachal, he's been pretty silent, farming up. Does have Vlad, does have drums available. So his damage is going to be really good. It's just that... The Supports are not doing a lot at the moment. Like, they die very quickly. Malik. Oil has been used. Chain Frost. A bit of a lucky bounce needed. Or he is dropping low, and they will find the kill onto the Treant. Jeezy tries to get Omar, but Omar's got the blink at the ready, so he'll be able to just blink back to safety. One of the things that I actually find very strange about the Lich is the level 20 talent, Chain Frost on Death. That one's so cool. Uh, it is. It's basically Warlock. They, they wanted to give him something cool. Okay, oh, now we see the Omni power Slash of Flush. Uh oh! Do a lot of work. Nice Avalanche. Omar with the lasso tries to drag back reality. Is he going to be able to stay alive? Omar will be taken down. They lose Malik as well. This is actually a really big team fight in favor of Winter Bear. I mean. You know, there's slightly less comeback potential, unless you really make gigantic mistakes in a row. Uh -huh. Unless you stupid. try this hard to throw the advantage that you have. I mean, they use Coil, they didn't kill Timbersaw, then they come back. Sure, Train Protector dies, Chain Frost has been used, but uh, yeah, you can see Juggernaut's damage has... Uh, he popped off pretty much. Omni Slash and that Manta style is, is gonna come in. I think Timbersaw... Might reconsider his items, what he has in a quick buy. For now, it's just going to be Cloak, but I feel, you know, getting that Eternal Shroud is a must-have. Yeah, that was a bit of a surprise. I mean, the Omni Slash with only a Milstrom did a pretty decent amount of damage, considering they were all hugged together. Then he gets lassoed while he's spinning, but the Bat Rider gets stunned by the Avalanche, so he still takes a lot of spin damage. So it was a very weird engagement. Stoic getting jumped in the meantime. Dream Girl completely missing the mark by Mikey. He wants to hit multiple targets at the same time, but misses every single one of them and will lose his life because of it. A little bit of back and forth action, what we like to see. Supports did get the levels, so they're level 8 on Stoic right now. GZ, level 9, getting closer to his blink dagger. His creeps keeping in this bottom lane. Yeah, it's gonna be his blink dagger. And the Visage has drums, Vlad's shard now. So, Kachal, that's one of the better things is the shard on Visage because it just distracts the enemy for so long. Oh, but he's underneath Ward Vision. They just placed the Observer Ward. Kachal needs to disengage. 
Already nearby. And <laughs> Jeezy is still just cutting creep waves bottom the entire time. Might be dead. Doesn't actually have mana for a TP just yet. And now he is going to go for it. Gets pushed to the side further in the tree so Omar doesn't no, spot him out. Him. <laughs> that's okay. unfortunate. Oh, Cory. He just walks right into Stoic. They place the sentry. They did manage to get the Aegis onto Malik in the meantime. The Vistas gets dragged back. The silence is problematic so that he can't get his shard going and they need to disengage quickly on the rest of the dire side. But they're forcing rotations all the way to the bottom. You get a kill. Tiny's got the blink now done. Not looking too shabby. Only a 5-6 skin net with lead. Lost Roche. Uh, lost Visage. But uh, Visage deals tons of damage. And he is going for AC as his next item. So that's going to be some extra damage on the birds. Uh, tanking up his own team. Amplifying damage of Juggernaut as well. Manta style. I always, whenever I see just like recipe away for Manta, I'm like, oh, he's close. He's not that close. It's a very costly one. 1,500 gold for it. 1,550. Yeah, it's... The Manta style is such... The recipe is stupidly expensive. Like, it, look, it doesn't look that expensive, but... It is. It's insane where you're like, oh, I only need the recipe. Oh, yeah, that's about the same price as your freaking Yasha. It's, it's like... Okay, maybe just uh, swap the prices around a little bit. There's going to be the lead forward. Have a toss, you score. He does get taken down. The chain is actually doing a lot of damage here. Omni slash in onto Noob, and Noob is dead. It bounces onto Malik, who then loses half his HP. Looking for Stoic. Stoic used every single spell he had in the book and will lose his life. But they force out a buyback. Kaori is back in the game and uses the overgrowth onto Juggernaut. That's the buyback Jeezy's coming in clutch. In. But Jeezy coming back through. TA2000 doesn't have much HP left. Does have another wind run and will be getting himself out of dodge. Mikey surrounded by enemies. He's got... A waning rift left, but will be taken down regardless. Malik gets himself a big team fight victory for his team with that double kill. And we are, um, I mean, it was a team wipe. But if, if this timber is uncontested, if he is not getting focused down, if someone else is being the target in these fights, uh, he's gonna go ham, as you can see. In terms of damage, how much he dealt, this was like three, four thousand damage on timber. So now having level 15 from that and uh, his courier is dead but uh, yeah the visage gets focused down by focus fire i think that's the big one because he doesn't have the clear target he could go for juggernaut but killing this visage or putting him in a spot where he can't deal damage with his soul assumptions be very annoying uh, they also take down vlad's offering so that that's pretty big i think that's what ta2000 needs to do use this bkb uh, snap the coil if it's cast on him and try to kill visage Oh. You might wish to return Wait, what is minute. this? Yeah, but it's PSG Quest that this time has the pause. So, okay, okay. Start the timer. Tap the clock. I can't. I have uh, have it for the next rune. Uh, yeah. I have it set up in the next few seconds. Yeah, the it's up in rune. 20 seconds. Where's Corey? Why is he not here? What What is this? <laughs> Wrong side of the map, guy. But yeah, in that fight, I mean, that was also an Aegis Timbersaw. So that was really annoying for them to try and get that kill. Uh, forced out buyback onto the Treant. If the tree, if Gory didn't buy back, Juggernaut would get the spin TP out. And that fight would actually be a win for them. So all things considered, I mean, obviously PC Quest just ever so slightly played that fight better. Uh, but they're still keeping these fights very close on Winterbear. If they are grouped up together with Healing Ward, then you have like a Visage with hold his auras uh, just to get that extra, extra life steal, a little bit of armor, two supports. They need some defensive items as well, some Glimmer Cape, some Force Staffs to come online. And you can see Paka going for Yule Scepter next to remove the Silence from Death Prophet, uh, dodge some of the projectiles as well, some Shackle Shots, uh, get rid of Three and Protector Ulti. I want to see if Timbersaw is going to commit. He's changing his item build as we speak. There was a Lotus Orb. Now he has Hex queued up. I think Hex might be the item. 
Yeah, against the puck. Hold Mikey down. He's going actually for the Yule Scepter, but it seems Lincoln's might be a little bit of a better choice. I mean, to be fair, you kind of need BKB, but you really don't want to go for BKB. Uh, that's the problem with Puck. When they have silences, when they have control, it's like, okay, uh, do I just get Kai Assange and say, screw it? Maybe I have someone in my team that's going to build a Glimmer Cape to keep me alive. Or I need a Dispel mechanic of my own. Lincoln's is very expensive. I don't think you can get away with just, like, casual Lincoln's because Ultimate Orb is 2.8k gold now. Good luck farming that. So we are going to take the uh, other Tormentor. Tiny well. gets it. Let's go. No, okay. Well, that's okay. a good one. But on the other hand, Death Prophet got his. So you got that uh, Spirit Siphon Fear. Which is horrible to deal with for a hero like Puck. It's an early one since Trent Protector picked up his. That's his main item pretty much. You want to save the gold. Buy it at 15. Easy. Ooh, run away, piggy, run! Before the slaughter chainsaw is going to cut the pig alive. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. And Juggernaut, yeah, he's got the Manta style. He's going for the Aghanim Scepter next. Once you get the like level 20 talent as well, the Blade Dance Lifesteal, and you have the Aghanim Scepter, and you're at like 10% HP, you just pop it once, the Swift Slash, and then boom, full HP back in the fight. It's weird. One of the more busted uh, combinations of Juggernaut. Okay, they want to smoke. Do they have a smoke? There is none available. Just to force staff in to look cool on stream. And then instantly die. Light Collector picked up by Stoic. I think that's a good item when you play against Monkey. Train Protector. Toss back. Uh, the there's combo. the Omni Slash quickly used. Not, Big cooldown though. Not sure Omni was needed. They definitely did not lack damage or control. Bird still had the stun available, but... Uh, they will take it. A kill's a kill. And the net worth the advantages again, like it grows to 10k and then Dyer's it just drops back to 6k. And then it keeps on jumping all the way through. I, I honestly would not really take a fight without the Omni Slash. Have a keep them back. Nuke comes in. Shackle shot onto the two supports and it's a perfect hitter. Stoic forced FTP attempt will not be able to get away, and yeah, this is because the Juggernaut decided to try and right click the mid tier one tower. I don't really know why. You're up against a tree, and you're not even gonna get the push damage in. Yeah, they they need to get like a kill. Uh, they got the kill on Batrider, but they heavily committed. We got this Omni Slash, so a bit of a weird one. Still TA2000, he is really good with those shackles. Uh-oh, there it is. Yep, reality. Spin to win will not be successful this time. Ava, Dizzy tries to get the toss back, but jumped a little bit too close to his own tower. And Garchal Visage will be feared up thanks to the shard that the Death Prophet got, so he can't even go into a stone form. Yeah, this is looking really rough. Juggernaut uh, pretty much twice cost half his team to die in a row. Oof. The game looked pretty okay, uh, but then just like sequence of the events, and now you have Aghanim Scepter, Wind Ranger, and also Hex on Timbersaw. Now they're just feeding this Observer Board that has been planted near the 3 3 tower. Top gives them enough vision to pick off Stoic. Under attack. Malik's got the Scythe of Ice now as well. That's just pure dominance in terms of net worth. The puck has his Yule Scepter. But, uh, okay, he's going to upgrade the Witchblade. High ground defense is uh, seemingly the play that they're going to have to go with. The plus side is they have a Tiny. So you always have the toss back potential. You've got Frost Shield. High ground pushing is not that easy for quest even with the dp you just yeet the dp all the way back hit her with an omni slash and she dies mikey going for well, at least trying to go for a solo kill gz shows up with dust they definitely need that but fiori is super tanky he got the blue. Hey. he 
does get the blink all the way back. Omar is looking for him, but Mikey walks the other direction. And they will be able to at least dodge and weave their way through while the rest of the team farms up. So they didn't manage to get the kill onto the tree, but at least they wasted a bunch of time. Oh, that's almost an instant rotary spawn Radiant's as well. Middle tower is under attack. And that's the moment Omar, Omar checks it. Okay, Oof. that's just... I mean, sometimes you just get lucky, Radiant's sometimes you don't. Malik was the one holding Aegis the first time. This time, I think you give it to TA2000. He's going to be the one sieging the high ground with that Prophet ulti. And Malik is... In a state where I, I don't know if they can just like burst him from 100 to 0. They need uh, four heroes at least. He had 2000, he made the spot. So, gonna be cheese on that profit. Radiant are scanning. Bottom side. Cheese is looking for a catch. They managed to find the bat rider most of the time, but Malik was completely ready for that. Lasso on the other target, Chain Frost. It's still bouncing around, but with the pipe not really doing much damage in the process. The two supports are again found out, and they were hard baited in right there. Omar knows that they're they're hunting for that ass. They place down a very cool observer board near the tier two tower, where Omar is, gives you the vision of the whole tower pretty much. So. That's the one to remember. Like this observer board doesn't show you much, but it gives you crucial information. And you could Dyer's also cut the rest of the trees there attack. if you you've got like a quelling blade or something. Or you're a hero that has a, a way to cut it. Or you've got the new neutral item. That I still find weird. Uh I I think this item is better than I expected. It's ten percent move speed. I think that's that's the big one. Especially on a support uh, Look at Lich zooming. <laughs> the light collector. A 10% movement speed is pretty nice, and well, obviously, nighttime mana regen is always nice for support. Great Mikey time. dies to Malik. Well, towards mid, GZ will be found out. And yeah, the supports just can't really do much Radiant's at the moment. Windring has got the ages, he's got the BKB, and he's got nags, so he is. Given very strong reality. Spin TP out of there. Gets himself back. Does he have... He is closing in on the Axe. Then afterwards, Nullifier, which is great until Wind Ranger hits level 25. He's almost level 20 on Wind Ranger, and they will go for the high ground. Uh, this might be it. One fight like that, where you have no buys on cores, because... Juggernaut doesn't have it, uh, Puck doesn't have it, he invested all of his gold in Parasma, which is uh, an early one. Tiny toss back. Toss back, on to move, move up to DKB, Omni Slash bouncing around, Jesus is already dead, the Omni Slash doesn't do anywhere close to enough damage to get these kills coming in. The Chain Frost is pretty nice though, and it's actually continuing to bounce on the back line as well. This is a big Chain Frost, but they still heal way too much. You've got pretty tanky heroes on the opposing side, so even the perfect chain frost bounces will not be enough to get it done. The yeah, 2000 still has that Aegis available, they want to get rid of the melee racks. Might need to fall back, no exorcism, one buyback used on Kachal. Chain Frost was good. It was a, a lot of damage, but Pipe also nullifies a lot of it, and then you get hit by Mage Slayer, so that's going to be even less spell damage. It just uh, looks cool most of the time. Oh, look Next the exorcism. Up in 60 seconds. Oh, they know what's coming. Omar also bots TP'd in because, you know, he's got bots. That's a plus four. <laughs> J2000 is going to quickly get jumped. That should be the Aegis pop. First life gone, but on the side. In comes new. Omni Slash actually, oh no, it's the Swift Slash coming in from reality. He doesn't have the Omni Slash just yet. Omar gets the last one, but he instantly gets taken down. And they're looking for TA2000, forced to pop the BKB. This fight's not going as well as they'd like. Luckily enough, the Juggernaut spells are on cooldown. He almost has the Swift Slash again. Can he get it off on the edge? No, he is taken down. 
And that's a big kill secured. Noobs BKB is oh, now going to use as well. Kacho on the run. Doesn't have... Oh, he does try to get himself away. No, he is going to get taken down. The Chain Frost bouncing around. Sinister Gaze. Hold back. TA2000 almost dropping down. Can they get the kill? Yes, they can. TA2000 falls. But it's the big bulky tank Malik that still stands alive. Uh, one thing that Winter Bear does really well is uh, using their buybacks to keep themselves in the game. They're not afraid to use them, even on some of the cores. We saw Kachal buying back in the previous fight. Uh, I'm really surprised how fast Batrider dies. Two times in a row, he blinks in, tries to lasso, immediately disappears. Dyer's this damage from Visage and a couple of right clicks from Juggernaut needs a, needs a bit of a protection of his own. Needs some kind of a defensive tool. Yeah, this uh, bat well, BKB might definitely help in terms of uh, the damage from the visits coming through, but uh, they're making these fights still doable. It feels like they should be a lot deader than they actually are half the time. And the Swift Slash is a really big pickup on the Juggernaut as well. He's getting close to his level 20. Uh, it, once he gets that, he'll be able to use the Swift Slash as a sort of saving grace heal mechanic. Buck has the Parasma with the phase shift, so every single one around him gets that extra uh, magic resistance reduction debuff. Uh, it's, uh, it's a lot. This uh, Parasma item, I, I don't think you're going to rush it on many heroes. On Puck, it does feel nice. Let's see if Quest, if they want to go in with another Exo. This is Exorcism level 3. Under Try to pop it. Uh, there is uh, no blink dagger on Kaori, but he's going for Lotus Orb, so some extra protection, removing that Parasma grid against Chain Frost, Omni Slash, Swift Slash, you name it. Easy. We'll get Shard from his Tormentor. Yes. Not the best one. Not the best one. <laughs> it's amazing what you are. No, no, it's actually really bad. Like, Juggernaut would have loved. The other one that could have get it was scary. the Juggernaut. That would have been a pretty good one. It's not superb. I mean, the show is pretty nice, I guess. There is going to be a lasso coming in. In response, the silence is problematic for Kachal. The Visage, can he get himself the Great Keeper's Cloak? So I've gone. Reality is actually going to get taken down on one end. And Kachal, he's in his little stone form. But that's also where he's going to drop. The problem is, you yeah. play Juggernaut against Wind Ranger. Carry to carry matchup is, you need to have a lot of items. She goes invis. If you are isolated, there's also a chance of you dying alone against Wind Ranger. She just bursts you down from invis shackle shot. You die in one focus fire. And he does have buyback. He will be alive in 30 seconds. The question is, can they hold? Uh, it's looking key. rougher and rougher the longer the game goes. Juggernaut's going for the nullifier, but it's a long way to go. It would be a very good nullifier pickup, though, against the uh, Aghanim Scepter, Timbersa, and the Wind Ranger until he gets level 25, which is almost there. And if they kill a couple of heroes, they would definitely get the, the levels that they need on the dire side. Like, Lich is level 13. He's got nothing. And bottom is being pushed in, top is being pushed in. Mike is trying to cut the creep waves as best as he can do. And they're gonna TP. Reality in the area, but... PSG Quest probably just waiting for the next rush. They don't have to rush anything, it's gonna spawn in 10 seconds. This is third rush already since they killed it so quickly. What are these the instant spawn? rush respawns? What the... Oh, no. I don't know. He get oh, man's ahead of his time right there. Spots him coming, pops everything, load sword plus BKB and quickly TPs out. And just last game they at least had like the hook shot and the uh, uh, swap on the venge to try and get the uh, interruption of the TP. This game they have nothing until Puck gets 25, but that's not really going to happen anytime soon. Yeah, Roche is on Dire side. That's Ags. third Dire side. Roche, Agatim Scepter. They already have one on Timbersaw, one on Windranger. Omar will oh, get the shard. Malik is taking the gateway as the same time as 
<laughs> the lich. <laughs> <laughs> Did they see each other? No, I think they just missed each other. That was wild. <laughs> Radiant are scanning. <laughs> Smile and wave, boys. Smile and wave. Oh, that's neck on neck. TA2000. Yeah, they're getting ready to go for Roche. Nice placement of the Observer Ward. They have vision of the pit without it being counter warded. <laughs> and they realize Roche is up. Free Aghanim Scepter. Who's going to get it? DP? I guess you give it to DP. So you can siege. Like, the damage output is pretty nuts. It looks like you have ulti up and running, and you don't. <laughs> and yeah. Noob gets it. Free Aghanim Scepter. Top net worth. Ooh. 30k net with lead now because of that free Aghanim Scepter. Jeezy is really using that shard that he got. Farming up some camps on the enemy side. Ooh, double TP, gotta run. <laughs> gotta go fast. Uh oh, you might, might be in be. trouble here. Sinister Gay is not gonna do much. The Dream Call immediately gets uh, removed as well. BKB on the Bat Rider gets out of dodge, top lane. They're ready Noob to wants to fight. Arcane Rune on him, wants to pop that Exo. He's drawing on a minimap. And in he goes. Buildings drop pretty quickly if you've got Focus Fire and Exo going at the same time. Okay, that was quick. Oh, one more set of racks. Is all that stands between them and Megas. Always got to be careful with the tossback play, though. Even though at this stage it becomes a lot less problematic. I mean, even the Wind Rangers, 3.4k HP. Jack does have Nullifier, so that's something. Removing Living Armor, dispelling that Wind Run. Timber Saw's ulti as well, uh, the Agnum Scepter. Thing. But. It wouldn't surprise me too much if he accidentally uh, hit a Lotus Rope. Because Treant also has a Lotus now. His items are Shard and Lotus on uh, Gory. So uh, Omni Slash will be uh, a dangerous one to use in the next team fight. Mikey Overwhelming Blink. Okay. Any other solid choices coming out? Pachal. Uh, he's got a BKB, so we'll be able to hopefully survive for a little bit longer. The problem was that he could not pop his uh, Gravekeeper's Cloak half the time. Now he does have a way to get out of the silence at the very least. Timber saw also level 25, so he's got the second Chakram. And they're going to smoke up. No tier, one uh, tier 3 towers means they can just walk into the enemy's base while still being smoked. Question is... Which angle do they want to take? On the Visage and very quickly dropping Kachal. No buyback available on the Visage. It's all, it's uh, XO MPKB used though. He also has a load, so they have three loads on PSG Quest. And Reality has a problem really getting close and getting the Omni Slash going. Oh, that's that's their glyph. Exorcism still up and running. Half duration left. The uh, ages minute and fifty Stop seconds. Back on Malik with back. the nullifier. Omni slash coming in. Malik is dead. Ten kill streak picked up. Okay, they might just hold on for a little bit longer. Tier two thousand being chased. Lincoln Sphere being thrown out onto the Juggernaut to get close. Yeah, nullifier coming in clutch. Some big kills. I mean, this team should not be underestimated. They do have 30k gold disadvantage, but still making the plays. GZ was the one. Ether Lens, Eye of the Vizier. So that cast range is pretty massive. Even with 31k net with lead, it's problematic to get this f game finished up. The Aegis is going to expire in about a minute. And honestly, it wouldn't surprise me if they waited until the next one. Oh, Stoich. Oh, that nice one. 
trying to stay alive, to 2000s in the area. Uh, nice two-man storms coming out, the AoE silence, they're getting some debuffs on them. Sinister Gaze drag back on TA 2K. Jeezy, he's ready for the Avatars uh, on the side. Gets silenced up by Noob though, but that's going to be the first life gone. And Reality still has a Nullifier, still has an Omni Slash. It is a... Yeah, he's level 25 on the Wind Ranger. Took the Undispellable Wind Run. Jim Frost bouncing around. It's a very bad bounce, but Jeezy's chasing him for more Noob. Does have a cheese at the ready, and with the BKB, TP will be attempting to get out. Actually, oh my god, the low to serve spell reflect from the Omni Slash puts Noob back in the area, interrupts his TP. That is insane. Noob is now in trouble. The then Lotus is his downfall, possibly, or is it? There's going to be Maybe. a catch on the Juggernaut. He almost has a Swift Slash again, but he is going to be found out. The buyback from the Radiant side are going to come through and will clean it up. That was a wild team fight. Yeah, I, that's that's wild. Like casting Lotus Orb, and then you're kind of griefing if your teammate is teeping out, but in the end, it ends up well for them. Oh no, he's just gone. And Jeezy will be dead. So no toss back play this time around. I mean, I still fight. That was one of the most. I never even occurred to me that you could interrupt the TP that way. Oh, noob into the fountain. That's nullified. Doesn't really take much damage in the process. Actually, his fountain diving even. There's gonna there be it the is again. Swift slash. He has the Omni <laughs> Slash still. Gets hexed up. And Mikey with the three man Dream Coil is trying to get some damage in, but it's just the two cores to try and get the fight going. Lasso drag back. Mikey in a lot of trouble. Yule Scepter. GG gets called. Omni Slash gets bounced all around, and it is a Swift Slash on top. It does not matter. They already called the GG and it will be PC Quest going on to the winter, uh, winner bracket finals. But Winter oh. Bird put up a really good show. They they really did. I mean, they could have won this series. Even the second game was very close for them to take the dub. It's just seizing that high ground wasn't uh, even like close to perfection. And uh, yeah, PSG Quest also not the easiest team to take down they do have a lot of experience so this means that uh, PSG Quest will be meeting uh, Team Falcons in the upper bracket final so not a shocker uh, they do look like the best uh, two best teams in MENA region but uh, yeah a bit of a spoilers you know Enigma Galaxy they did lose to Team Falcons and uh, Good showing. I think Winter Bear, this team has a lot of potential. I mean, it's... It, uh, because they did manage to... Enigma Galaxy in some other qualifiers. They almost beat PSG Quest. And uh, this team is just getting better and better. Yeah, they're looking really good. Their off lane is sublime. Uh, this game, it was a bit rough. The Visage had actually kind of no game. I think GC's also been looking great. And obviously, Mikey's been always fantastic they throw out some stuff that y you don't even think about i mean i didn't consider the swift slash interrupt of the bkb tp out that was uh, that was a cool one uh <laughs> that's it. yeah i mean it makes sense but it's also kind of weird that it happens that way nonetheless the next series will be uh if i'm not mistaken winter bear versus adonis on the other stream because there's two streams going on at the same time and we'll be doing nigma galaxy versus hinini uh on this channel so we'll be going towards a break we've got about 15 minutes until the next series is about to start so we're just gonna get everything sorted takes a breather and we'll be right back for uh, some uh, nigma galaxy dota Good to see Kuro again. We'll be right back after the break.
Welcome back, ladies and gents. The first series was a close one and a very lengthy one, but Lacoste, that was only the first in three series today. Next is going to be the one, the only, Nigma Galaxy taking on Hinini. Yeah, I mean, uh, Nigma Galaxy, they did lose to Team Falcons in the upper bracket semis. Uh, first game was uh, rather a stomp 22 minute game. Uh, Second one was much closer, 50-minute game. Enigma Galaxy took it to a distance, but uh, not an easy task for Enigma Galaxy to go through these qualifiers because you have two like really strong teams, Team Falcons and PSG Quest, uh, against team like Hineni. Uh, you know, I always check stuff on Liquipedia. If your names are red, that means that you haven't played too much competitive Dota. The only one who Played some competitive Dota is Isla, and their mid laner is Stupid Cat. I had the chance to meet. It's, he's a funny fella. Uh, met him at Riyadh Masters uh, in 2022. Uh, had a bit of a chance to chat with him in 2023. Cool guy. He works as their analyst, uh, you know, but uh, not going to be an easy task for him going against Sumail this time. So, you know, he's a friend of mine, so I want to see what he can do. Yeah, definitely going to be a, a rough one for them. There is no denying it at all. Uh, Hinnany, they did previously get 2 0 by Winter Bear, uh, but in the lower bracket, they did 2 0 5 Spirit. So at least they got that uh, dub under their own belt. So that they. And th their series were pretty convincingly. First one, 20 minutes. Second one, 26 minutes. So very solid in that approach. Can they bring that to a higher caliber team like Nigma? That is the big question that we're going to look for the answer for here because it's definitely not going to be an easy task. I mean, there are three teams that are the top of the region, you would say, previously. Uh, but Winter Bear right now does make it, you know, Winter Bear could make uh, Nigma pretty uncomfortable here. They've already beaten them previously. They're currently in the other stream if you want to check that out but we're going to handle enigma galaxy versus hinnany and it seems that the draft is going alive yeah and uh, enigma galaxy they don't want to get cheesed they will ban out the meepo immediately this hero is wild this hero you you play against him, it's like how do you kill i can't target him he's healing up then he turns into mega meepo then he digs uh, uh uses disperser runs away if he has any kind of a save on his team very difficult hero to kill and we can see hinnany banning out uh, some of these heroes that enigma galaxy loves to play chen on kuro uh, one of the most uh Iconic ones about him and Puppy. They go way, way back on this hero. And also banning out uh, Batrider. I want to see if Hinnany wants to, you know, cheese it out a little bit. Because when they played against Winter Bear, they picked uh, Pudge. They had Anti-Mage. Uh, Anti-Mage is not a cheesy hero. But, uh, you know, I in terms of raw skill, they're not on the same level. So you need to give yourself a little bit of advantage somehow. Dire team yeah, surprise Husker pick something like that could always be a, a good way to get yourselves an advantage. Yeah, the, the Meepo being so incredibly strong is insane because if you look at like Dota 2 Pro Tracker and Dire you check out like back. carry Meepo, just safe lane Meepo in pubs, 60% win rate. That's Any insane. Meepo, mid lane, off lane, you name it. The hero, I mean, from the safe lane as well, you get some extra armor. It's not like you need it, but uh, very difficult Five to harass. Uh, also, if your support is pulling, you're going to be getting some extra XP, getting that extra regeneration, getting fed tango. So uh, this hero uh, can get out of control. Like you can feel him. That's uh, like the timing when you're playing against Meepo, you know it's Ten coming. And uh, you better be ready, because if you lose one, two fights, he takes the Aegis, uh, he's going to be the one controlling the game pretty much for the next uh, few minutes, and you just lose so much map advantage. Yeah, but luckily enough, they don't have to deal with that this time around. We'll see Timber Saw being banned. Thank Radiant the Lord, because Timber Saw only team. seems to win every Radiant single time. Radiant. I don't know what... i am got to look up what the percentage win rate is for the hero in the uh, close qualifiers right now because that statistic seems to be in uh, insanely high from what I've uh, at least encountered in the games I've watched. 10 seconds remaining. Yeah, it looks a little bit busted. It just doesn't Five lose the laning remaining. stage. Scales really well. He gets level 6. Your carry is either dead or needs to go to jungle. 
So you have two options, which is always good. It's not like you're dead immediately. But uh, yeah, Enigma Galaxy will pick up Vengeful Spirit as our first hero. Yeah, Vengeful Spirit, of course, a little bit flexible. It can be played by Kuro or RMN most of the time. Don't really think that it's a ghost offlane hero. He's more of a lone druid surprise pick, obviously, from his safe lane days uh, when he played in uh, China. It is a weird pickup, though, for Enigma Galaxy that they uh, added the Malaysian to the roster, but that that's kind of Enigma's shtick, right? They constantly have new players coming in from all different parts of the globe to try and make a roster that uh, dominates. Ten seconds. Really. Yeah, they weren't uh, really successful. Miracle came back. Uh, I Five think, uh, seconds, like Enigma really. Galaxy, as as an organization, they have like they always did have like the biggest fan base in the vest. Uh, that's for sure. The, the, these guys just like bring attention. Uh, I think OG uh, during their prime as well had the gigantic fan base, so they're always under a microscope no matter what they do. But the things were not team looking good for Nigma in the past two years or so, so they need to bounce back. Sometimes uh, it takes a little longer. Uh, this roster with RMN Ghost, uh, Kuros Mail Miracle, we'll see what they're going to be able to do. Uh, things are not looking good in these qualifiers, but they need to build up chemistry slightly more, uh, sharpen up some things. And uh, Hineni picking up Slardar and removing some of the counters to Slardar, removing this Winter Vyvern immediately. Uh, a bit of a surprising one. I think you and me were casting one series where they picked Slardar as the first pick, which uh, it was South America yesterday. Yeah, But... Uh, you don't know the matchup, uh, so you will Radiant see some good pick. counters, uh, so like Wind Rangers, Trolls, anything that has a miss chance. And Slaughter doesn't get to play Dota in this lane. This Slaughter, he needs to be picked after you see the carry, or you can like play it as a safe laner if you know that the guaranteed off laner is going to be there. And that needs to be a melee hero. So right now, Hineni, I would say remaining. already in a bit of a trouble because they don't have anything against this Wind Ranger. You Five have multiple ways remaining. of buff buffing her up, Empower, uh, and Vengeful Spirit Aura later on. So that's going to be some massive damage output. And uh, they, they will need to... Some kind of stuns. Uh, it's a good puck game if they want to pick it uh, against all three heroes. They don't have instant Dyer stuns. In the this, is, this is also okay uh, because they are lacking some of the control on side of Enigma Galaxy. I was actually looking up the stats. Uh, Timbersaw has a 60% win rate in 61 games in the close qualifier so far. Uh, in all regions combined. Um, but there was a one that I found a little bit more surprising. Five Enigma has 81% win rate in 21 games in uh, all regions. That's a r insane win rate. Yeah, th there's a new build on Enigma. Uh, we talked team. about Radiant Vlad's team. meta, where people are picking up Vlad's on the offlaners, increasing the damage on your Eidolons, playing for Shard, getting drums. So this is kind of a new tech, and uh, there's the hero that we did mention. So now you have <laughs> Wind Ranger and Troll, so good luck. Slardar, I guess. So now you have two lanes that you already pretty much lost. Wind Ranger against Ember Spirit, and you have Troll against Slardar with Vengeful Spirit, and they're going to be looking for most likely position four. They could also pick up... Um, some body Ten for Troll, some remaining. something melee, like Tusk or even Clockwork. Five seconds remaining. Yeah, there definitely are a couple of options. Lately, we've also seen a bunch of like tiny position fives, but don't think that that's more of a Kuro hero. He likes just Ogre, stuff like that. <laughs> you know, Ogre Treant, something that just walks in front and stands there big and bulky. I mean, to be fair, Tiny does the same. So I don't think he plays the... The most meta-related heroes, I think. They think it's going to be Wind Ranger Ten position 4 remaining. and maybe protecting their Ember Spirit even more with this 
OD ban. Ember does have a couple of these bad matchups uh, that he can't kill, and people are getting free farm in his lane. A couple of uh, melee heroes as well. Uh, we were talking about Kunkka, Monkey King. Uh, there's always Huskar as an option. Uh, Necro is also a good one that he can't really do much to him because most of the damage that they have is physical anyway. So, Nigma Galaxy, if they want to shift this Windranger to position 4, they have plenty of options that they can throw against this Ember on a mid lane. Thing is, they don't have the last pick, so Hinnany will get to choose which carry hero they want against Troll Warlord. Uh, usually, there back. is like a Razor as a counter to Troll, but then again, you're picking it in the Windranger. Magnus might be your off laner, so he can skewer away from your link. There's also a swap available, so they might need to think outside of the box and find something different. I, I, this is not an easy Dying pick for Hinnini by any means. Okay, this is, this is also another melee hero that uh, destroys Ember Spirit. I've even seen Dragonite just like getting kill on Ember Spirit level 2, level 3. If you make a small mistake, that could happen. Well, that is definitely a dangerous prospect going forward. They're also seconds, super three. tanky. Build a, a, a lot of armor on the Dragonite. You got the evasion coming in Five or seconds, the blind maybe. from the troll. Uh, so the Slardar has a bit more troubles against that. Obviously, Wind Range is going to be a really big problem. Spell steals from the Rubik. RP Shackle Shot. He's got some pretty okay steals so far, but in any, they need some... They need a safe laner, or if they want to go wild and put the Ember Spirit mid, uh, sorry, safe, they could also go that oh. way. Sarda could also still go safe. They technically have a three-way um, swap possible, but... Yeah, none of, none of them sound good. Yeah, like, I don't I think any of these swaps is going to win them the lane. It will be Faceless Void in the end. They have literally no damage inside Chrono other than the Rubik. Ooh, one slight, uh, that's about it. Some right clicks from Nature's Prophet, which is not going to be the greatest. Um, problem is, you misuse this Chrono, uh, you're in a really bad spot. Uh, there's also Faceless Void into Windranger, into Troll. Like, this Slaughter doesn't get to play. I think they just completely <laughs> ruined his lane. Uh, you can hit, you miss chances from Axis, and also Windrun on your position 5, so... Good luck with that. They will need to play this lane differently, pull the lane back because they, they can't touch them. They they cannot touch Troll Warlord. Yeah, the, this looks like a pretty l rough game for him. And he, uh, as you mentioned, the damage output inside Chrono is very minimal. Um, you're playing an Ember Spirit against a Troll, DK, and Magnus, aka all three do not care about uh, Ember Spirit at all. The supports can definitely die, but... Uh, Three cores from Enigma look like they're just not going to be able to get killed. Yeah, even if you rotate as Nature's Prophet to the top lane, I'm not sure if they can, like, maybe they can get one kill, but that's about it. Or if he's going to be rotating to mid lane, Dragonite doesn't care about your Sprout, Sprout or your right-click damage. So, very difficult game for Hinnany. But I want to see how it's going to be played out. My boy Stupid Cat on a mid lane against some guy named Sumail, so let's see how that's gonna go. Uh, Sumail the king is back. Yeah, that, uh, <laughs> Again, <yeah>. again, again. <laughs> yeah, good, good luck. Good luck, stupid cat. Let's see. But even but, a king uh, has to bow to an emperor, so stupid cat, we believe. Prepare for battle. Isla. Starting off with two circlets, two slippers of agility. Okay. Let's see if that's going to be effective against them. Probably. It's actually not that bad. This looks so Gets him a lot of damage. I mean, he has 69 damage with this build. That's very nice. Big fight starting out. Forced to level the leap. Time walk back. And we'll just be able to walk away. They should just uh, circumvent their attention to the other runes they have a very weak level one fight on the dire side they really do faceless void doesn't bring anything to the table you might try to bait some damage seconds to battle so you need to run away and interesting build coming out from rmn i'm gonna say that i like it they know that most of the damage is gonna be physical some right clicks from nature's prophet faceless void so he bought 
casual buckler. This is... I'm getting some puppy flashbacks back in the days when the buckler was, I believe, only upgradable to mech. And he did buy a casual That's buckler a lot of the times. Yeah, this time around it does have a triple upgrade potential. Guardian Greaves, the Flads, and the AC, which most certainly should become the Flads because it's first such blood. a good item. First Blood, wait, On what? I was... I... I, I missed that completely. <laughs> I was, like, looking at randomly walking back to the lane people because I never expected a First Blood to happen. Told you, this guy's stupid, Cat. He's really good. First Blood killing the king in the mid lane. Hearing chains, didn't do it solo, but uh, you know, we don't have to go into details. Yeah, no, that's just, they were his supporting cast. They were there to cheer him on while he did that, managed to handle that kill solo miracle kills off Mad Frog. The bottom lane is also not starting off the way they would like, especially a very strange kill. I mean, Rubik is slow, that is true, and Whirling Axis does get you that little bit of slow going, but... He didn't even get any creep hits in on the uh, troll order. They just walked down the Rubik. Dyer's courier has been killed. Radiant's courier has been. Oh, they killed. just snipe each other's couriers. But unfazed, drop oh. in low. One more hit, we'll be able to get back. But are you really that comfortable? Could TP back to base, and then TP back to lane. But decides to get. Sending out. Sending out the courier. Next shockwave plus wave of terror. He could be in trouble. Isla, but again, some pressure on the ghost with these right clicks. One more hit, and there it is. The kill gets secured. Unfazed still drops down, and Isla he doesn't have time lock, so he doesn't have a chance to get any bashes. He's gonna get stunned up by Armin, and he just straight up dies. Ooh, that one hurts. Oof. No time walk. Uh, now they're gonna be like close to level three after those kills how's mid lane doing nine and four against six and one stupid cat does have bottle because of that first blood it's a male going for bracer build no two and points of dragon him. blood so he really yeah. doesn't care about your level two flame guard the power of dk there's some matchups where you just don't care never refuse good and the top lane needs to be very careful, as we've already seen. The damage output between them is pretty good. It's not as good as, a, like, a Centaur plus one, but Magnus does a very good job at keeping it uh, close to the Centaur damage, at least. Bottom lane is the problematic one. I think Lord all three are not lanes getting are the in. problematic ones at the moment. <laughs> Especially the bottom one. He's not really getting too much on this Lardar. Miracle, 13 and 7. Like, he can get close to a hero. Miss chance, wind run, 100% miss chance. And it's gonna be hard to keep track on every single lane. Faces Void, dying one more time. There are five kills. I think I've missed three. So, gotta step up my camera work. Okay, let's focus. Everyone's HP bars are dropping. I need no nothing to be missed here uh stupid cat in mid actually he is gonna grab the bottle refill <laughs> look at all the creeps chasing after both stupid cat and samil samil's got two full waves chasing after him could go for the third if he uh, so pleases they made a new lane for themselves in the river who's gonna farm it the more to the right no. <laughs> guys mid Ah, no, I got distracted again. There's weird stuff happening in mid. I'm curious about that. Slarda, he wants to go for a man fight against the Troll Warlord. Not the best target to go for it, because the Troll Warlord has that evasion going. And Slardar underneath the tower will be taken down. Tries to block vision of him. While Unfaced gets taken down in the top solo. lane by Ghost, who is completely solo. Not even a little bit, but our man was gone. Oof, uh, they're falling apart already. Radiant Four minutes into the game, 3k gold lead for Enigma Galaxy. Miracle, but a bit of a pause. Yeah, Miracle uh, is... Okay, he's queued up Falcon Blade. So not like a Battle Fury Super Rush, but seems to be maybe a bit more of an aggressive build this game.
well, it seems like they want to put as much pressure as possible. Doesn't want to go farm heavy. One thing I like about this build from RMN is that he's going to have really early Vlads. You know, he starts with Buckler, brings Ring of Bassy after being involved in two of those skills. Suddenly, you pick up Blades of the Attack and all you need is Morbid Mask. So that's a very cheap item. I think uh, we're going to see that quite more. We talked about the item being very popular on the offlaners, but uh, I could also see some position force picking it up uh, as a rush, as we're seeing right now on RMN. I think in general, once a Morphling starts picking up the item, uh, it, it seems to be pretty good. Uh, a non-stats item on a Morphling, then the, the item must be really in a very good position. Even though it didn't really like get a big buff or anything. I think it got a very tiny buff, actually. What was it again? Uh, oh, yeah, the fact that it can be disassembled, I think that's the biggest buff. Yeah, yeah, that's... Uh, I mean, all the components are cheap as well. Like, usually you don't, like, disassemble because like, you can turn Bassy into mana boots. You can turn your buckler into AC, which is, you know, not the the greatest upgrade for position fours. Guardian Greaves is okay, but that's just not an item at the moment. And yeah, Morbid Mask, you can get Satanic or Mask of Madness. But uh, yeah, it's really good on the certain carries, like Morphling, as we've seen, where he can later on turn that into his Satanic. Oh, Mad Frog Bottom dodges it. Oh, oh, top side. You. Okay, it's you're doing good. Well. And uh, where else? Oh, I was... Uh, Okay, so but top, I'm, I saw one kill, and I thought something else was happening bottom, so it was like quickly jumping to bottom. Second guy dies top lane, but Armin does get taken down as a counter kill. Mid lane. Ah, stop dying. <laughs> he just TP'd it, didn't he? Or no? A few. Right. They're going down way too quickly. How is he solo killing him? This is like third time that he managed to get a solo kill. Our man is not even there. With level 2 in power, uh, 2 skewer, and 1 shockwave. Like, he doesn't even have a, like max shockwave to be the surprise damage. He might mainly has to right click them. Samil's level 6 and will be going for that tier 1 tower towards mid. The harass onto the Ember Spear is going to be pretty rough. Armen is walking all the way around. There's going to be a stun to be thrown. Armen doesn't even throw it out just yet. Right click is enough. Double damage, Vengeful Spirit. Turn their attention towards the tier 1 tower. This is a dead tower. DD catapult plus Dragonite. Uh, this has always been a thing with Nigma Galaxy. You can expect both supports to go mid level 6. Miracle looks uh, very dead here, unless he can get some misses. Oh, evasion coming There's in. One. Still finds a kill before he drops, but. And Ghost killed him again. Ghost solo killed, unfazed one more time. But he did use RP this time. <laughs> Ghost to 7 0 0. What? <laughs> Middle tower has <laughs> this He's is the reverse insane. James Bond. Uh, he's also got like the double Wraith ban. He's going for the Orchid next. I think he's still uh, forgetting that he's an off lane and uh, not a safe lane anymore. Towards mid, a kill comes in onto Stupid Cat. He's not level 6 yet on the Ember. And that's starting to become a very big problem here for Hinnany. Yeah, let's see. Okay, Mad Frog will at least get the experience rune. We'll be able to uh, hopefully get their level 6s on time, especially the Rubik. The Nate's Prophet one. Actually, both their level 6 spells are really good. Still need a lot of XP for it. Unfazed. Trying to sprout some mail in the mid lane. But uh, that's about it. Double bracer. Power treads. Another gloves of haste. Still level 5 on no, Stupid, Stupid Cat. Cat. Not again. Guru tries to get the shackle shot, but the mini stun might be enough to get the kill. Stupid Cat dropping low, drinking bottle charges. 
He got but it. the power shot from Kuro down, down, secured. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. As I say that, Wind Ranger's in trouble. Kuro's being charged at the DK Sun onto the Slaughter, and the Shackle shot onto two. The Slaughter is in trouble. Kuro does drop. Samil surrounded by enemies, gets bashed up, but these two supports, they're not really the best damage dealers. Oh, Beast Lies here, does have Chronosphere, might need to use it. Otherwise, he's gonna run away. Troll. Walking in is Miracle. Samil is gonna get taken down. Miracle continuing his attention to Mad Frog. Going Who's in gonna use war. it first? Metal Transfer Chrono. He okay, walks he into does it. get the clip so that the Ember can get some damage in, but it doesn't matter. He still has the Battle Trance at the ready. In comes Lil One, going for another fight. Kuro's respawn, walking back. And while all of that's going on, Ghost is chilling top lane. But it's a great power shot onto to Isla, needs to leap out of there. The Slard are going back in again with Unfazed. <laughs> Why are they constantly fighting? They do manage to kill off Miracle in the end, but Kuro should be able to walk away. Inini bringing in numbers. Their heroes are uh, very under leveled, so they respawn no almost immediately. While all this was happening, a ghost is farming in the top lane, going for Orchid as his first item. He wants to be able to control Faceless Void and Ember Spirit. And this is going to be one very quick Orchid, just uh, 900 gold away from it. Yeah, it's uh, 6k up with lead, okay, 7k up with lead, stop changing so fast, uh, Ghost is close to his item. Miracle is going for a Mantis Oh, look now. at the stack that Ghost is clearing in the triangle. Money, Thank you, money, money. Men. And max level and power as well, so he can clear everything very quickly. Also keeps uh, his shockwave level one, so that Rubik doesn't have a good spell to steal. Very annoying that they do that when I play Rubik. Yeah, he's also a universal hero, so maxing out your other, like just getting stats, feels really good on him. Kuro, shackle shot, nice. Throws out a power shot in behind it. Samil's playing like one of the most boring heroes in the game, by the way. Dyer's bottom tower uh, Dragonite can't really make this guy anything. look flashy until you, you know, get some Octarine Core, Mantis style, Aghanim Scepter. Giant's Ring, Just because then you're yeah. really stupidly big, which is cool. Yeah. This is a good spell to steal, Mad Frog getting Breathe Fire plus Fade Bolt, that's a lot of damage reduction between these two spells. And Ghost with the Orchid walking up, Samil in the front. He's going to tank the brunt of the damage if it's coming their way. He also went for the Hand of Midas build. Dark Speed's pretty good on DK. And in general, experience is key because you want to get your Elder Dragon form level 3 as soon as possible. Here comes our men. Vlad's already online. One point in Vengeance Aura just to amplify damage even more. Ghost will get the kill with his newly purchased Orchid, Soul Burn. 12 minutes. Already an 8k gold lead for Enigma Galaxy. Miracle. Manta Stall Dispersion. I was already wondering when I would see... Because there was a time when you had like um, Morphlings a lot. And uh, versus troll matchups, and they always went for like Diffusal Blade on troll against the Morphling. I was wondering when we get to see Diffusal Blade troll back with Dispersion being so freaking good. Yeah, it's it's definitely back, and they they want to Roche. Miracle's going in, has M power for another 10-15 seconds. RMN is also here, to give him that life steal. And H Prophet Alti use. Doesn't really do much. They were trying to get their catch onto Ghost, but while all of this is going on, as you mentioned, they're just in the rope pit. And slowly but surely taking it down. Miracle. Perverse Dax. Always great. Oh, Ghost. Gotta be careful. And they get the catch. Nope, he skewers. And he's gone. They need the Void, like, Blink Clock Chrono there to make anything happen. And maybe Ember with the uh, Searing Chains would be able to catch him. 
But yeah, that's a very fast rush, 13 and a half minutes. They could also go for enemies XP rune at 14 minutes since they have Observer Ward there, try to get a kill. And that's exactly what Miracle and our men are doing. They'll even pop the smoke. Looking to get a catch, Unfazed would be the first target to encounter. Breathe Fire gets stolen again, Unfazed. Get spotted out and there's nowhere to go, nowhere to run. He will be found out. Samil charging forward on towards the Rubik he goes. And Mad Frog will be a second one down. RMN, killing spree coming out on the Vengeful Spirit. He's also got that Vlad's. So they have the auras required. Miracle is closing in the, the diadem. Actually has the Manta Sal recipe first. It's uh, the expensive one. 1550. 1550 and you get no stats from it. Nice. <laughs> so there's the RP. Skewer drag back coming in. Kuro gets the shackle shot connection and the little one trying to do some damage in response. Not gonna work. Three man Chrono does connect. Right click from Unfazed, is it going to be enough to kill the Magnus? Yes, indeed. Stolen power shot as well by Mad Frog. Definitely does help for the Chrono damage. Then they find two kills. Two pretty big kills. Both go to Mad Frog, though. So the Rubik's uh, getting a nice chunk of change, which Stupid Cat really needs. Ah, big Chrono. Uh, you can feel that these heroes are dying. You get Corrosive Haze onto them. Even level 1, minus 10 armor is quite a lot. Manta style now finished on Miracle. They want to dive some towers, it seems. Mad Frog. Yeah. This triangle has been Miracle's domain for most of this game. Our men follows Miracle. That's it. Yeah, that's Lands all you need. Done. Gives them vision and gives them extra damage. Lifesteal from Vlad. So they want to push this tier 2 tower. Ages. Still available for two and a half minutes. Ghost has the blink ar the dagger now available as well, so you gotta be careful with the uh, RP plays. It's still on cooldown for a bit, but blink RP orchid. You can easily nuke down a face's void or an ember spirit. Actually, yeah, anyone really is a target at this stage. Is that? Versus Kuro, lead forward. Kuro just uses Windrun as well. The Bash has come out. They will lose on phase, but Kuro is going to get taken down. So they will find a couple of kills going in their favor. Base, by the way. Troll with Manta style. Our man still sitting behind them. That's their glyph. Just pop two glyphs in the matter of, in the span of a minute. Miracle still has that Aegis. Pump out damage. Ghost. Uh, I guess doesn't need the skewer. Stolen skewer actually by the Rubik, but Miracle is now behind enemy lines and he's going deep underneath the tier 4 tower. Isla, does he have a way to be bad frog alive? No, he does not. There's going to be control on the troll, possibly coming out with the Ember buyback, joining in the fun. Roots onto Miracle, Manta Cell dodge. Bye. I'm gone. I'm not going to play your game underneath the tier 4s. I'm going to go for your tier 3 instead. <laughs> Both. Samael and Miracle have Mantas available already. Good luck defending your towers. 15k gold lead, 17 minutes. They're gonna lose their barracks. And they have maybe one big fight left in the tank. There is Chronosphere available in a few seconds. Problem is, they don't have damage that goes inside Chrono. Rubik needs to steal something. There are some big uh, spells, free fire, power shot. It's a lot of magic damage output, but these towers, they they melt. <laughs> yeah, with the uh, troll server stacks going ham, buildings do drop pretty quickly. You give him the uh, the buff as well from the Magnus. Nice and power buff. And troll goes ham. He is going to get groaned on the side. While Lil One randomly just walks into it as well. Miracle is going to get taken down. An RP on to three. Breathe fire as a response. Ghost skewers them back. They're dropping very low. Lil One, he's surrounded by the rest of the Radiant side. And they will lose all three of their main cores. Triple kill for Ghost. I mean, if you get an RP, you might as well get it on all three of the enemy cores. And make sure they can't move a muscle. Oof, that's our last left. Chronosphere was nicely placed. It caught RMN inside of it, but uh, yeah, again, the problem is they do not have enough damage whatsoever. Mad Frog, Skewer, Ghost misses. <laughs> A ghost. I mean, he might die here. 
something. Gotta be careful. Bad Frog wants to go in. Gets the f skewer plus fade bolt zap. Six skill streak picked up for Mad Frog. Rubik's doing pretty nasty stuff. This game. So good stuff to steal. Unfazed died somewhere behind. Kuro, no wind run available at the moment. The sun comes out. Miracle charging forward. Kuro is going to get swapped out to safety or not. No, will be controlled up. In comes Miracle. Pops his ulti. Goes ham with the damage. And they'll ignore the slardar while walking up the high ground. They're just looking to finish this game off quickly on Nigma. They know that after this series, they have another series to play. So they don't want to get too tired. I want to end this one as quickly as possible. Here in 3 Tower already gone. RMN is just sitting behind them. Vlad Zora, 3 points and Vengeance Zora. So that's quite a lot of damage onto both mid laner and safe laner, plus also the illusions. Middle one. I think they caught a glimpse of him. And Samili's also got the Mage Slayer, which with the big fat. Manta style dragons means that they are uh, bulky boys. Oh, stupid cat. Even though he got the first blood, was unable to farm any items. He did pick up a uh, shard as his first item on Ember Spirit. That's a weird one. <laughs> That's the first <laughs> time I've ever seen that. First item Dyer's shard on Ember. Maybe as a support, you know, some people do play him as a position four. You probably get like a rod of eight or something, or... Yeah, you get something. Yeah. yeah. Orb of Corrosion, now a Mage Slayer would also sound pretty nice. But Enigma Galaxy, they're ready to close this one out. The last set of racks left standing between them and Megas. And then, of course, they still have to go for tier fours. In from behind, they're coming. Isla's got the chrono, jumps in forward. RP gets used. And they are still hugging buddies right now. There will be the chrono coming in, turning his attention towards Ghost. There's just so little damage coming out. The stolen RP from Mad Frog, though. Doing some nasty work or nothing. It could also be nothing. Ghost will be taken down. This troll warlord is just unleashed. The DK, Troll Warlord, Manta Sal, Wambo Combo Duo. There's also a Diffusal Blade now on the Troll. That's a full Disperser. He just dispelled himself that time walk. It's a male. He gets the stun. Ooh, Isla can't get the lead. Triple kill secured for Miracle. Going in for Mad Frog. We saw the DK stun. Glimmer Cape. Gotta get back. And he just got back. Uh oh. <laughs> Mill one joins in. With the stomp while the troll ult was going on, which you know, that's just gonna cost you your life pretty quick. I'm no expert, but it might be time to call this one. There, there it go. is. Yeah. Miracle was even ready to buy out the shard for the extra fervor buff so that she could push faster. <laughs> okay, this one wasn't uh, a close one, but uh, yeah, in and eat. You know, we don't expect them to win against Nigma Galaxy. Uh, but uh, if Nigma Galaxy wins this series, the next one is not going to be any easy. They're going to be playing most likely against uh, Team Winter Bear. But uh, yeah, still have to play a second game. And uh, I want to see some cheese. I want to see some Meepo. I want to see, you know, something that could throw Nigma Galaxy off like as a surprise. Get uh, any cheesy hero you can play. Uh, I believe they will be having the last pick in this one. So maybe go with some Meepo, some Huskar last pick on a mid lane. But uh, yeah, this one was a very one-sided affair. This one was not it. I mean, uh, you know, some people, of course, in chat would be saying, Nigma is back! But uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll see that when they play against Winterbear. If they play against Winterbear, because in Indy, they still have a chance to hold on in the lower bracket they got to go big in the next upcoming game. I was pretty impressed with the Rubik steals. They were pretty nice. He, it was good. He, he was he their played, best player for sure. Yeah, he played pretty well uh, this game. But the rest of the team also needs to join him in the ranks of playing pretty good. We'll see that after the break. We'll be right back.
Welcome back, ladies and gents. Game number one, a very quick affair. Game number two starts that way as well. Dyer the drafting went back. incredibly fast between these two teams. We have the Venge and the Primal Beast. My name is DK Truman. I'm joined by Lacoste. And, well, game number two. Is it going to be another fast one, or do you expect uh, better resistance? Yeah, it seems like the Galaxy, they want to play seconds, pretty remain. much the similar game. Vengeful Spirit picked up. I assume... Our man will go for the same remaining. item build. Like, he wants to build Vlad's. So they want to be able to siege, kill Roshan. It is that type of a game, that type of a series. Hinnity on the other side, picking up Primal Beast. Much better hero. Oh, yeah, I, I think just having Primal Beast in the team allows you to get kills, uh, get some early rotations, and uh, have something that can get on top of a hero, instantly kill it. Very difficult hero to kill. Overall, so yeah, Hinnity making some adjustments. I want to see how Enigma Galaxy approaches this one. Remaining. You've seen Radiant some skill difference in the first game, but uh, I already like what I see in this second game from Hinnity. Pugna, very strong position for support. Uh, this might be the lane for them, uh, amplifying damage for Primal Beast. It could also be mid Primal Beast, but uh, yeah, looking much better than what they had already Ten in the first game. Seconds remaining. Yeah, the Pugna also five can be flexed, of course, as a position five in some cases. It's a fast hero. It has very good harass, mainly in the laning stage. And it is a save against a lot of targets and also counter against so many other heroes. Uh, counter against Wind Scurs, but it's also good against uh, heroes like uh, Naga Sign, where you can one-shot all the illusions that he summons. I always like to see it being played. Primal Beast, I thought I would have Radiant seen more of in the qualifiers. Maybe it's just the games that we got together that I haven't seen the Primal Beast being picked up as much. But it is definitely a scary one going forward. Enchantress should be the Kuro hero coming in. And then we have the Magnus for Ghost. Yeah, I mean, I, why would you change anything about that lane? Magnus can solo kill the enemy. Yeah. <laughs> Safe lane duo anyway. <laughs> yeah, that's what the Ghost has been doing in the first game. Uh, getting this Five early Orchid, controlling remaining. both Faceless Void and Ember Spirit. Uh, but yeah, they would, as, as it looks like, play very fast game. Enchantress with some creeps. Uh, I want to see Hinnany being ready for a six-minute rotation. Both supports from Nygma Galaxy most likely going to be walking towards the mid lane, securing the rune, playing with the catapult timing, and trying to Kill an enemy mid laner, kill the tower as well. So, want to see heroes that can rotate. Where's that puck? Give me that puck, unless they want to play Primal Beast on a mid lane, which I think maybe they even should, just to give them solo experience, because the hero doesn't have that many bad matchups on the mid lane. Yeah. Even if you do, like, even if you do, you Templar can creep skip assessment. easily. Uh, drag the creep wave and uh, create a new lane for yourself. We've seen Stupid Cat trying to do the same thing as an Ember Spirit because things are not going too well for him. Uh, maybe on a Primal Beast. I mean, on Primal Beast, but most definitely much Radiant more efficient. Tusker. Okay, Tusk plus TA. That might be actually the safe lane duo that they'd go for. TA still has flex potential, of course. Um, Enigma Galaxy. Don't have last pick, so the TA will be a little bit of a question mark remaining. where it will be played. Same with the Primal Beast until the very end. Five and Enigma Galaxy remaining. has to keep that in mind at all times. Obviously, when you see a TA, and it would be a mid-TA, there's a bunch of heroes that would completely dominate the hero. Um, anything dot-related most of the time. Hell, even the Dazzle mid was the thing uh, against the TA a, a while back. Now that Dazzle has been nerfed again, it... It vanished. I haven't seen the Dazzle any, any it's, time soon. It's still a strong hero. I think people are underestimating what this hero can do. Uh, some of the aspects of the hero have been nerfed, but uh, if you get to your item timings, it's still a very strong hero. Uh, it's going to be Alchemist to, to provide him with some armor with his level 10 talent if necessary. Also, a hero that flash farms has Magnus behind them. We've seen how many camps are a man stacked in the previous game. Uh, I'm expecting nothing less in this one for both Alchemist and Magnus. Ancient Apparition Band. They... Like, the good thing about Nygma's draft is 
both Vengeful Spirit and Enchantress can easily rotate by time. They can play with Magnus, so Dire your Alchemist Team comes back. online. Wind Ranger will be removed by Hinani. Yeah, the Wind Ranger was pretty annoying to deal with, uh, though I wouldn't expect it to be another Kuro pick, considering the Enchantress is already in the field, and I doubt that they're going to flex the, the two supports that they have picked. Last game, they also first phase picked the two supports remaining. pretty much um yeah with the alchemist pickup radiance you've already got bad. pretty much the beefy boy builds radiance terrible for ta to deal with uh once he has that done hard to kill as well in this case I, they have a couple of nice control spells with of course the tusk walrus punch and the primal beast ulti but it's not Ten the best control remaining. to keep these enigma galaxy heroes in check Five seconds remaining. They have a decent amount of stuns. They have a lot of tower damage. It's just uh, how the lanes are going to go. Radiant I mean, that's that's going to be the team. biggest part. Ember Spirit. Okay, Shamil Ember mid. Uh, pretty okay against TA. If that's a mid TA. They could also just go for, uh, let's see, Huskar. Huskar last big mid, go. We said it. You, you got a cheese. At this point, you got a cheese. Remaining. You know, bring Meepo. It's a good Meepo That's game. Banned. It's first, um, first five banned. Oh, it's remaining. banned? Okay, never mind then. Yeah, uh, Enigma. Enigma are mean. They, they don't want to give us any fun heroes. Huskar, you know you want to. Such a good Huskar game as well. Mainly because Ember can't do anything against you. In lane, and then hopefully the TA will be able to get some space once the supports are moved away from the uh, off lane. They have 50 seconds to think of something that's going to beat Ember in the mid lane, or if they want to run the other safe lane. I think you put the Templar Assassin in a safe lane. And... Okay, so that's Primal, oh. primal mid, okay. Brewmaster off lane with Pugna. And Tusk with Temper Assassin. I mean, Brewmaster Pugna is also a pretty good lane. Brewmaster doesn't have to go for the... Uh, uh, his first spell, I completely blanked out on what it's called. Uh, he just has to go for Cinder Brew stacks and then throw it on his opponent's Pugna can activate it. And uh, does a surprisingly uh, a lot of damage. Yeah, it's, a, it's a strong lane. Uh... I feel like anything with Pagna because I've been watching a lot of saves Pagna lately and he he just right clicks you. He has a good <laughs> base attack time, great range, uh, speediest hero in Dota. And then you, like, you can't really do much against it uh, if you're playing into melee heroes. So that's going to be a lot of harassment, uh, blood grenade as well. I could see them potentially, because Mad Frog played the best in Hineni in the last game. So I'm going to be closely watching what he's doing, paired up with Brewmaster. I, I could see them getting some kills in this top lane. By top lane, I mean bottom lane. Yeah, I definitely can, uh, think that could be the case. Uh, Alchemist is not necessarily the strongest hero in the laning stage. Enchantress is. So will be if you manage to make sure that the enchantress at least does not have any creeps you should be just fine in that lane depending oh, on of course kuro's no. build but i doubt that he's gonna go for impetus his enchant's also Prepare good against the pugna to get rid of the decrepify uh save tool that they might otherwise have mid should be i mean primal should be just fine it's not going to be that problematic as it was last game their lanes have been fixed to uh i mean Pretty good problematic, degree. problematic for Samail maybe because stupid cast was the one who got first blood. Oh, that's true. Samail got caught. He was like, "I'm a DK, I can't die," and then just randomly gets uh, soloed. Yes, indeed, it was a solo. You, you, whatever you saw was wrong. By stupid cat. Mad Frog is not smoked with the team. Ghost already drawing on a minimap. Knows exactly where they are. I think Mad Frog might have just checked if they had an Observe Ward place. 30 seconds so he stands in tower range and stuff. 
But yeah, no problem so far. Should be a 2 for 2 bounty to rune trade, which Alchemist will be wow. sad. Miracle will then already start reporting his teammates for not getting him three bounty runes at the very least. More money, more problems. Indeed. Not that I begins. know, but yeah, no, I'm hella broke. <laughs> I, I I heard the, I heard the song. <laughs> it it must be a problem for those very rich people with all their Rolexes and stuff. Yeah, where you're gonna store them? What kind of a case you need for it? Uh, I'm like, changing, can I buy it at IKEA? Batteries. That's about it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's see what they can do. Mad Frog plus little one in this bottom lane. Lane to look out for. Miracle, oh. charging a stun. Oh, with the minus armor, it's actually a pretty nice combo because, of course, it is physical damage. The unsafe detoxion. The removing armor is always a, a good plus in combination, but they're actually the ones that take most of the damage. That early harass fight. Top side, Ghost is dropping low. Isla actually gets first blood. And I didn't even realize that they swapped those uh, lanes with the uh, Kuro now being topside and RMN being bottom okay Kuro has Agadim Scepter queued up already in his quick buy getting close to it needs a uh, 4100 gold how did stupid cat take this much damage uh I guess he got chained underneath the tower or got to yeah. aggroed. Oof. Yeah, no, uh, Samil didn't have chain yet. Uh, speaking of which, now he does. Primal Beast. Needs that bottle. Not going to get it anytime soon. I mean, he he's the king for a reason. And Armin does die in the bottom lane, so the side lanes are doing pretty well in terms of kills at the very moment for Hinani. And Miracle ready to pump out another stun. Mad Frog staying around the corner because he doesn't want to die. And Saber Concoction still does hurt pretty heavily. He has actually two mangoes and a magic stick. That Miracle really just wants to constantly keep brawling. He wants to keep spamming those stuns. Uh, I mean, this lane is going pretty well for Hinnany. Level 1 in terms of CS, 9 and 1, farming nicely. When they hit level 3, I could also see either Miracle or Vengeful Spirit. Our men dying again. They just got level 3. They're in. Oh, yeah. yeah, they're going for Miracle. The sun gets thrown now. Dawn to the Blue Master. He's going to stay alive. Doesn't take any damage because of the Drunken Brawl at the... Da, 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 to grab a five, but the last right click is going to be enough. And they will walk it off. So they lose Miracle in the process. Brumos is also, like, I really love the change that they made with the uh, third spell. That you do? So cool. I mean, I don't okay. play Brewmaster, but I find <laughs> the idea behind it really cool. Yeah, I enjoy when pros play it, but it's a lot of work. It's a lot of clicking. It feels like... You know, playing Morphling is always, you know, you have to be focused 100% of the time. How are you going to shift? Uh, what's your HP? What are you playing against? Sim pretty similar with Drunken Brawler because you have to constantly... I mean, you, you don't have to, but, uh, you know, at a certain level, you got to play the hero. Got to use your abilities. Okay. Here we go, Miracle with the sun on the one. I was actually expecting with this change and the fact that it's a universal hero that back in the day... Ramsey's played it as a safe lane a couple of times. And I was really hoping that someone would do that again, where they would just use the fact that uh, he's got a built-in crit Radiant with the fire brawler, and he's got, like, he's universal now. That someone would make something happen from the, with the hero. <laughs> but you still, you were playing it with Radiance from the off lane, so basically another carry, blood grenade top. Isla dropping very low. They do have the clap creep as well. Tomato. Hell, tomato clapper. And Isla force back underneath the tower. It does have a healing lotus, so they do have to be a bit wary of uh, him being be able to use it. Drag back the clap skewer. His refraction get re removed again. He does 
Get himself out of dodge for now. Unfazed in response, though. Those claps, claps, claps are just nasty, and they will find the kill. Ghost gets his first kill of the game. Oh, easy clap. They needed the one game, you know, to get the keyboard and mouse going, because uh, right now it's only 1k gold lead for Enigma Galaxy. Bottom lane doing uh, well, mid, mid lane. <laughs> Mid is, uh, you know, uh, that's not what you would expect. Stupid Samel. God is uh, second from the bottom in terms of net worth. <laughs> he had the lowest net worth in the first game when game ended. Uh, I mean, to be fair, he went for shard um, on the Ember. That one was weird. Level 6 against level 4, not much he can do. He shows up to a lane, will probably die. Top side, it's a little bit of a chase in, forces Ghost to go for the skewer backwards. Little one's actually very decently farmed on the Brewmaster. Once he hits level 6, he's got that solo kill potential. Going for the Hand of Midas, scaling. Radiance, of course, queued up for Miracle. Unsurprising. Alchemist going for Radiance, that's on her. I I'm at least happy that I don't get to see any Battle Fury Alchemist anymore. I hate that. Oh, that was... Uh... Really rough time <laughs> to play with Alchemist in the team. I don't know. Uh, the good thing is that Grill Creed is uh, like the change now. It's uh, in its abilities. Yeah, so that that's really good. Like no one talks about corrosive weaponry. Mean, it's like wow, this. You it's know, actually it's something. It's actually really good in late game when you go like core v core. It's actually very strong. It is. It is. You just don't see it like do anything early on because no one gets this mid lane. So the cat did die, so male still chasing another chains. That should be the kill. Yeah, so male dominating mid forces the TP. That makes uh, the little one panda play solo bottom so that he dies. So Top lane, snowball underneath the tower. That, that's about it. Then the tower focuses them. There are no creeps nearby and it gets a bit too dangerous to continue. That tier one is going to drop soon enough. There's even uh, a Satyr Mind Stealer at the ready. Under and Super Cat. He doesn't even. Dyer's wait. I was, uh, I was yeah. thinking maybe he gets the experience from it, but no, the supports are still less uh, experienced than him. They also stole in their XP rune. And now the real trouble starts. Laning stage Dyer's pretty much over. Has fallen. So Mail takes the mid tower, going for Mage Slayer. As his first item, this is the most broken item on Ember Spirit. It's gotcha. like applying its AOE, overtime damage, stopping the Blink Dagger for 9 seconds, Miracle, pops that ulti. Yeah, and he's actually going to turn it on to Super Cat instead. Nice to Crepify to make sure that he doesn't get the unsafe concoction damage in, but... Okay, turns his attention towards Mad Frog now. Iron Man dropping very low. Just outranges it. Stun comes out. Second stun. Kill for Miracle. And Samil somewhere else on the... Oh, actually, he went deep dive underneath the tower to kill off Lil One. He was also there somehow. And Stupid Cat. Yeah, there's a three-level gap between the two. Kuro was not joking when he queued up that Agatha Scepter has point booster as his first item. Male battling it out. Samil takes a lot of damage. Doesn't have. Oh, he's got the regen rune, but. He'll uh, cancel good the chase. Good luck. Now Stupid Cat's in trouble. He's gonna get jumped on by Samil. He's Samil. gonna kill them all. Yeah. <laughs> Kuro comes in from the side as well. You're actually right. Kuro is going for the Aghanim Scepter. Huh. I guess more hopefully, pushing power. Hopefully, we get to see it. I was thinking like, oh, maybe they have... No, they don't have any other creeps in this game. There's nothing. It's just literally just... Ah, uh, okay. The chosen target. Can, have... can it be buildings? Probably not, right? No. Oh, another kill. Because if it was buildings, then maybe I can see that Agam Scepter be really nice and like super cheesy backdoor way. The cat, deep and ghost. Level five on that primal beast. Not having a good time. Radiant structures are fortified. Dyer's middle tower. Oh, there's no way for enchanters to get ancients anymore. 
Sad. Um, Mad Miracle Rock. bottom. In trouble. Dropping down. Super Cat going in onto Samil. Bottom, as you mentioned. Miracle is having a fight there as well. Super Cat gets killed. Miracle is going to stay alive. RP pump fake by a ghost. Screw underneath the tower. The Brewmaster takes a lot of damage. Are they going to be able to keep him alive? In comes Isla. He's trying to get the right glitch in onto Miracle, but the AoE stun holds him at bay for a little bit longer. The is there going to be enough control? Miracle juking his way through the trees. And Isla is now going to have to walk the opposite direction. While Armin gets a killing spree going on. Killing off Lil One. Isla, no Mel available anymore. Gets stunned up. Ghost needs to get rid of the refraction charges. And then he does get it done. Skewer up on top. The Templar Assassin with the Imparo buff will be smacked down. And a 9k lead in 10 minutes time. While all this was happening, you see Ember Spirit taking the mid tower, going for Deso. They want to amplify damage as much as possible, finish this game so they can chill until they know their opponent in their next series, which is probably Winter Bear. But you know, you never know. Full alert. Winter Bear did take game number one against, Adon uh, against Adonis, and they are going for the high ground. And Samil just wants to get the push going. Same with Kuro. Uh, while uh, Miracle's like, I want my radiance. I, I ain't gonna be like, oh yeah, let's let's I push. No, I want to farm. I want to get big. Play the late game. Ghost is getting closer towards his orchid. Samil's just pushing tier three towers with only Kuro as his backup. There was one downside of Ember Spirit always, you couldn't push towers. Like, even if you were ahead, you couldn't end the game, especially when he was introduced into Dota. Stupid Cat is level 6 now. Well, with Orb of Corrosion now, and the Blightstone, you know. Yeah, he, he's... <laughs> he's got the double push, push power. <laughs> Oh, skewer, ghost, three man RP. One of them is the uh, Bruce split coming in. They find at least, well, they is find it? the entire Bruce split. And so like this, there we go. Samil gets a triple kill. Uh, he is 13 0 1 in 12 minutes. That's more than a kill per minute on the Ember Spirit. <laughs> and they're tipping Miracle because Miracle just showed up. Uh, he's not really doing much. The rest of the team playing. And as you said, he's playing Alchemist, wants to farm up. Get a couple of items, farm that radiance while the rest of the team wants to end the game. Kuro, 900 gold away from that Aghanim Scepter. Dyer's this will be the first time I will see the Aghanim Scepter in a pub or in a pro game. I've never seen the item being picked radiance up yet. Tower is under attack. More enchant creeps. Stupid cat, level 6. He has his pulverize available right now. And loses half his HP to one searing chain slider fist inside the acid spray. Ouch. <laughs> Going in onto Miracle. Charge forward. Though, nice swap by Armand. Miracle, though, he is dropping low. Lil One will be able to get the kill. Stupid Cat has dropped. Tamil's actually on the run right now. Chased by Isla. Who does not like Samil because that nasty Mage Slayer is getting rid of the refraction charges the entire time. Uh -oh. And Isla now surrounded by enemies. Kuro walking back in. Mad Frog sacrificing his own HP to keep Isla alive. And Isla is actually going to be able to get out. Radiance online for Alchemist. Samil back to pushing. Miracle can now start farming. Fact. That ag. Hero. Get him the last hit. Mage Slayer makes TA really crap. <laughs> Mage Slayer makes everybody crap. Yeah, this is. That item's definitely gonna get a couple of nerfs. Slide fist. They're grouping up for those slides with M Power, which is maxed out. Mage Slayer, Orb of Corrosion, Overtime Damage, swap in. RP immediately. RP comes out, drag back underneath, and they will find the kills to secure it, which will also be the Aghanim Scepter to be delivered soon enough onto the Enchant if he sends it out. The fight continues. Isla dropping low, and focusing the melee racks. Isla gets back, the Bruce Split is about to end. Bugna, Mad Frog. 
Can't really do much in this situation. And no, I won't even get to see the Aghanim Scepter on Kuro because they GG out. Oh, just wait a little bit longer. <laughs> uh, it's being delivered. Go to demo mode right now and test it out. The happy tree friends or whatever it's called, little friends. Uh, pretty cool one. It's uh, an expensive one, but yeah. Hinani, they fell down in uh, this 14-minute battle. Slaughter. It's what it, it battle team shows that there were two sides, and in this case, Hinani had nothing to say. Enigma Galaxy ran over them like a dump truck. And, uh, they, yeah, I mean, 14 minutes, 16 kills for Samil. That says enough. The king in mid outfarms his own alchemist. Who died three times, by the way. Pfft, miracle. Yeah, he, he was popping off. Uh, stupid cat. Not the, not his best performance. Had a bit of an issues here laning against Sumail. But uh, yeah, that also means that Nygma Galaxy will go to lower bracket semifinal. And will most likely meet Winter Bear one more time. This could be a very interesting series. Because in the upper bracket finals, we have Team Falcons against PSG Quest. And uh, that's... Uh, you know, what everyone expected. And now we need to figure out uh, who Nygma Galaxy is going to be playing. Maybe Adonis could make some upsets against Winter Bear. Because Winter Bear, they looked really strong. Uh, seriously, PSG quest. Uh, they could have won that 2-0. Just needed to, to like have slightly better execution. But uh, we'll have to see. That was very close uh, in that previous series. This one, not so much. Very one-sided affair. And uh, even from the very beginning, Nygma Galaxy, was their goal was just finish this game out as soon as possible. They built exactly for that reason uh, their items, and they shut it down. There's uh, no denying it. Great job by Nygma Galaxy. Uh, Hinnany, no, we'll see you in the next qualifiers, hopefully. Uh, stay in there. And uh, nonetheless, uh, that was it for us for now. We'll be back in three hours. Yeah, almost three hours. Two hours and 42 minutes-ish. We'll be back for the next series, which will be Nygma Galaxy versus, as he mentioned, probably Winter Bear, but we'll see in a bit. Have a wonderful evening, ladies and gents. We'll be back later in the day. Goodbye.
That you miss, mine draws a blank. I wanna go back, back to the early days when life was an escape. Now I just wait for better days. I lost myself in your reality. I lost myself.
That you miss, mine draws a blank. I wanna go back, back to the early days when life was an escape. Now I just wait for better days. I lost myself in your reality. I lost myself.
Person that you miss, mind draws a blank. I wanna go back, back to the early days when life was an escape. Now I just wait for better days. I lost myself in your reality. I lost myself.
Person that you miss, mind draws a blank. I wanna go back, back to the early days when life was an escape. Now I just wait for better days. I lost myself in your reality. I lost myself.
That you miss, mind draws a blank. I wanna go back, back to the early days when life was an escape. Now I just wait for better days. I lost myself in your reality. I lost myself.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Indeed, we are here for the last day. For us, at least, in the MENA region, it will be a beauty. Because, of course, we're going to continue with what we saw previously. Winter Bear looked absolutely phenomenal, Lacoste. And Enigma Galaxy, they just made it quick work of their opponents. Now they're going to take a challenge against each other. Yeah, this is not going to be an easy one. Enigma Galaxy did lose to Winter Bear when they last met at the uh, Vedboom Dacha Dubai Mena close qualifiers. So, yeah, they definitely know each other. And, uh, you know, when you, if you're just, like, tuning in, you're like, who the hell are these Winter Bear guys? They're pretty damn good. Um, Mikey, who played for Enigma Galaxy, you know, so he knows uh, how they think uh, we'll have some inside info for his own team. Kachal, very skilled offlaner. Uh, we saw him shine in the previous series that he played earlier today. He was popping off all over the place, uh, playing against the PSG Quest when he was playing his Visage, he was playing his Tidehunter. And uh, also Darkseer, he's the one who's kind of carrying the team from the offlane, and GZ as well. I think uh, this guy is really, really good on position 4, even though in the games when they're losing, he tends to look good which is pretty impressive. Yeah, Jeezy's been uh, a pretty good perform. Honestly, the team looked great together. Their uh, coordination uh, seems to be uh, spot on, which is impressive considering you have three players from Iran and two players from Turkey. Uh, so they, you know, it's not all perfectly in sync in that regard, but nonetheless, they have been uh, on point with their rotations and their game plan. You, you, they know the lanes are going bad. They make massive stacks for their cores. Uh, so that they can try and recover. They defend them as well. Uh, we even had that moment um, previously where it, I, I think they counted the runes when the double damage would come up, something uh, like stuff like that, where it was like very impressive uh, that they keep track of every little thing. But is that going to be enough to beat Nigma Galaxy, a team that, of course, has had uh, a rough couple of years, I would say, considering the uh, roster potential that they've always had uh, they got knocked out of bed boom dacha which they definitely did not like uh, ha having to happen and now they have to go through the lower bracket because mena only has one qualifying slot towards the tournament so they have to try their very very best right here right now to make it forward and uh face up against Actually, the other match is still busy on, so I don't even know which team, but you're probably going to have to face both of those teams, uh, the Falcons yeah. and uh, PSG Quest, to uh, make it towards uh, the Dream League tournament anyway. So uh, without further ado, we'll just jump into the draft right now and see if there's any fun heroes picked or banned. So potentially, you know, 11 games coming up in the next two days that they need to win. Enigma Galaxy will respond after seeing Vengeful Spirit with Arc Warden. Our Vengeful Spirit, you know, usually is, quote unquote, a counter in uh, one sense to Arc Warden. We can swap him out of the bubble, focus him down, find the right one, and just kill it. But Arc Warden, this has always been... Miracle's hero. Uh, this hero, remaining. you know, I'm still, still getting some flashbacks when you mentioned Arc Warden. Enigma Galaxy playing against Radiant Alliance and him back. solo defending the throne, putting in bubble, like the perfect usage of it. And that they managed to win that game. This, this is like one of the craziest games in Dota. We had a lot of crazy games in the span of the last 20 years, if you count Dota 1 and Dota 2. But uh, this one, you know, had a little something oh, special to it. This is basically, remaining. you know, one of those... Uh, Navi against Alliance. There's always Five Alliance involved in some, <laughs> in some of these crazy games with the uh, fountain hooks with Chen uh, and uh, so on. But uh, yeah, Arc Warden, we've seen different builds on the hero. And the one that I really like is the new Bloodthorn, Bloodthorn plus Manta, because you create so many illusions and then Bloodthorn procs, getting all that extra damage. Uh, Bloodthorn does feel slightly OP on certain heroes. Anything that has like any kind of massive... Uh, Massive units, um, Broodmother, uh, Wind Ranger who has a lot of attack speed with her ulti, and then you just die. Arcwarden is also that one who provides you with control. One hero that I 
really noticed that Nigma Galaxy doesn't like to play into. They probably have bad experience playing in scrims. That's Meepo. Yeah, they they just remove the Meepo. Ten it is uh, obnoxious, I guess. Uh, and that's just probably the most important thing. It counts for so many different heroes. You have to build an entire draft around countering Meepo. So might as well just remove it and get rid of it all together. Uh, yeah, the, when you talked about, of course, uh, Miracle Arc Warden, the one moment that sprang to mind was uh, one-shotting Roshan. Um, that that clip will remaining. forever be stuck in my <laughs> mind. I, I remember watching that match live and I was like, Five oh my god, remaining. that I okay, that, I did not even know that that was possible, but that was a, a pretty nutty one. It's, you know, Miracle and also uh, artesi has been playing Arc Warden again. Maybe the hero, uh, the, the only ones that I've seen try out the hero a little bit as of late. Uh, so that's uh, definitely an interesting prospect. Uh, potentially it is one of the strongest heroes and hardest heroes to deal with. Uh, still don't necessarily know how all the spells work with, you know, you've got the two different spells that they have when the arc warden double does other stuff i always confuse whatever it ten does exactly remaining. because i don't touch the hero with a 10 foot pole but it definitely has some <laughs> uh, interesting remaining. capabilities i'm happy that they at least removed the fact that i think there was uh, one like the arc warden double bubble had like a gigantic buff where you did damage on targets uh, on any for anyone that was inside the bubble it was like a weird mechanic and then you had like 17 illusions and you one yeah, shot stuff that that's luckily <laughs> gone it's definitely one of the more complicated seconds, more complex remaining. dota heroes and winter bear will pick up anti mage so Five they do have remaining. heroes who can play dota early on which is exact which is exactly what you need when you have anti mage in your team so tiny vengeful spirit uh, these heroes can move across the map uh, and try to buy time, but uh, this is a very early anti-mage pick. Yeah, uh, I mean, it is a hero that gets on top of Arc Warden. Uh, you also have Defenge, so you have multiple plus the tiny. They're really going in on just dive on the Arc Warden and nuke him down so that that's not a too big Ten of a problem. The downside of playing against Arc Warden is also uh, split push. He's going to get bots, uh, Glyph near and stuff, remaining. so you're going to have to constantly be everywhere. Well, Anti-Mage is really good to, against split pushing, but also really good at doing it himself, trying to drag enemies away from the area. I think that's probably a very important factor why they chose the anti mage in this case because it's just elusive and hard to control. But it's still like very early on. Um, even though they don't have the most, like they don't have any silences, nothing that AM is afraid of. But uh, I would like to see you know something from the mid lane that AM doesn't like to play into. Most likely, this is gonna be. Ghost playing Magnus because he seems to be enjoying playing the hero. Played it already two times in the last series that Nigma Galaxy played. Um, I'm fine with some like Ember Spirit. I'm fine with uh, maybe even Puck, uh, even though there is Tiny. Some sometimes you know can be tricky, but if it's a position for Tiny, you know you can get away Radiant with it. Team but uh, we'll see for now. It's gonna be Triant keeping things open. Uh, they do have last pick. So Magnus could still go mid and they can pick a different offlaner if they want to go with something that can ruin anti-mage in the lane. There's always Slaughter, there's always Legion Commander, these heroes who don't require Ten mana to put remain. pressure onto anti-mage could be pretty good. And looking at the Five sustain from Nigma Galaxy, Trian Protector, Enchantress, uh, these are very strong position 4 and 5 who can stabilize pretty much any lane. You put Trian Protector with Arc Warden in the safe lane, I don't think you lose that lane. Maybe I'm slightly biased because I love to play with Trin Protector and I've seen how good it is. Uh, it's very difficult to munch through all this tankiness. He gets level two. He's also one of the heroes that can easily first blood you with just blood grenade, has 90 damage. So pretty difficult to deal with this hero. Yeah, there's a, a couple of, like Nigma Galaxy's two supports and Radiant really one back. of the strongest laning dominating supports. Are, it's going to be a struggle to try and beat them. Winter Bear, pick up the Visage again. It was... It didn't get exactly what it wanted to do off in the series that they played previously. Uh, they got pretty close against the PSG quest, but Dia it was... Uh, 
The visage wasn't really the impact I expected it to have normally when I see a visage. It's just a rather tanky aura builder at this stage. Radiant yeah, they were also playing it into Trian Protector plus one, and they did Visage plus Tiny. So Visage paired up with Tiny, it gives you stun. It gives you someone who can dish it, amount some like serious amount of damage relatively quickly. And then Visage Soul Assumption is going to be used really well. But you want to pair him up with any kind of stunner, some Five Tusk, some Earth Spirit. Uh, tiny works out really well. Uh, they do have tower damage, you know, there is uh, Visage who buys into Vlad's, Anti-Mage later on will get Manta style his third item so he can start split pushing a little bit because catch on Enigma Galaxy is relatively limited. Yeah, they, they have enough push. Uh, both sides have a pretty A-OK -okay push. Uh, you also have the defensive capabilities of Tiny Swap, uh, Toss, uh, Vengeful Swap, to cast them if they push on towards your high ground. Arc Warden obviously bubble. Uh, Magnus has the skewer. Honestly, high ground pushing is one of the scariest things to do between both these teams. It's just there's so many ways to catch you off guard and drag you back. Trian can even heal the tower uh, all the way through. And bubble. Yeah. And Trian protector. Good luck. And then you're trying to hit the tower. You get skewered back. It's gonna be very difficult, as you mentioned. Uh, there is that profit Radiant potentially for Winter Bear to be picked up pick. from the mid lane. Uh, this also works, but uh, then you just put Magnus on the off lane and uh, choose a different uh, mid laner. Okay, so they pick up the Huskar and they don't know what Samil is playing yet. Yeah, that's a bit of a problem. That's a very risky move. Five Oscar has remaining. like a bunch of heroes that he hates playing against. Yeah, I would be fine with this if they had last pick and then they saw the matchup. It's like some melee hero like Ember Spirit. Then you get Huskard. But uh, yeah, there's plenty of heroes left in the pool that work well against Huskar. Uh, heroes that can outrange him. Uh, there's like Lena Razor, even though it's... Uh, like you might not necessarily get the kill. You, if you're not getting pressured by Huskar, if and if you're getting the farm, I think that's completely fine. That's yeah, just really what Smil wants to play. He's gonna go Lina out range, as you mentioned. It is a ton of physical and magic damage depending on the build that you go. Uh, Huskar doesn't like playing against Lina. It is a bit problematic. It's not the worst matchup possible for Huskar, but it definitely gets pretty close to one of the uh, the worst ones. Oof, yeah, it's, it's definitely up there. So they try to cheese it a bit in the first game, Anti-Mage and Huskar. I don't know if I like it too much. These two heroes can like easily be countered. Uh, I want to see some rotation happening for Mikey. Uh, this is also Lina, who has backup of Enchantress, Treant Protector. We've seen that Nigma Galaxy, they love to play around six minute mark with both supports uh, to secure the tower, get some kills, secure the rune for Sumail, and then leaving Ghost plus Miracle alone in the side lanes. You will also have Empower to farm with, so there's a, there's a lot of ways to amplify damage on this Lina. Uh, talk about the bubble as well, so... Little worried for Winter Bears, but uh, if this game goes like super late, uh, they could potentially take it. It's just a question: Will they be able to do it? Uh, from what I've seen, Winter Bears they kind of like one thing that I didn't like watching them play, covering some of their games, is that their safe lane uh, loses the laning stage real bad sometimes. So I want to see them stepping up and. Uh, being able to do good. Magic Again, it's Anti-Mage plus Vengeful Spirit, not the, the strongest lane in the universe. You're going to be playing against Enchantress and uh, Magnus, most likely. We've seen that Ghost really feels comfortable playing this Magnus, uh, going for the pretty much same item build every single time. Double Raid Band, he starts to put some pressure on the enemy carry, but uh, now he's not going to have enough mana to do so. So that's a bit of a plus for Winter Bear that... Uh, He's not going to be able to do what he wants to do. 
Yeah, the landing stage, I think, was the, the big problem. When it comes to, like, their rotations around the map and uh, the, the macro later in the game, I think Winterbear have a really good idea yes. in their game plan. Uh, like, they move together they, uh, the, for objectives all the time. Uh, that's what, something I really like, but, of course, the landing stage, it t tends to be where individual skill is a bit more dominant and uh we'll see if they'll be able to get it done obviously mikey is a really good mid laner but that uh safe lane has been struggling today earlier and in this exact same lane as well the visage plus tiny did struggle earlier today as well granted it wasn't against an arc warden but the tree and protector is pretty nasty to handle for a tiny he doesn't really have like Tiny is slow, everything about Tiny is slow, and Trian can just keep badgering him with his insane attack damage. We might see a battle here. Five heroes from Enigma Galaxy. The only one who's missing is Mikey. Kachal. They are going all the way around. GZ is a bit too far underneath the tower. Reality spotted out. He's going to be forced to level blink. Yes, hit by got him. Say. They might actually still kill him off. Regardless, underneath the tower, Miracle gets first blood. What a very strange position to take a fight. And there's going to be a kill as a counter. Samil being slowed down. This is the power of a Visage coming oh, in. Samil's dead. He's got another soul assumption. And they find two kills for the price of one. I mean, this is uh, this is okay. If you're a miracle, you're like, okay, I got the first blood. I'm fine with that. Uh, you want to focus on your own lane, but uh, yeah, the, the the thing is that Kachal used all of his mana. Soul assumption very costly in terms of mana, 110, and he used three of those, so no mana whatsoever. Let's see what he's bringing. Some calling blade for CSing to cut down the trees as well, and uh, a little bit of extra mana. Yeah, also Anti-Mage is forced to level Blink level 1, which he really doesn't want because he wants to get that early harass in to drain the mana away from his opponents. So that's a little bit sad for him. But, all things considered, could have been a worse start. Definitely a bit more of a recovery going on. Mikey towards mid, up against Mill. Yeah, Lina's attack range is, uh, I mean, slightly less than Techies. But that does kind of tells you everything. <laughs> Yeah, he's not going to have that good of a time in a mid lane. This new Dyer's tech current. build on That's Lina, where you're maxing out Fiery Soul, and like you have 0, 1, 2 build, and you just keep applying Light Strike Array onto creeps, keeping the max Fiery Soul stacks, and just keep right-clicking him down. It's not fun. Huskar hates physical damage. He's all about that magic damage with his nice little berserker's blood. And Samil will most likely go for the not that build. At least for the time being. I it wouldn't surprise me if he just goes full or right click this game. Um, magic damage builds also a little bit scary against anti mage Kura actually dropping low to Stoic. And he walks a bit too close to the Vengeful Spirit. A good kill. Ghost keeping the distance. Thinking what he wants to get on level 2, whether he needs Empower or whether that needs to be Skewer, because his mana will start to get burned now that Antimage got level 2 and has that mana break. And speaking of Lina's items, uh, yeah, I think uh, you don't want to go any magical route, uh, increasing your mana pool or anything. Gleipnir, Maelstrom, this type of a build uh, just feels way too good at the moment. Uh, might be even. Even though it's like not the greatest item right now, I know you don't like it, but uh, Silver Edge against these heroes to be able to break them, Visage, Huskar, Anti-Mage, you might be able to pick it up uh, later down the line. Yeah, uh, the guy is definitely uh, one of the more flexible heroes in that oh. regard. Miracle, toss back possibility. No, he actually is not level 3 yet on GZ. The right ones are there. Miracle is going to die. Kachal, in response, should fall to RMN, but they kill Miracle first. And RMN actually needs to kind of make sure not too many creeps die in the meantime. So not a bad trade. Missing gold. Poor Winterbear. Oh, he's Armin. going in. Almost dead. 
GC actually went for two points in Avalanche. And it's about to die when the Miracle TP coming through, GC. Kachal tried to soak up that last little Spark Wraith. That's a way too greedy. Uh, you're trying to play like very aggressive onto Trin Protector. Your attack speed is non-existent on Tiny, so that means you're going to be getting one hit during that Avalanche. He has extra armor, extra regeneration under tower, but... Uh, Okay, he tried something. Uh, to go back to your point about two points in Avalanche, I've, I've seen that because it's not like mana dependent if you go 1-1-1. One, one, one. Same goes for Tusk, you want to have all your abilities, but uh, sometimes you want to put just the second point in your Avalanche or second point in Tag Team. I was thinking he just would go for it because uh, the previous fight onto Miracle, having the Tusk back onto the Vistage might have been uh, the kill secure, but yeah. It makes sense. The hero is uh, pretty poor in terms of uh, his mana capabilities. You always have to buy items to try and circumvent that, which is not fun. Mike is actually doing a pretty good job in mid, but uh, bottom lane, will they get the kill onto Ghost? This would be huge because Reality is struggling in that lane. They do manage to get the kill, and Ghost drops. Look at the last hits of Ghost compared to Reality, though. That is a, a painful one for the anti-mage. Trading some kills for cs i think enigma galaxy is fine with that anti-mage will be going for power treads into cornucopia kind of hard to just straight go for cornucopia but it, it requires uh, that instead of ring of health i've also seen anti-mages picking up a like, casual ring of health they know that they can't farm it uh, just to have that extra hp region and they will turn that later into the display Mikey going for the easy armor to pick up. Obviously, uh, Roshan capabilities open up quickly once you get that item secured. And we, uh, it, obviously, as well, the outplay potential of the armor is pretty big. Centaur Stomp coming on in that bottom lane. Goes to us so much damage with very little effort. Reality. Chased down by that Centaur Conqueror. The entire time, now Stoic is dropping low. There is a stomp possibility. Skira comes knee underneath, and Ghost will be able to get the kill. TP in for Mikey, and he's going to turn his attention onto this Magnus, who thought that he was invincible. Walks away, trying to give away that kill to Reality, but the tower scoops it up instead. A good rotation for Mikey, even Kuro. though he doesn't have a point in life break. He still managed to get the kill there. Kuro's level 3. Mikey will run him down with Boots of Speed and just straight up kill him. Meanwhile, in the top lane... Oh, it was actually mid. It's a male. Getting a kill with the help of RMN. And will secure himself a rune. So that's gonna be arcane rune for him. Stoic is now jungle, uh, laning mid while Mikey is jungling. Considering Mikey is playing close to bottom, you do always have to be a bit careful. Uh, he showed pretty aggressive movements for a uh, mid lane Huskar in the early game. Too afraid to go mid. To get bursted by Lina. So right now what he's waiting for is Armlet and then he can try to go and maybe go back to mid lane. GG. GG in trouble. Spark rate spam. In comes Stoic. Stoic is level 5 by the way. Has a lot of last hits. And is looking to find a kill there, but unfortunately will not be able to reach him. Doesn't have boots just yet. But yeah, uh, this Vengeful Spirit's got a bit of the farm that his team was missing. Speaking of which, Reality Bottom Lane left completely alone. Has nothing he can do. Stoic has almost the same amount of farm as his safe laner. So that's... Uh... That's a bit of a bummer for them. They will need to work Radiant's on that. Anti-Mage, not a hero that can also easily come back into the game, can't clear the stack, so they will need to relieve some pressure. Now it's Nygma Galaxy that's struggling with lag issues. Previously, it was uh, Winter Bear the entire time that had some problems. It's always one team. It's swapping 50-50. <laughs> 50-50. Ah, I missed the 50-50. It was always entertaining games, at the very least. <laughs> yeah, maybe he makes a comeback. There's a lot of players from China who made comeback. Uh, you know, some European players as well. We might see Eternal Envy as well make a comeback. I think he's just going to be chilling for now. 
I mean, obviously, if there's an opportunity, if they're like, oh, let's recreate Cloud9 for the 17th time, he's going to be, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll captain it. I'll, I'll be there. But uh don't think Cloud9 is coming back. I actually, yeah, the rumors were always saying that, like, Mouse was going to join Dota, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, my, Mouse only joins before TI. Yeah. They're, they're like, oh, that and team that'll do to well. TI? This band, shut it down. Yeah, that's... uh that's a classic one. Mouse does have a pretty good CS2 CS2 team, I like the fact that Heroic has ventured into uh, Dota and obviously Falcons now as well. More orgs joining. Yes. Absolutely. They're always welcome to come. We are very welcoming as a community. Bring Same back Optic. For the new players. Ooh, Optic. It's been a couple of years. Mikey dropping low. Actually, probably bring back Complexity. That was my favorite roster. The double brother lineup. Oh, Miracle top Miracle lane. in trouble. Yep, there's the toss back. Avalanche, there's not anything he can do without any support. Miracle will drop dead, and they do find a big kill. Scared. Mikey, while jungling, has been able to just evenly keep up and farm with Shamil. Like, that's very impressive. It really is. He's also stacking for himself. Vengeful Spirit did also make some of the stacks, but he is uh, level 8, higher level than Sumail at the moment. Stoic is going to spawn bottom side. Stoic in a bit of trouble. Avalanche might keep him alive. And Arman's actually going in for the chase with Mikey walking that direction. Gotta care a bit. Sumail TPs through. Has bots already. And now a haste room bottled up as well. Antimage did lose his tower in the bottom lane. Reality, this really hurts. Three points in Empower. Ghost wanted to fake pump it. He's not going to have any mana anyway. Maybe he could have used it. <laughs> yeah, the uh, it's actually not that bad that the tower dies in the bottom for Antimage. I think it's favorable because the tower was really far. Like, the tier to two tower is a lot safer than the tier one tower. And right now... It's closer to creeps as well. I actually think that this is for the better for his farming frenzy. The tier one tower, you know it's going to get there. Yeah, getting uh, extra region, extra armor, farming underneath this tier two tower. And also, they need to be missing for a long time. Oh, okay, so easy. Mill going in for Jeezy. There's the toss up. RMN dropping low, taken down. Ghost trying to get the RP. Doesn't actually have the mana for RP. Mikey is in trouble. Will die. Couldn't get the armlet toggle going. And the rest of them are going to try and disengage. Those little birdies might be left behind. Or, nope. They will be able to fly back to safety. So, a one for one trade. Unfortunately, they did lose Mikey in the process. Yeah, Dragon Slave damage over time. This Radiance has been newest addition to the spell. It's been here for like six months or so. But, uh, yeah, so you can't toggle. It actually procs, and uh, look at the item that he's going for, Mage Slayer. Oh, I'm liking it. Yeah, it's uh, definitely a good one against uh, Arc Warden, who is primarily just a bunch of magic damage at this point from his spells. Even the uh, the Lina, it, it is a uh, max level Dyer's Dragon Slave Lina, but he is looking to still go for a right click build. Yeah, for now he wants to have most magic damage output. It's also good for farming. I mean, Illusion. so it's Fiery Soul, but uh, yeah, eventually he's gonna turn that into Gleipnir, and then Lina becomes just a mean machine. It's a great setup for your LSA. Upside, Miracle, behind the tower, has his Hanamidas already done. Going for his own, probably like near later down the line, so you can have so many annoying routes to deal with. But the Visage Flads going into the drums being done, there's going to be a TP in. This time there should be enough mana on Ghost. Skewering forward, RP onto two, gets the connection as well, and that should be an easy double coming in for Enigma Galaxy. Nicely done by Ghost. He wouldn't be able to get RP on both of them. That pulls one with Shockwave just close enough so that it lands on both of them. And they're very quick with responding. Anti-Mage 
Still far, far away from his Battle Fury. Some alien people bottom wants to start to put some pressure though. onto AM. That's is going to get jumped by Mikey. And the familiar is chasing him after Kuro, so he can't TP out. Get swapped back towards Mikey. Oh, there's a, a... At least I'll get a Lotus for my troubles. Will be taken down. It's actually kind of nice to see. They got that double kill top on the side of uh, Nigma, And then Mikey and Stoic smoke up and immediately through the jungle walk towards top. Where the entire enemy team is lurking. Knowing that they'll probably just take the gateway and disengage as fast as they can. Yeah, you don't expect some of these moves where you just lost two guys and you don't expect the enemy team to come in and try to play aggressively. GZ. There is a double damage available. Might give it to Mikey. By double damage, I mean amplify damage. So now it provides 15% spell amp. Face. It's. Mm. I know there was that change. It just says uh, if you hover over it, the tooltip is just based. Yeah, on yeah, yeah I, I know. It, it's annoying. Oh. <laughs> it's 15% spell damage increased as well. And Mikey, he was thinking about getting Mage Slayer instantly, but decides to pick up Sanj, and there's going to be another smoke. Stoic and Mikey lurking for something. Can they catch the mail? Swap Swap in. It. The... Wow. <laughs> I mean, he's got no stats on any of his items. Mikey leaping forward. You ain't gonna hold him down. The Husker can just leap into victory and get themselves a second kill. Tier 1 tower top is gonna be the target. Ghost is on the run. Has already used his skewer. Birds are coming. The Familiars hold him down. There's gonna be another stun as well. The toss up put Mikey right on top of Ghost and make that a dominating streak for the Huskar. Even if you put him in an unfavorable position, he looks amazing. Look at that net width difference between him and Samil. Yeah, he's uh, taking over the most farm hero in the game at the moment, swapping things up. Now thinking about uh, getting the blink dagger, pull, just like jumping onto target. He can jump into bubble after Arc Warden. And this also gives Anti-Mage uh, a little bit of breathing room. Getting closer to that Battle Fury, it's still going to be like 15 minute Battle Fury considering how everything went. I think it's, a, it's an okay one. Because they're going to outscale it. Sure, Arc Warden is really, really strong late game hero. We've seen what Enchantress can do as well. But uh, if they're playing this correctly, Paskar, uh, like he's going to hit his timing pretty soon. And they did stack Triangle one more time. I'm wondering how many stacks they made so far in this game. Uh, that's kind of the strength of this team. They're constantly enforcing... Uh some extra farm on towards their cores. They, they've done it every single game we've seen. Obviously, at that point, enemies should probably ward the area and play around the enemy's triangle because this is really a, a money-making pit. I think what uh, Winter Bears wants to do is go top. As soon as Roshan goes to the top lane, put the Visage there, set up some vision, and go with Hussar and immediately take it. You want to be... Killing Roshan on Dire's side because it's uh, it's better. It gives cheese. It also gives Agatim Scepter on third one. Yeah, the all around the Radiant one's kind of bad. I mean, Refresh Shard is great and very specific. You've got absolutely massive uh, faces void prono situations, but almost always you want Ags. Yeah. Six thousand gold or like one usage of Refresher. Yeah, I mean, ultra late game, everyone has Ags and give me the refresher, but besides that, nope. Refresh, free Ags is always great. Our man gets the overgrowth off. Stoic went for the swap play. That was in trouble. Tries to stay alive, but will get blown up. I'm The swap, I understand you want to get the quick kill. The problem is you should also tell the rest of your team. Yeah, it seems like they were not on the same page, and uh, there's that move that I mentioned. 1540, immediately going for it. Uh, let's see if our man has a good read on it. Seems like he does. We'll go through the trees, try to place down Observer Ward. Roshan is dropping low. It's always a little bit scary. He doesn't have overgrowth, but the big one is if Ghost is going to come in. He doesn't have... I think he might have his blink dagger. Yeah, blink dagger is being, being delivered, delivered to Ghost, but Roach is already dropping low. Our man is going to get tossed up, quickly blown up. They still take Roach. Skewer in Roshan. for Ghost. Roshan. The Ghost has got already secured, though. 
And now Ghost is in trouble with the RP being used. Aegis will get popped. But they're going to look for kills. And they're going to be in a lot of trouble. Good so avalanche. Yeah, this is a huge catch. And they're looking for even more. In comes the chase from Reality onto Miracle. Magic damage isn't the greatest against an anti-mate. So Miracle is in trouble here. LSA try and keep them alive. But Miracle blown to smithereens. Mikey charging forward. Can he get in range? No, life break without the Ags doesn't have the cast range needed to be able to leap onto some mill. But this is Winter Bear on a wear and tear. Pretty much. They woke up from uh, their sleep uh, after the laning stage. Nigma Galaxy, they had, what, like 3, 4k gold lead? Now... It's 3k gold lead for Winterbear, and uh, Mikey, he's still going back for that Mage Slayer, it seems. Anti-Mage finally online, has that Battle Fury completed, even though they lost Aegis immediately. Uh, they got some really big kills out of it. Toss back, he tries to get the counter ward going, that's going to cost Man dearly. In response, Yeezy might be in trouble, he's actually going to go for the TP out. And gets the TP to safety. Mikey jumping up on the high ground. Jumps in onto Kuro. Takes the kill. Actually, it's Kachal that quickly steals it away from his uh, mid laner. But okay, we'll let that one slide. He's, he's also he's done mine. his best. Kachal has been very active on his visage. I would say completely opposite of uh, Silent as the Grave. Because uh, he's involved in 12 out of 19 kills, going for AC next, sitting at 3,000 gold. So that's uh, going to be up in the next few minutes. And then you'll have Vlad's, AC, Drums, Vengeful Spirit, Aura. Dyer's top tower. Ben uh, Mikey Stoic is also going uh, on the Vengeful Spirit for Ags. He is getting pretty close for a position 5 Vengeful Spirit. Yeah, this is also before he found a neutral item. Maybe if he finds Philosopher's Stone, maybe he's going to be blessed with it. Uh, Mikey again farming some, some stacks in a triangle. GZ's in. Yep. And they he's were out. all smoked behind some mill, so this was a little bit of a bait. And also again, they he, he saw an opportunity, went for it. The rest of his team didn't see the same opportunity and they were like, oh, yeah, okay, stuff happened. If they were ready, that might have gone really well for them, actually. But Mikey, he's going for the Manta, uh, for the S and Y, and then afterwards for the Boots of Travel to be everywhere and chase after Miracle all over the map. Who's actually going for Mjolnir instead of Gleipnir, interestingly enough. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Gleip I mean, Gleipnir would be good to keep them in place, but uh, maybe he wants more right-click damage. This is not going to be... You know, it makes him more tanky with the booster, but uh, double Mjolnir is also very scary to play into. It's going to be a lot of procs, uh, visage birds. They do have a lot of attack speed, so maybe that's the reason Huskara as well. Reality. We'll die to Ghost. Oh, he got RP topside. That's a bit of an unfortunate moment for the anti-mage. With wise, they're still keeping even. Mikey is uh, being chased by Miracle, who, of course, with that double hand of Midas and now the Mjolnir done, has really good farming speed. And late game Huskar is where it does fall off, so Mikey definitely does have to be a bit careful this game. Yeah, you have, I mean... Like, super late game, if you have Ags uh, level 25, uh, pure damage on your spears, etc., satanic, and all that stuff. Uh, like, he, he can scale, but he can also get kited. Uh, I see SNY as his next item. Yeah, I was also very curious about that. My question is, uh, why? Uh, I mean, can be just Halbert with playing into two right-click cores. Remen will be found and quickly taken down. Reality topside, uh, they're getting a bit closer. There's no RP, so we should be just fine. Unless some really weird stuff happens. And yeah, he'll just jump back. Mikey actually TPs through to maybe help out his teammate. While well, they're all uh, walking different directions, Yeezy is looking for that experience rune steal. Might be able to grab it, might be able to die with it. Throws out the avalanche, goes for the TP. Nope. Sees it's only no Miracle. Bye-bye. Yeah, Mjolnir ain't gonna do diddly squat against the TPs. AC is finished on Kachal. Needs 50 gold. 
and probably should get the shard soon and not hope that it goes on the tiny. Please just get it so it goes on Venture Spirit. <laughs> It's it's not gonna happen. Tiny, I don't know something about this hero. He's uh, he always gets it. He just soaks up all, all the luck in that situation. Or luck. At least you know it's good for your tower hitting capabilities in the team. He does do a lot of right click damage at this stage, so. because it's just a tiny. That's literally it. It's just a tiny. That's why he does so much damage. <laughs> Uh, seems like they're ready to go with this AC finished. Mikey has bots, has Sanj, Mage Slayer, so even more magic resistance and they're reducing their spell damage, so that's gonna be pretty big. Yeah, against both the Arc Warden and the Lina, really do not like any of that damage being reduced. Obviously, Lina's trying to turn into right click, and so is the Arc Warden, but they are nowhere near that spot just yet. Are they uh, looking to just wait for the next Roshan, you think, on the side of Winterbear? Probably. I would still give this Aegis to Huskar, because he's going to be playing on low HP. Anti-Mage, next item, seems to be Gotti. You are playing against some good heals and uh, two range cores. And it's gonna make you super tanky. Skewer, oh. nice avalanche from Jeezy, but the RP on to two comes out. They blow up Kachal. Jeezy's gonna be the next one down. Two kills and should probably turn their attention towards the tier one tower in mid. Mikey is nearby. Ghost with some uh, nice RPs. Does have Harpoon available as well, so I feel Winter Bear, uh, they need to move together. Yeah, they're losing a bit of uh, grip on this game. They've been the one getting initiated on the last couple of uh, minutes. And losing, it's not like they lost much, but they keep losing a player here and there. And now two tier one towers taken care of. top tower has fallen. You gotta be careful the of the next nighttime, because that's when Roshan will most certainly be up. It could still come up in daytime, of course, depending on how fast Roche respawns. We saw some really fast Roche respawns today. Miracle TP's bottom, has bots available, so does Lina. So they can outnumber opponents relatively easy. They can split the map. You did mention potential like split push coming out from Arc Warden and to Mage. He still doesn't feel too comfortable blinking into a fight. Yeah, no, he's got very little HP. It's pretty tanky because of, uh, well, actually, his account spell is only level that. one. But he's yeah. he's maxing Six stats. Stat. Really? I would have expected at least get yeah, count spell up. Yeah, counter spell is uh, pretty damn good. This game we're playing against Arc Warden, Lina, uh, these Maelstrom, Mjolnir procs. It was. Uh, Burning, who invented this 1-1-1-1 AM build, and then all into stats pretty much. Then you put more points in blink so you can farm faster. But uh, yeah, I think this is a good game to put more points into counter spell. Hmm. Now they are getting ready for the next Roshan. And we'll uh, have to wait for a while, because I don't think Nigma Galaxy Knows exactly where they're headed. Trying to invade the enemy jungle, get some wards down. They are aggressively both looking for a possible engagement, but only in the positions that they want to fight. Top lane being pushed in for the tier 2 tower. Nigma's tower only farming the jungles. They're not putting Dyer's any pressure on the map. Uh, they will go down and take this tower. Lina has M power with Fiery Soul. Should be enough to bring Radiance it down relatively quickly. And they're also now pushing mid tower. They do have a catapult plus alpha bolt. Oh yeah, the damage is coming through. And this, uh, it does drop quickly. Tier 2 tower Radiance mid drops. Tower and they want to go high ground, which actually is a problem here. Because Roche just respawned. Mikey can take Roche alone. But actually, he does need someone to guard him. Guys, hello. You need to defend. Your tier 3 tower is almost gone. It's dead. And tossed back by Jeezy. There's going to be the skewer out of the enemy's base. Jeezy will be dropping low. 
Does try and uh, heal himself a little bit, but will be taken down in the meantime. Mikey is uh, still solo Radiant's taking Roshan. And they might actually lose the melee racks attack. because of it. I don't know if this is a good trade. This opens up the map for your Arc Warden. This is a bit of an inexperience. Oh my god, he needs to run back. Oof. That's a big oof. I suppose he tried to TP, but uh, something happened. Maybe he got bashed by Roche. Because his TP was on cooldown. And he was already in the top part of the map, so... Maybe he tried to TP Radiant's earlier and they made a call that he should just finish off Roche. Because if they all TP back to base, then Nigma would probably Radiant's walk into the Roche pit and get the Aegis themselves. But this does open everything. Like, they lost their, what, five towers in no time? Our men will be swapped in to get killed. There is an Ags on the Vengeful Spirit, so honestly, this is probably as good as a time as any to take a fight if you're uh, Winter Bear. Yeah, I want to see them take a fight. The thing is, Nigma, they want to go for pickoff, scout things out, go with Magnus Harpoon, try to pick off one guy. Reality, can they take him once? Doing a blade, eats the cheese that he had nicely. Saved and we'll be able to get the jump away. GZ not so lucky. We'll be left behind and reality has to disengage. His tiny sacrifices his life for him. They're gonna turn their attention on towards the tormentor. And it will be the tiny, of course. Uh, of course it will. Tiny with some uh, three throw can start scaling with his insane attack speed. But uh, Ghost has been on the money. It was He's RPs just to get the solo pickoff. Now force them to eat the cheese. Mikey. Ooh. Nice play. Pushes him out with inner fire. Mikey ain't gonna fall for that one. He was at the ready. But they are gonna go for the back line. Sunil does get stunned up. So he might lose first life. There's the swap. He's jump in from Mikey. Looking for a target. Man avoid on Sunil. But he popped Ooh. the BKB just in time. So he knows he's gonna die, no, wants to die. Kill me, please. There we go. He has another swap. He has another stun at the ready. Doesn't have the shard just yet, but Miracle walks away with the Shadow Blade. And Kuro is going to be the one targeted down. The only one left standing are both the Magnus of Ghosts, who got all the way back to base, and the Shadow Blade of Arc Warden, who managed to disengage. But they do kill off Samil, and he didn't really lose anything of value there. If there's no RP, uh, I don't think Enigma Galaxy should fight. Go for the pickoff, sure, but uh, full 5-on-5 five five engagement while... Huskar is holding the Aegis. Uh, that's a bit of a risky situation. Antimage also swapped his item build, decided to pick up BKB instead of that Scotty, which makes him tanky. Uh, he does have another way of dispelling oh, things. No. <laughs> uh, Vengeful Spirit swapped the Arc Warden Illusion out, and then the Tiny blinked in to get the toss back, so they were all both standing underneath the tower. Just like next to each other and the Arc Warden was on the opposite end. Great minds think alike. You know, they want to go in, go for the same target. It's just sometimes the execution. The Dota, like, has so many funny moments. I think everybody who plays a lot of Dota, it does happen so often that uh, you just, like, worst possible timing and it happens. <laughs> I play Winter Wyvern a lot. It, it happens all the time for me. <laughs> Every single time, I'm like, I throw a great four-man curse, and then the enemy throws, my teammate throws a chrono on it, and I'm like, cool, great, thanks. <laughs> it also ha happens vice versa. Ghost still has the RP at the ready. He, he does manage to get a two-man catch. Jumping from reality, going for Samil. Does actually cancel his chase. Samil does eventually die. Stoic will drop. There's the illusion coming back. And Mikey, that's the big one, is back alive. Miracle swap back. Man avoided down, RMN on the run on one end and on the other, Kuro will drop. Will they get the catch? Will they clear him out? RMN goes for the TP out, the stun will come through and it is the finisher. A full team wipe. It is, ah, this is some beautiful. G 
Absolutely beautiful execution Dyer's from Winterbear. This Huskar is so tanky. Look at his damage in the previous fight. 6,000. And check the damage from the other members of Nigma Galaxy. It was Arc Warden with him and Clone. Rest of the team unable to attack. Aghanim Scepter on Huskar. He focuses you down. You're going to die. And he's also holding on to Defiant Shell. So there's going to be like... So kind of forces you to attack him. Then he attacks you immediately afterwards. Uh, Nigma Galaxy put down... One, two, three, four. Observe, I, one just uh, expired. But some really good wards around this area. They fought underneath the vision, but still lost. So, next fight is going to be even harder. Anti Mage will have Butterfly available for the next one. Samil has so far not really made anything happen with that last pick. Lena uh, is bottom of the cores. Honestly, when the fight starts, it half. A second later, he's at almost no HP. They constantly keep focusing. They swap him in. Soik at catches him time after time. They've got the gem now as well onto the shell. So the Arc Warden double uh, and the main Arc Warden can't run away Dyer's from this Visage. Who's also got the Aghanim Scepter. So now you even have to be careful of him just lurking about and Dyer's blowing up the supports. Has yeah, this is what I call Envisage. Because, uh, you know, once he picks up that Aghanim Scepter and, yeah, holding the gem, that's pretty big. He's also super difficult to kill. He pumps out insane amount of damage. They need some, like, Lincoln Spheres or something because they don't have any kind of saves. Huskar gets on top of you, forces you to attack him, and you're gonna die. And you're also getting There's... to the point where the Anti-Mage, uh, like, now he's got full level count spell. He's getting really big he doesn't have all the attributes spent yet though, so that's a little bit disappointing but he is absolutely massive on this anti-mage uh top net with box on to kuro realize it a little bit late pops the bkb they should have the damage at all the rp is gonna already be on cooldown goes he's gonna get blown up looking for more miracle that's the real miracle that was the real miracle in a second he is gone stoic immediately money on the prize that is some mill right there can they get the catch it's an anti-mage of course he can get the catch there's no glide near, there's nothing. Samil has to go for the TP out. No bash here, luckily enough. But it will be another team fight victory coming in for Winterbear. They just, every single fight they take, they're winning. They're just stronger at this point. They try to go. They find Huskar, Mikey with quick reactions. Gets the BKB off, uh, gets swapped in, and then, then you have all these auras around you. I don't think Enigma Galaxy, like even though they managed to kill barracks in the mid lane, range barracks are sitting at 12 HP, uh, it's not enough. Anti-Mage is online, Basher as well, so How did things Mikey are going to get... get cliffed? I assume he blinked. Oh, he probably, our man counter warded, got rid of the, se yeah, he got rid of the sentry and then Mikey blinked on top, hoping that he could just yeah, charge at the... Uh, that was a weird one uh, to look, but nonetheless, let's see. The third Roshan. That's the Axe Roshan. That's the big Radiant's one. That's the one that everyone wants. Radiant's Who would get it, though? Has been I mean, it's anti-mage. Oh, you give it to AM. Uh, it's uh, pretty damn good. <laughs> everyone else has one except for the Tiny, and he already got a free shard, so whatever he wants doesn't hey. count. Actually, Venge doesn't even have a shard yet. Uh, I think he has one being Flying. delivered. Yeah. Because he had one queued up. Roche is up in 30. They got to get ready in the top lane. RMN will get scouted. Kachal. Taunt dead. Kachal, of course, Kirk, takes that kill because it's his gem. So he deserves a recognition for his efforts. Actually, Stoic bought that gem. It should be Stoic's kill. Just like when you counter ward at the moment with the gem. It should be Stoic's money. Radiant's middle barracks <laughs> has fallen. I Radiant wish I would buy gem scan. immediately. Radiant using the scan. Miracle they want this double. Roche. Real miracle Big is prizes nearby. on it. Ooh, hoo -hoo. Ping up Mikey, but do they know that the rest is here as well? Oh, miracle. Oh, his inv is running out. He gets hit by he got the dust. dusted. Oh, he's so lucky that they don't spot him up, but they are going to go for the rest of the team, and they find the two... Ah, okay, never mind. They're just dead. There's nothing to talk about. That was too fast. 
Like, they were focused for Roshan, definitely didn't expect someone to go from behind. Miracle, lucky to keep himself alive, but uh, that's all he can do right now. There it is, Aghanim Scepter eaten by AM, so Blink Fragment is available. And he's got the bash here because he does not want to have someone else TP right in front of him anymore. I think he's even almost done with full abyssal. Yes, indeed. Violence. Waiting for the last piece. A reality top net with by quite some time. I mean, Ma Mikey gets him to this point and then reality is supposed to finish it off. And that's uh, the one-two punch that's uh, working perfectly for Winterbear. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Kachal, Bato Kuro. It's problematic because he's got untouchable, so you don't have that insane attack beat. But with the drums, with the boots, sorry, boots of bearing, AC, everything that he's got, the Vlads, their pushing power is insane. Venge Aura. These buildings, they melt. Blink Fragment onto Miracle, who pops. Tempest double. I'll try to use bubble to keep some buildings alive. Uh, someone's picking out bottom. It needs to be addressed. It's a 35 minute catapult wave, double catapult. Yeah, you at least need to cut the creep wave. Is under attack. That's the minimum. Ooh, there's a drag back. Ghost gets the RP off, but Mikey gets a taunt. Drag back to Magnus, who doesn't have a skewer just yet. The Luna Blade gets thrown out onto Jeezy. The Tiny is going to stay alive. The Magnus gets the skewer back. Will be Chase or will he? Yes, indeed. Reality finds the target and finds the kill. Mikey will be able to clean up RMN as well. The supports are just free fodder at this stage. Jeezy will be finally dropping. And they just destroy these buildings. My lord, this is like a lone druid bear times 10. It, it's gone in a matter of seconds. Like, this bubble is not going to save it. No buybacks available on two heroes on Enigma Galaxy. They need to go in. They need to try to end this game. Vengeful Spirit, she'll gladly die. Kuro, that's going to be a nice uh, eat and target backline. Kachal is just soloing Miracle at this stage. What? Diving in the fountain, and that's the Visage play coming through. Oh. That's Buys just beautiful. Goat wants to get Stoic wants out. to die so he can get the swap. Gets it off, but they won't go for some ale. They'll call the GG. Enigma Galaxy get butchered. They haven't won a single team fight in the last 15 minutes. That's some uh, Mikey. Like, this was 23 Huskar. Lena has a response to it, but uh, I don't know. I was feeling Mikey throughout the whole game. He was uh, all over the place, uh, making the plays, uh, uh, picking up this blink dagger, and they were the ones controlling Roche. A little bit of a mistake there, letting Nygma Galaxy tear their barracks, take the tier three tower but uh, they got themselves ages and then they start to group up together a couple of mistakes i would say but uh, when it comes down to like they might have some holes in their armor uh, when it comes down to first 15 maybe 10 minutes of the game but when they group up together winter bear they look so strong yeah they're they're playing like a, a team that has been playing for a very long time together which definitely is not so because this is a team assembled for these qualifiers specifically uh most of these players have never played with each other as well so uh yeah i'm very impressed with their performance they have as you said a couple of mistakes in communication where swaps and tossbacks and so are not really uh, on point but if they flesh that out if they work on their first 10 15 minutes this team can be really competitive yes they can they almost beat psg quest today earlier uh it was also like great comeback in the second game but then they threw it in the end the third game wasn't as close but uh, yeah this team definitely has potential and i want to see if nigma galaxy is going to be able to make a comeback because they are on the brink of elimination one more game and they might be donezo yeah and uh they're, they're gonna have to try their very best to beat winter bear because it's not going to be easy peasy lemon squeezy in game two or three either so we'll be going towards a short little break to get everything situated for the people at home don't forget after the break, game two between Winter Bear and Nigma Galaxy.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, for game number two between Winter Bear and Enigma Galaxy. My name is DK Truman, and I'm once again joined by the one, the only, Lacoste. Yeah, it's a bit of fun day today. You know, we had some really long games, had some really good games, and a couple of upsets, uh, potentially Winter Bear almost taking down PSG Quest, and now, now they're going to be taking uh, against Enigma Galaxy. They're Ten already 1-0 against them, and uh, looking to close it out, potentially. Five so Enigma, they better prep something good for this one. Uh, this also means, now that they banned Huskar, that Meepo is available. Radiant team so, back. speaking of cheese, they, they might uh, get in some big bad Meepo. And they also banned Vengeful Spirit. Let me just uh, check the bans from the first game. It was Keeper of the Light, Meepo Primal, and Nature's Prophet. So Primal Beast is still available. Ten seconds remaining. That's a big one. This hero just also owns Arc Warden, Enigma Galaxy, picking remaining. Arc Warden two times in a row. Seems like they do believe in the hero. Radiant team. That's back. a pretty strong hero. It just. Uh... Didn't go as well as they'd like last game. The, the Husker was too big. Eventually, the Anti-Mage joined him in being too big. And uh, the, the Auras. Like, when the moment you saw the Vistas get anywhere close to the fight and the Aura started, like, kicking in, you it's instantly saw over. the damage just <laughs> massively spike up. Yeah, you can see uh, one team not taking damage and one team just disappearing completely. Uh, they also might need to remove this Visage. Uh, but that's going to be the last ban, so they got to figure it out. Remaining. Whether they want to remove Visage or Primal Beast. I'm also down Five for them to pick up Primal remaining. Beast. Uh, Batrider on side of Winter Bear. Mikey kind of made the name for himself by playing Batrider when he was playing for Enigma Galaxy. But they can also play this as position 5, position 4. Not sure if Kachal plays it from the off lane. Stoic definitely does play it as a... Uh... Plus five, so they have that flex potential behind them. Um, yeah, if they don't ban Meepo, how is the Oracle, uh, the Arc Warden versus Meepo matchup? He builds into Mjolnir, but you know what? This new Meepo, I'm, I'm not sure what even counters this hero. Like, you need to have some big AoE damage. He also digs underground if you don't have enough stuns. And uh, yeah, it seems like Nigma Galaxy, they're on the same page. They're like, well, you know what? We don't know how to deal with this hero so we were just gonna ban it most of the time you would see enigma galaxy ban it in the first phase but uh, it managed to go through uh i assume winter bear uh do you play meepo uh it's considering that Ten you can play visage me. i assume kachal also now that meepo is kind of meta uh, you want to start practicing me. that hero but uh, meepo's out so they need to figure something else how they're going to play it, uh, as I mentioned, there is Primal Beast. Now, Winter Bear, they do have double pick in this phase. So, more heroes that could get on top of Art Warden. We've seen that it was very potent in the first game. Uh, the swaps especially. Vengeful Spirit is now gone, so they will need to figure out uh, a different team. hero. Ah, behold the Horn of Magnus. Okay, they steal the Magnus away. Uh, honestly, I have only seen Ghost play Magnus so far, so I wouldn't know what else he plays in the off lane. Uh, we've seen this is the fourth game that we cast of him, and uh, three games of those were Magnus. So we get to see something new this time around. That's uh, a big plus at the very least. Five seconds remaining. Off lane Rubik or off, off lane Morphling for Ghost, so he can turn into Magnus and. <laughs> Uh, Play the hero. Lone Druid. I, I believe in offlane Lone Druid. It must ha come through. That actually does work as an, uh, an offlane, luckily enough. It does. And it's, honestly, uh, one of his best heroes as well. Because he was playing that when he was playing carry for RNG. So you can still play carry from the offlane. A lot of thinking going for this pick on Winter Bear. Magnus is the one who can do the same as Dino. Reposition, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, Dino so team. we're going to have teams Trace reverse void. void as an answer. I don't mind it. Uh, as long as they get that damage for in the chrono. Like, I, I'm, uh, I don't like faces voids where it's just the, the chrono and it's a separate entity from anything else in the team fight. Ten yeah, I, just something like one good spell that you can throw Even inside. Even snap fire. Just doesn't doesn't need to be 
Cataclysm or ETLT, just, you know, some kind of damage that goes inside. Uh, true. It's, um, Puck is still available. I've been advocating for Puck because uh, Puck, at least the games that I've been covering, that I've been in, Dia Puck team always team. seems to kind of own. And uh, there's your Radiant wish granted. Lion. Yep, a lone druid against the face of void. That's really terrible for the face of void. It's kind of a lane that you can't win uh, unless you have an insane support. But I don't really think there's going to be one that will be able to keep uh, him in a winning position against that. It's just too annoying. Ten Constantly seconds. keeps rooting you. Uh, he can keep hitting you. So it's kind of like when you're playing Five against Beastmaster, remaining. there's that boar that constantly keeps badgering away at you. And if you leap, it's going to be on cooldown. You don't get the big heal that you want. It's a uh, slow death. Yeah, already afraid for Winter Bear. I like what Nigma Galaxy drafted for themselves. It's going to be very confusing. You will have Lone Druid. You will have Lone Druid Hero, Arc Warden with his Tempest double. So a lot of things to Radiant focus team. on. It will be Pagna. It's, a, it's an okay counter against the Lone Druid. A little bit of extra damage inside Dire the Chrono. Nothing back. too spectacular. It looks to be uh, probably Pulse 5 and then the Bat Rider still flexible between the mid and the uh, Pulse 4 position. Dire team ban. So then the Tiny is a 5 to guard the Arc Warden, I assume, with the Lion position 4. Or it might be a Tiny mid, actually, for uh, Samil. Yeah, it could be Tiny mid as well, but Winter Bear... They seem to be reading Ten it differently. We're doing this Ember Spirit because they don't have any kind of lockdown. I Five did mention Puck. Remaining. I think this could also be a good ban for Winter Bears. Grimstroke actually being banned is an interesting one. I was looking at the stats earlier for win percentage in the close qualifiers. It had like 80 picks in the close qualifiers and it had a 26% win rate. Oh, Grimstroke is back to the dumpster, it seems. Uh, no, I, I think it uh, might be tied to what the Grimstroke is paired up with. Uh, during TI, uh, Grimstroke plus Spectre was a really popular combo. Anything that goes in, you have Grimstroke following Spectre and just popping that Ink Swell, uh, finding the target. You have one Vision Hero who will provide you with Vision remaining. that Spectre can jump, and then Ink Swell Dagger, Urn of Shadows, more Five than enough to kill any remaining. of the supports that are on the map. Radiant but. team pick. Okay, Queen of Pain banned out, and so is the Pangolier. I mean, Puck's still in the pool. You mentioned it a couple of times. Seems to be a pretty A-OK -okay choice. It's a decent chrono damage, depending on what kind of build you're going to go for. Ten seconds remaining. I could also see them running Pagna mid, potentially. There's also, Five like, the, three of their remaining. heroes right now could go to the mid lane. Hmm, other choices. I uh, Storm, Void Spirit, if you're really feeling it. Able to get on top of the Arc Ward and get on top of the Lone Druid, where you just, like, circumvent the bear in its entirety. Lion is a bit scary, though, when you play that way. Or you go Chris and Maiden, and uh, you just put anything else in the mid. It's probably bad right in mid, right? And knowing it's... Mikey, who loves to play the hero, most likely, but uh, I could also see Pagna going going mid. And before if Magnus it's a good mid, matchup, right off lane. Hmm. They don't have the last pick, so keeping things open for them works out. Let's see how Enigma Galaxy is going to read this, whether they want to play tiny mid. Or what do they want to put? I mean, I think Puck is a safe choice because you could be playing against the Bat Rider, but uh, in the end, it's going to be tiny. Okay, Oracle. So they're just going to try and focus and keep their heroes alive instead. It's a, yeah. it's a good Oracle game. There is a ton of magical damage on their side. Oracle ruins Bat Rider, ruins Pugna, and then you have, you know, save inside Chronosphere. You have Tossback as well available. I do like what Nigma Galaxy drafted for themselves. It's a, a lineup that needs a little bit of time to come online, and Tiny's gonna be that thing that ties them together because mid Tiny comes online super fast, needs pretty much a blink dagger, and uh, you could you're gonna be the playmaker for the team. I see heroes with uh, low HP, Pugna, Crystal Maiden, even Faceless Void, 
tiny plus one can easily kill any of those. Yeah, it's gonna be a fun game, I hope. Definitely feels like Nigma Galaxy has a couple more answers in this game than in game number one. Um, even though the loan, the, I would have expected that Mikey would get destroyed in that mid, but he actually just went jungle and circumvented the entire Samil is in the lane uh, aspect of that game. This time around, though, Batrider versus Tiny. Tiny should be able to just toss him bat away in case it goes prob becomes problematic. And you've got that big save against the Chrono. Uh, they've got good tools. Granted, you, you have to deal with Chrono. You have to deal with RP. Crystal made an ulti next to it, which is a lot of magic damage. If the Oracle it is. dies, it, it's uh, it's hard to fight. Uh, they're going to be repositioning heroes. Uh, Batrider lasso, skewer back, and then I try to focus them down. Yeah, but focus. when we're talking about just like scaling, I feel like my galaxy space. outscales Bad them coming into life. late game. This is Tiny from the mid lane, Arc Warden, and Lone Druid. You have three strong cores, while on the other side... You know, Magnus, he can scale. Uh, I'm also looking forward to see Kachal playing Mag Magnus because I didn't get the chance to see it. Uh, I've been very impressed the way he plays some of these summon heroes. RMN, Ravage. Ooh. Still gonna die. Yeah, the Ravage doesn't keep you alive. You don't have Kraken Shell. That's your big problem here. First Blood, two reality on that face is void. And uh, should uh, help out in his lane at least. And there's the tips coming up between Mikey and Kuro. Hey, old boss. How you doing? Uh, <laughs> Kuro didn't even do anything, you know. It's randomly. Our man dies and uh, Kuro gets tipped. I mean... One was his old coach, and the other one is his old uh, captain. My The coach dies, tip the captain. <laughs> captain dies, tip the coach. Uh, let's see, are there going to be any good steals coming in? Miracle already dropping a uh, Spark Wraith. The battle so you don't actually want to walk there, it's going to hurt, so to, to bounty rune trade. Uh, as I say that, the lone druid bear? <laughs> Killed it? No, he picked it up. Wait. Yeah, Ghost picked it up. And uh, so it's it? going to be three for one on Enigma Galaxy. Oh. Uh, I think he was there. Uh, didn't pay attention, but uh, Stoic. Again, all eyes on this bottom lane. This time, Winter Bear did get first blood. Faceless Void was the one who got it. And it's bringing something on the courier. It's going to be full raid band. So some extra armor. And attack speed against the Sloan Druid. And so he is dropping low because Crystal Maiden's got less than 500 HP, base HP. That's uh, Sadness and first, well, the second kill gets secured in the game. And it wasn't really that much effort. <laughs> yeah, it was <laughs> pretty easy peasy there. Crystal Maiden standing on the side. Our men will block the small pull. And, well, we have three lanes. Is it just the bottom lane that's going to have most of the action, or are the other lanes also a bit scary? Yeah, I bet I've seen Mikey play super aggressive when he's playing Batrider. Uh, Tiny, not the easiest target to kill. He can avalanche, he can toss you away. So I don't think there's going to be... There's going to be an attempt, but I don't think anyone's going to die there. And uh, yeah, top lane, we might see some action happening in the top lane, but the Stoic needs to be careful. Like, we've seen some bad laning stage coming out from Stoic, where he just kind of doesn't know what to do in uh, when he's playing in a bad matchup. And this might be one of those, because uh, this lone druid hero doesn't die like uh, th there's no way you're gonna lose all this advantage uh, he's CSing real nicely sitting at six and five uh, really difficult lane for faces void and see him already goes for the bear resummon knowing that it's gonna take them a long time to kill the bear a second time and uh, well might as well start that uh, cooldown timer right now anyway yeah this I mean you're that's the problem with playing against someone. Gunner does the same thing for nouns. They have that option of giving him the lone druid off lane, and it's really like most safe lane heroes just don't. They can't win against the, that hero. And yeah, what do you do? Like, 
you have another unit that has 1300 HP and 40 damage on level 2, so good luck killing it. And if you kill it, he resummons it. Yeah, right before you kill it as well, so you don't even get gold. Just uh, the extra little bit of BM added in the mix. Uh, let's see, three minute timer, so they're going for the Lotus Pool. Nice son, Armen yoinks it away. Oh, so he wants to actually kill off RMN. He does have a frostbite. You get the cast off. He does get it off right before he dies himself. And it will be Stoic getting a kill. And afterwards getting taken down. But the problem is, reality kind of can't walk back to the creeps. He did bring second rate band in this bottom lane. So that's going to be some extra attack speed again. Extra armor. And uh, he can come back with some extra tangos. So... That's gonna be okay, so, but the problem is Ghost is free farming. It has Orb of Corrosion already. RMN. Pop off the stun. No root. no, no root, but they're gonna go for the dive. The bear can tank everything. Stoic freezes up the bear. Will it die? There is no resummon just yet. One last hit, and the tower dies. Take XP. At least XP, unfortunately, no gold. I mean, the bear, what, gives 300 gold? Yeah. Bears uh, killed one of their own kind. They killed the uh, bear from Lone Druid. Oh, immediately going for a ghost. Yeah, the bear can be resummoned in two seconds. Obviously, if he would die at this stage, that would be super sad for him. Actually, face the foot doesn't even have a point in time lock. He finds that lane to be so disgusting. He went two points time lock, one point time dilation. That yeah, makes sense. You want to put second point in, like first point in time dilation at level two to have some extra kill potential. There is a lot of slow in this lane. We'll get it at level four. Our men dropping relatively low. Stoic using a lot of his mana. We've been mostly focused in this bottom lane. We can see Mikey trying to play aggressive in the mid lane, but uh, that's about it. Can't really kill Tiny. Reality gets stunned up. Ghost is bear is going ham on the void. Rotation for Kuro from here. behind coming in. There's also Jeezy. So a big brutal battle at the bottom side of the map. Ghost is bear. It, it, honestly, it just needs to die so that Ghost can't really do anything in the lane anymore. Which they're attempting here. Will it drop? Yes, it does. 300 gold for Stoic. That's a good kill. That's more than you get for a hero at this stage of the game. Kuro on the run. Healing self. Jeezy is going to keep chasing into oblivion. They pop the observer ward while they're hunting. Kuro is still running away. And Jeezy will actually take down Kuro. Nice wow. done. Long chase. So mail's coming now. Radiant yep. Bottom tower. And they should both die. Or actually only the one. Radiant it's going to be Jeezy dropping down. Our man gets that kill, and Stoic will get at least a couple of items for that chase. Yeah, look at that. It, the, the curry is just this filled is to the rim with stuff Dive coming in for Stoic. Scanning. Crystal Maiden, one of the heroes that consumes uh, a lot of these small items. Uh, her net worth always down at the bottom. Kachal. Oh, one more spark rate. Could do it. Oh. Right click is there and Miracle secures the kill. Uh, Jeezy was gone for a very long time, so there was not much that the Kachal could do. He still had a pretty good lane so far, though. Has been uh, getting excellent farm in that top side. Yep, sitting at uh, 2.7k at the moment. Mikey is on top. Mikey was also farming the big stack in the triangle. I believe it was a Radiant three stack already and we'll get a D ward. They've been on the money with uh, some of the movements. Uh, they also mimic the movement from Kuro. Oh, bottom lane. Going in for Ghost. Nice kill. He just resummoned the bear as well. So if he oh, dies, no he way. Huge, but the Ava play from Samil coming in reality. That's a double damage. Tiny's looking for a target to finish him off. Ghost is going to stay alive. Stoic. Or is he, he? is he? Is he? Oh, ho, ho, ho. Stoic from beyond the grave. That is no resummon of that disgusting bear for uh, at least 50 seconds once he respawns. 
Not too bad. Really good trades for Winterberry. It would be pretty amazing if they managed to like kill him before, because uh, Crystal Maiden is level 5. Uh, he did kill Bear two times. Mikey finds a neutral item, and now they also killed Kuro top. Mikey very close to his boots of travel. Once he gets that item, he's going to start uh, moving. No lasso for 60, but Stoic is going around, so Ghost could potentially die. He's not level 6 yet. Needs one CS. Oh, he takes so much damage. Yep. A bit too late coming through. Kuro just TP'd in. He does have face Edict to stay alive for a little bit longer. And we'll be using that to get out of dodge. But it is a 1k net with lead for the Radiant side. Samil trying to get the kill onto Reality. Araman is chasing in after as well. Reality will just walk underneath the tower where he thinks he's safe. And comes Samil. Kind of walks in probably the worst possible direction at that point. <laughs> And will be uh, finished um, off. Good kills. They managed to kill the Lone Druid two times. Ghost will resummon the bear. Yeah, and top net with is Mikey with Kachal second. Kind of yeah, like every where... game that they're playing. <laughs> it's Mikey at the top, Kachal second. Doing really good well, in their lanes. Yeah, difference is. Uh, Supports are really playing around Mikey, making sure that there are a lot of stacks. And now he's steeping to the top lane, so they want to kill Miracle. We didn't talk too much about Miracle, because all the action was happening what bottom. Kachal, ready to go in. Level 6, no RP available, but Mikey is zooming. Miracle gets dragged back, and the skewer as well to make sure that he's out of range before the tiny joins the fun. Big kill comes out, Miracle taken down, and... Yeah, they're making sure that the uh, the scary cores are dealt with. A couple of kills on to Ghost. Now Miracle, take him out of the running Dyer's for quite some time. While the supports focus their attention towards mid. Stoic is already level 6 in the meantime, thanks to all that fighting so far. Samil is going to go back in. On the other end, there's the lone druid TPing through. That's Ghost. Stoic needs to get out. GZ, can he decrepify him? Keep him alive. The problem is Samil is chasing in after Yeezy. Stoic with a nice slow, but the bear will be able to maul away at the Crystal Maiden. And she shatters. Lance of Pursuit on bear. I'm going for the Fusal Blade next. So that's going to be core item. The Fusal Blade into... Harpoon, that's been the build for Lone Druid for quite some time, and making a rotation bottom, not even smoked. Reality should know something is up. Yeah, we'll just uh, disengage. Steep towards stop, there's no tier 1 tower standing, so it will be easy cleanup farming. There's also max level uh, empower on Magnus, so Kachal will be able to make sure his face is void. It does recover a little bit. Mikey is getting close to his Blink Dagger, and Kachal already has the Echo done with the Harpoon, of course, being his next choice. Yeah, they're playing really well, splitting up the map, uh, getting the farm. Enigma Galaxy, they are grouped up around the mid lane, four members already killed the tower Radiant bottom, Oscar. but uh, if they want to kill those towers, they should bring Ghost to the mid lane. And Mikey clearing up another triple stack of Ancients. I, I, I'm, I really need to have a guy, Mikey guide in farming from the mid lane because it's remarkable how much he gets done on these heroes. It's the supports. I think it's uh, Jeezy who's making a lot of work constantly oh, going for the triangle stacks. Yeah, try, it does help if your supports do uh, do a lot of work. But also, even when he was Huskar, he stacked a lot of the camps for himself in his own little jungle. And they're going for the tier 1 tower in towards mid. Now it's just a farming frenzy. There is a chrono. So in case you know, they feel that they can go for the dive, they always have to be careful. They, have, they don't have the best chrono damage, but Crystal Maiden and Pugnock, it's it's okay. Yeah, if you have like Firefly over the target, uh, it's, it's going to be some okay damage. Mikey wanted to get level 12 to lower the cooldown on his Flaming Lasso before he goes. Smoke from Enigma Galaxy as well. Ghost showing his bare attack. bottom so they know. Immediately picked by Kachal. This should be a kill. Yep, there we go. Drag him back and they kill him in time before he gets his uh, 
true form off. Yes, they can indeed. And another kill on to Ghost. Slow down that Diffusal Blade purchase. On the In the meantime, Reality Topside. I'm going to try and do the exact same thing. Take down the enemy's core reality. He's like, okay, they must not be here right now, right? But in comes Samil. Toss back. Control. And... Gets the Chrono off. Got it. Leaps a little bit too late, so needs to be very careful. The RP actually drags them back into oh, the tower. Oh, not on him. <laughs> and Kuro gets the kill onto Reality. Oh my god, I don't close. think they needed that skewer back. Uh, he could have also left, but uh, nice player there. He switches to power to its strength after feeling that something is off. And also, Spark of Courage coming into a play. He drops below 50% HP, gets 7 armor, extra armor from tower because he was also in range but uh, yeah he definitely didn't need needed to die there <laughs> yeah that's one uh, th th that's a little bit of a sad one he also like he popped the chrono and then left and was like oh it's it's already been enough time <laughs> since i last took damage oops there was a little bit of a delay on the backtrack But nonetheless, they did manage to find two kills as a counter. Reality really needs to recover, though. He's uh, struggling this uh -oh. game. Miracle showing top Mikey again. Very, very fast with his rotations. Another kidnap, and uh, that's going to be another kill. Mikey is uh, the bane of Enigma Galaxy, it seems. Ooh, but in mid, they get to two counter kills coming in. So Mill is actually doing a I really good job at finding these guys together with our men. Yeah, he's mimicking movement from Mikey. I think reality needs to use Empower, go away. Whenever his team is making a move, he should go away and uh, just try to farm in some safer, some outer ring. EPs are coming in. Okay. Uh, I was actually expecting him to do something on the Magnus aggressively, but TP's immediately screws away. A little bit spooked. Does have the harpoon ready. Next item is going to be blink there. Mm. Yeah, giving the uh, buff to the faces void, and he can just farm up some uh, stacks in Radiant's the meantime. Or well, ancient camps, not stacks, because those are only for Mikey. What? He picked up XP rune, definitely needs some of the XP's only level was level 8, now level 9, getting closer to level 10. Mikey, another Bottom lasso lane. available. Easy. That was close. RMN just TP'd to bottom. Yeah, I was wondering where he was TP'ing, considering how far it was away from where they actually were, but it looks like they're grouping up to maybe push the Chiju Tower bottom. This game, there is no fast Roche for the Radiant side, which is a plus for Enigma Galaxy. They've got the Arc Warden and the Lone Druid. They've got the better Roche take capabilities. They've got a same push, Radiant obviously, because of the bear. Armen. Links away, right towards Mikey. Mikey doesn't want to use the lasso for that kill. Wants to use it for a bigger target who is further down the line. It's not the bet you gotta worry about. I love how Mikey's playing immediately goes for a different target uh, and doesn't find anything, goes back to farming afterwards, uh, getting very close to his BKB, just a thousand gold away, 900. he has got a haste room bottled up, let's see, anything, Akura's going for a blink, they already have one of course on uh, our men. More blinks, more dodge, it's also nice against uh, Stoic. Trying to stay alive with that Kaviz. Gets the ulti off. Kuro is going to get dragged back. So False Promise doesn't get used. The finger from RMN will be taking oh, down Stoic. And no now chrono. faces Void. Can he get the Chrono off? He needs to leap. He's actually rooted into Oblivion. Taking down another peg. Jeez, he's going to get tossed back on towards the bear. And that's going to be three kills secured. That is huge for Enigma Galaxy. Massive. Good ulti from Kuro. Also using... Fortune's end to immediately dispel that Pavis from Crystal Maiden and uh, not allowing like some good spell usage rooted the stun into another hex so Faces Void doesn't get anything. And 
interesting build from Samael. He's like, okay, there's going to be a lot of uh, spell damage coming out. I'll build into Mage Slayer as Tiny. Plus Bubble. Did this guy is uh, immortal. <laughs> Bubble, Mage Slayer, Tiny. Okay. And Bubble from our quarter. So triple Bubble. That's uh, You know, it's a really OP item if one of the slowest right-click heroes in the entire game builds up a Mage Slayer. <laughs> He can throw that three. Oh, That's it. Yeah, well, if it gets three volley. Yeah, it's pretty good. I guess next item, Ags. This will come in handy. Oh, let's see. Where are they headed? Chal, closest blink. That will probably be the big item that he wants to have before he takes any fight. Reality still. He's just done with his Milstrom. Uh, he is so far behind in terms of Fire Miracle. Like me this game, he's not gonna screw around yeah. with uh, Mjolnir shenanigans anymore. No, he Black wants to cast Magnus, Faceless Void before they get any BKBs. Kachal has been farming up a lot. Uh, GZ's not having a good time. So Mail's been really on point with his initiation. Same goes for Stoic. How many deaths do they have combined? 13 between those two. Yeah, they've, I mean, it is easy targets for a tiny, for, for anyone in their team pretty much that encounters them. That includes the lion. And they can all be solo killed. <clears throat> there are backline hidey holes in Glimmer Cape heroes at best. Chal wants to get the harpoon dragged back. This is the downside of Harpoon. You don't deal damage. So you need to get a hit in first and then Harpoon and then drag back. Or you need to have Blink Dagger, obviously. It's coming. It's on the courier. That's uh, probably your best bet at a good fight. You've got Chrono. You've got RP. You've got uh, Mikey with the lasso. He's got his BKB Radiant now just scanning. done on the Bat Rider. Oh, they know they... Mikey knows that they're going to go for the Roche bottom in a bit. He's already there. He's just waiting behind the pit. His teammates are smoking towards him. Smil actually want breaks the smoke. They didn't place an Observer Ward. Do they know how close they are? They now do. And Smil with the Avalanche. That's not the target they want. Mikey wants the Oracle. And indeed, he does drag the Oracle back. RP nice, off RP. to two. Crystal made an ulti as well, and Samil is dead. That's so heads up from Mike. There is Chrono. Reality will catch him. One time walk, and we'll get him. There we go. Dodges oh. the first spike as well. Miracle, can he stay alive? Of course not, because they're going for Charles the heavy charge coming forward. RMN gets caught, and that is four kills secure. The only one not dead is Ghost, and that was just because he wasn't there. Oh, what a play. Mikey having really good read on what's going to happen. Uh, rest of the team places down Observer Ward to see, like, catch a glimpse of Tiny. He gets bitten by Frostbite, and then Mikey's like, okay, I need to kill one target that's going to be Oracle. So like they still might want to take this fight. Not the fastest Roche, as you said, but Jeezy yeah. is the one who's scouting. Sacrificial Trying to buy a little bit of time, pretty much. Oh no, they killed GZ. Oh, whatever shall we do? Ages by. It is a bit risky to TP in the middle of the pit, though, but they will be able to get out in time. <laughs> I like how Reality didn't even pick up Ages on Faceless Void. He's like, I'm, uh, I'm kind of useless, guys. I'm one chrono. Maybe we get the kill. And uh, it's gonna be Kachal. He's the real carry of the team going into BKB next, also having Lincoln Sphere. Faceless Void still needs a lot of items. Uh, I think that's uh, middle tower his BKB needs a Mithril Hammer, uh, but they already TP top. Let's see if he gets a read on it. He does. And they're ready to go for the Tormentor. Uh, both shards are pretty okay. I think the Crystal Maiden is a little bit better uh, with the changes that they made. Because now you can farm with that stupid thing. <laughs> it's, it's so good. Like, in the middle of a fight, uh, you can kill it with Crystal Noah, and uh, yeah, everybody gets frostbitten. Normally when they're that close, you're already like <laughs> Already dead. dead. <laughs> <laughs> but the plus side is you can walk into a nice creep camp, or you know, you see a creep wave, and you place it down, 
Crystal Nova and you Radiant just walk away while they slowly melt in ice. I guess they uh, freeze. I assume so. Yeah. I'm not an expert on these uh, weather conditions and uh, how H2O works, but uh, yeah. Uh, Even if it's not flash product? freeze, I think you like crack and you burst in multiple pieces. Yeah, it's like sub zero. <sighs> Shiva's guard is almost finished. That's gonna be big, providing vision for Mikey and also reducing some of the healing from Lone Druid. Oracle as well. Oh. Bit of a pause. No, okay. it, it was Kachal earlier today that always had the internet issues. So, you know, this is the first time he pauses this series. That's. That's okay. I, he even, like, where they had all the massive pauses and he constantly had problems was his Darkseer game. Which, <laughs> I mean, he, he popped off that game. Just think of that game, but then without lag. Oh, it would have been... It does have Skewer cooldown talent, level 15. Harpoon is the one who's holding the Aegis. This is gonna sting! He's ready to go. So are we? Ghost has Harpoon, Diffusal Blade. He's marking up that he wants the Aghanim Scepter next. Someone's looking to play some nasty game in. He's going to constantly be ratting, it seems, on that bear. RMN, ready to jump. So is Samael. But this is the Aegis carrier. Gotta be careful not to toss him in the middle of your team. This is like, uh, you know, tossing Tidehunter. Let's see. It's on to Ghost. Dead. Aegis popped. Finger use. Chal. Uh, Ooh, hoo, hoo. What? I was like, got they've that got a big play bear. coming in, but no. The rest of the team was not ready. You could see Enigma Galaxy spreading across, making sure that they don't get hit by some big chrono or... All right, I guess that pause that they used uh, didn't benefit them a lot. Sometimes you lose, like, track of the game if the game is paused for a minute or so. Kachal's like, why am I standing in mid? What, what am I doing here? And then, ah, tiny. Okay. This team, why are you standing there, buddy? Nah, they, they were definitely waiting for a play, but I don't Radiant's think... Top tower is under attack. I mean, they, they weren't ready, but they were. It was a very weird engagement. Maybe if they, like, fall. smoked around it, they could have gotten a very big Radiant's jump. The rest of the team attack. was uh, not ready. And Samael will take this tower top. Uh, top also a very interesting build. Top. After picking up Mage Flare, he's going for Yule Scepter. So I assume eventually he's going to turn that into Wind Waker to protect himself. Uh, whoever tries to get Lasso during the Chronosphere. And also when Magnus goes for the play with Harpoon, you can easily use Yule Scepter on him before he gets a BKB. So I think Magalaxy did stabilize the game a little bit. Jeezy. He's on the other side of the map. Hey, sneaky beaky Pugna Radiant's playing. He's got Blink Dagger now, so attack. at least he is a bit more elusive to catch. But he's forcing uh, bottom tower is under a little bit of tower damage with the Pugna. They're really aggressively hunting you on Enigma Galaxy. It doesn't really increase their farming speed. Actually, Miracle's the one get, that gets spotted. And Lasso drags. Stoic is nearby. Has his ulti. Will they be able to get there in time to save Miracle? No, he's just the only one left behind. His entire team is smoked up. And he's like, I, you know, I want to farm some creeps here. It's a free jungle. The enemy's not going to jump me ever. They're just missing on the map completely. Yeah, they're still not done. Jeezy might catch one or he might get caught. It's the Radiant other way around, Stoic. Can he get something done? He does have the Harpoon drag back to mill. Spells on cooldown. Stoic does get the ulti off RP to hold the tiny in place. And the skewer to get them on top of each other. Oracle dies to mill. very close to dropping. And will drop to Kachal's chase. Ghost is bare. It's a 1v everything fight, it seems. They're just going to focus on the bear first because it's easier to kill. Crystal made him blown up. Ghost is next. Chronos There's reduced. Chrono and on the lion. And Ghost resummons his bear 10 seconds before he dies. Actually, Ooh. two seconds before he dies even. That, that, he was dead, 100%. There was no getting out of that. Yeah, that was... Uh... Oof. Man, nothing's going right for Enigma Galaxy, but everything's going right for Winter Bear because... Uh... 
They also locked down Tiny for a long period of time. Uh, Kuro used ulti on him so that he can blink out out of trouble. He's not receiving damage, but uh, Magnus took care of it. And then they catch him, uh, blinks out like at the last second, but they still manage to get the kill with the flame break. Dyer's bottom tower is under yeah, Mikey attack. is there. You know, when in fear, Mikey is here the entire time. He just manages to get the important catches. He's a really scary bat rider player. Honestly, yeah. he's a really scary everything player. Mikey completely unlocked. 6012 level 21 on Batrider has arcane rune for now keeping eye of the vizier thinking about whether he needs a tier 3 item sends it back like yeah I'll just keep this didn't get like headband I assume and uh Kachal still second in net worth Mikey first reality is actually creeping up on the rest of the enemy team which is impressive considering how his uh, early game went it's going for the nullifier next you got that Yules I don't care you got the the other you know glimmer capes and other Yules I, I don't really care BKB nullifier you're dead you're not gonna save people in my chrono I want to see some glimmer capes on supports. I see Radiant like drums on Crystal Maiden. Pugna has a blink dagger lens, but it's a really good glimmer game. Maybe they're thinking Oracle will dispel it, but he can't dispel it. It also gives you oh, Mikey kidnapping one more, Sco scooping it up, and Kuro. That's a big. That's the save gone. So now they can RP and well, Chrono in 30 seconds. So then the Oracle will be back up. But they're so. Disgusting. <laughs> it's they're, like... very, they're very quick. And uh, yeah. again, Nigma Galaxy, look at their observer boards. They do have all like very good vision. It's just that they're not playing around their vision. There's like four good obs on the map right now, but uh, they don't see them. And smoke usage from Winter Bear has been amazing so far. Roshan may be up in 20 seconds. Miracle with the clone on the mid. Stoic wanted to use the uh, second frostbite from his uh, crystal clone, but the child just curious the, cre the creep at this point, you know. The second Arc Warden takes him away on a little kidnapping session. He's been really good at kidnapping. I love the fact that they first drag one away and then the Oracle gets close and be like, maybe I can possibly save him and we can counterplay. And then half a second later, Kachal comes in. Hey, another one kind of like last game with the Venge swap and the tiny uh, toss. Pretty much. Ooh, overwhelming blink on Batrider queued up. Needs uh, 200 gold. We'll have it after this creep wave. So that's going to be some gigantic AoE slow that he blinks in, slows everybody with Shiva's guard. Mikey just feeling himself. Mikey is pretty huge. Ghost is done with the Ags in about 200 gold. So he'll be able to, yeah. I guess, cut creep waves and such and be a bit more of a nuisance the entire game. We can say that he's going to have Ghost Scepter. Uh, split push is not going to be as 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 effective. Because <laughs> <laughs> you have a Crystal Maiden, you can always lasso him. Uh, I think they have very good defense. You also have Pugna with the Crypify, Yule Scepter, so they're kind of prepped for it. Honestly, it wouldn't surprise me if he actually got Ghost Scepter on his main uh, <laughs> hero. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's... Uh, the, the bear, it's just mainly the distraction during a team fight. The bear starts mauling at your buildings. Luckily enough, they still have two tier 2 standing. And they do see the bear, so they expect Ghost to be near. He's actually next to his bear. And oh, I, oh. they're making a this little bit big. of a mistake. Jump comes in, Mikey's looking for Kuro, gets the lasso drag, but the RP from Kachal still goes off. They lose Kuro, the Chrono comes in, blows up Miracle on the back line, and Reality is looking for Iron Man. Gets used up a bit of a second too late because his BKB was still going, and that is four kills secured. Oh yeah, the Lone Druid bear survives, obviously because he just got it, but that is uh, a fight that looked like it was going to start amazing for Nygma. Might just it be really one did. of the last ones of the game. And then Kachal with the RP again, reality. Like, they have so many abilities to just lock them down. A lot of stuns, a lot of control. They can choose which targets they want to go for. And uh, I'm not going to say this is it, because our Gordon will respawn in 20 seconds. But the one more fight like that, then I think Nygma will tap out. 
It is kind of terrifying if the f there's a fight, you have five Daya heroes together, and you see Mikey, Pop BKB, go through all five of them, grab Kuro, and just run out. <laughs> He's had enough, that one save. <laughs> He's like, I'm not ever gonna let that happen again, but the, this AoE slow from Overwhelming Blink and Shiva's Guard is just way too much. In terms of dispelling things, uh, Miracle has uh, no BKB, uh, he's not even going for it, and it does Tiny, has Yule Scepter, so it's gonna be pretty difficult to just, like, dispel those, uh, those slows off of them. Smoke from Nigma Galaxy. Roshan, Roshan available on Radiant side. They know that there's no Chrono, no RP for 30 seconds, but it might come, become available if they're not fast ah. enough. They're, they're holding the high ground, Mikey has Haste Rune, Reality needs to back off a little bit. And he's, he's being pinged by someone. Mikey is pinging it out. Samil on the other side. Tree volley spots up Mikey. He wants to go for Samil. He's like, where is Kuro? Ah, he doesn't spot him. Will go for Miracle, so this time won't be able to get the Kuro catch because he glimmered himself to stay alive. But the Spirit Bear is going to be the target, so it's just chilling with his entire ult going. Nice two-man stun comes out, but the RP is right up right now, so they have to disengage as fast as they can. Can they still lose Miracle in the process and Kuro? Because, of course, why not, Kuro? It is a triple kill coming in for the Radiant side. That's Roche. And, yeah, this I don't see them winning another fight at this stage. Yeah, it just looks uh, impossible. They're way too ahead. And I think Mikey, to be honest, I think he thought that Arc Warden is uh, Oracle. Because, like, they look pretty similar with some cosmetics. And there's a lot of particles around. So he jumped in and he's like, okay, I'm taking, I'm kidnapping Oracle. Because he knew that the rest of the team is there ready to back him up. So Oracle ulti immediately used. And now Roshan belongs to Winter Bear. Aegis on Faces Void this time. That was a fight without the Chrono and RP as well. That's that, If you don't yes. win a fight and they don't have their big two ultis, then yeah, there's just very little that you can do left in the game. Split also, push. like it, it's very hard for them to just go onto one target and kill it. Because they, there's gonna be like some save. There's uh, also Solar Crest. Uh, Mikey goes in level 24 on Batrider. Uh, this is uh, pretty nuts. Octarine as well. I don't know. I kind of liked that we had the CDR neutral items. Because you could combine that with Octarine. I know it was pretty stupid in some cases. But uh, it's not like back in the days when uh, everybody had cast range. You know, the old Eater lands with even higher cast range than <laughs> what it is right now. And then you had Shaman. Then you had Rubik stealing Shaman abilities, casting Shackles from <laughs> one part of the map to other. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, there are still some weird things that you can get done, but most of the funky, a little bit busted stuff is removed, except for Mage Slayer, that one's here for some reason. Uh, did not help the Tiny in the slightest this game, though. He's kind of being ignored almost every single fight. It's Miracle or, well, it's Kuro or Bust, and then second best would be Miracle, who has just not been able to get anything done on the Art Warden either. Going for the Silver Edge, has a Shadow Blade, might be able to keep him alive. Uh, they do not have a gem currently, and they barely have any in this detection. They've got one sentry on them. Uh, three sentries now, because the Courageous deliver it, it to Stoic. And they're going for the high ground. They want to close this one out. Batrider looking for whoever shows is gonna get lassoed pretty much, but they don't need to rush anything. They're gonna be waiting for potential skewer back or just lasso, and uh, eventually you're gonna need to to play. Like you, you can't just lose set of barracks. There, the find the best possible target, so you can chrono the enemies. Will be a viber coming out from Kuro, but uh, he doesn't actually have a way to get to his team. So. Yeah, Kuro's like the only one that can't stand in that position. Yeah, their base is being taken by Ghost. Uh, there was also Tiny, so not the full squad was there. Bubble thrown, disarmed, is coming back. They want to take the clone out one more time. I think they fed like 5,000 gold with clones and bears. Samil, will he get dragged back? He's actually dropping to Yeezy right now. 
And the false promise is used. Bear is pushing though. Look at the base. Two oh, catapults. Yeah. Plus it's actually bear. going ham. They're going for the tier fours here. They're being distracted, but Miracle is gonna die back. RP gets used. The bear is still going, but the problem is the bear doesn't have like Deso, AC, the whole shebang in pushing strength. Somebody needs the TP, or they need to keep an eye on it because uh, yeah, they they need to go back. Now they need to TP out. Easy is here. They're coming to disarm it. Mikey wants to go far, man. There's the endless pop. Mikey has almost 4k HP, by the way. Uh, they're going back in. The lone druid bear got resummoned, so they don't have to care about their base anymore. And this uh, bat rider is 25, so he's got a lot of damage with. They want to kill the bear. They rate. wanted to kill the bear first. Flybacks are coming in. They're still not done. Another chrono in 50. But uh, he managed to kill almost both attack. tier 4 towers. You did say that Miracle used the buyback and the Fences Void wants to close it out. They do have almost Megas. Ranged Barracks is available bottom if they want to take it. But it uh, seems like they just want to end the game. Toss back. Potentially. Coming out. Oh, there's going to be the drag onto the bear and the lasso onto the lone druid. But the bear is the more important one because there is an Aegis. At the moment, RP onto two by Kachal catches Sumil in there as well. And Sumil will drop. Reality knows he needs to just clean up the agent. That's going to be the main focus here. They have Miracle up in five, but it doesn't matter because Enigma Galaxy is eliminated in a 2 0 fashion by Winter Bear. Uh, they lost to them again. Seems like they do have their number. And the boys are playing playing some really good Dota. I gotta be honest. Uh, you know, they laning stage wise, not the greatest. Uh, Mikey is a great laner. They're off lane. Uh, seems like safe lane uh, seems to be you know missing some pieces. But uh, after 10 minute mark, they're just moving together. All the things they're doing seem to be right. And a uh, couple of those baits this time around. Uh, Face Void didn't have, like, Reality didn't have the best game, but the rest of the team did uh, step up, especially Mikey. I don't think he died a single time this game. 8 0 and 27, yeah. Yeah, great stuff coming out from him. The supports did get caught, caught a couple of times, but they also made a lot of space on uh, Stoic and Jeezy uh, this game, just dragging the enemies away. The vision was pretty nice. Uh, Enigma Galaxy, of course, also had really good vision, but they normally, as you mentioned, placed like four wards towards the enemy's jungle where they had full vision of the enemy's jungle and then they get pushed out of the jungle and then they have no wards on the rest of the map. So they are com playing completely blind against a lasso, yeah. a chrono, and an RP skewer play that they had in their back pocket the entire time and they use it so well. I mean, I Mikey is just impressive. Uh, so, so impressive. So many good plays that they did in this game like this Roshan fight where they place down Observer Ward, found Tiny, then Mikey jumps in, finds Kuroki, immediately kills him uh, I would say Magnus also played out of his mind he, he was all over the place I, I, I'm i starting to really like this team uh, that's the, the plus that you have if you give a little bit of extra light to a new region. You got the uh, Iranian players just shining bright right there in Winter Bear with the two Turkish supports to back them up. And uh, yeah, I'm definitely liking what to see in uh, what this team can bring to the table. I am curious, we already know who their next opponents would be. It doesn't say on Liquipedia. Um, it's... Uh, they're still in their second game. Game 1 was won by PSG Quest. Game 2 is uh, now in the lead for Team Falcons. So you can check that on the uh, other channel. But yeah, I mean, both those teams, we already saw it earlier today. PSG Quest, they had a definite struggle against Winter Bear as well. They could have easily been 2-0'd. Could have. They, they could have been in this upper bracket finals. But uh, we'll need to make their run through the lower bracket. They just eliminated Enigma Galaxy and we'll be playing against one of these teams. If they, if Winter Bears wants to qualify, I think it's a great underdog story if they can make it because uh, it, it, it's just great for the region. And also I love good underdog stories. If But they need to win another BO3 and they need to win a BO5 tomorrow. So there's going to be a lot of games for them to play if they win their first series. But uh, yeah, they, they look really good. 
Very impressive performance, but that does conclude it for us here in the MENA region. Uh, yeah, it was a wonderful tournament to cast. Saw some absolutely fantastic games. A lot of Arc Warden, surprisingly enough. Uh, only, you know, from two different players, <laughs> which was the fun part. But yeah, great stuff here. And definitely looking forward towards the main tournament that will be uh, in, I think, uh, what, a month or two? Was the month? I think it was a month. Uh, next month that it will be played in. Um, yeah, any last words for the people at home, Lacoste? Yeah, take care of you guys and, uh, you know, win some Dota for us. Uh, thank you for tuning in. It was a pleasure working with you as well. And uh, yeah, glad that we witnessed some really good Dota underdog stories as well. Some new hero picks, some new itemization coming out from different heroes. And uh, our beloved game, always evolving, always showing how it needs to be played. And uh, this is the beauty of the game. This is why we all love it. Always evolving, always surprising as well. There's always a chance for the underdog to make it to the top. Will they continue this ride? We'll have to wait and see tomorrow how far Winter Bear can make it. My name was DK Truman. I was joined by Lagos. Hopefully you enjoyed the show. Hopefully you enjoyed the rest of the closed qualifiers. We'll see you another day. And in case we don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night.